into my heart The flow of water gets hotter As it breaks apart Child, can we just go? <sighs> Babe, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for yelling. It's just, I feel right. The anger just starts, takes over me, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Oh, it's OK, honestly. Look, you've been through something traumatic. It will get better. I hope so. I really hope so. I really just could do with a beer. Actually, stop here. But you don't drink. Stop here! Ryan, you're on medication. One drink, Jesus. Is that okay, Mum? Aya, it's me. I need you. <laughs> Fuck me. Thought you were dead. I was gonna go see your fucking bird. Cheer her right up. Eh? Where are you going, mate? You're gonna cry, are ya? Gonna see your fucking mother? You dickhead. Go on, fuck off. <laughs> oh, here we go. He's looking feeling brave, are ya? What's this? Superman, is it? His fucking glasses coming off, is it? Eh? Go on, fuck off, Ryan. Go on. You've got your bollocks, have you? You fucking bollocks, have you? Come on, then, dickhead. See Morris, making sure you don't do a runner sunshine. You were too poorly to cuff earlier. I'm gonna have to do that. Why would I do a runner? Control from 1510. Just let you know Fletcher's away. Who's <laughs> dead? Please, please tell me it wasn't you. Okay. Whoever's dead. No, it's not me. I'm not funny, Ryan. <laughs> it's Lee. He's dead. And they think that you... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I was, I was fighting with him. And then... And then... I woke up and hit you. I don't remember anything, Pex. I don't remember. I'm not going to get any answers if you change me up in here, though, am I? Can I get some help in here, please? I 
I want you some calls. What's Where's going on? It's outside. What's going on? Fucking hell, mate. Murder. Hospital escapes. Where's Ryan and what have you done with him? I brought you some glasses. I didn't do anything. Oh, sorry to break it to you, mate, but there's a dead body that says otherwise. Stop the damn car! Listen, Ryan, you don't want to be doing anything else you regret. What do you mean, anything else? I didn't do anything. We can solve this, Ryan, honestly. It's just not like you. You're just a bit different. The accident. You had a blood transfusion. Well, we think it might have something to do with the blood you were given. Yeah. It's a long shot, but we reckon the person it come from might have had some really bad DNA or something. Behave yourselves. You know, there's always been this theory about, like, personality traits and stuff being passed on through blood donors. It's all over the internet, isn't it? Come on, guys. Give your heads a wobble. I'm getting out. Ryan. Ryan. Listen. Take these. Get yourself to mine somewhere safe. All right, OK. But, Dan, listen. I didn't do this. He's fucked. It makes sense to me. It's like a bad pint, isn't it? Yeah? You don't know what they're giving you or what the fuck's in it, but you want it and you need it. So, boom! The next thing you know, it's in your bloodstream and the fucking damage is done. Do you know, thanks, Uncle Lenny. You know what? I'm so glad I turned to my only family for advice. Honestly. So, hang on. Let's be serious for a minute. Let me get this straight. You both agree with them two? And uh, if a psychotic not really gave me his blood, then there's some dodgy DNA going through my veins. Just ignore him, love. Finding out who the blood came from might just answer some questions. Put your mind at rest a little bit. Mm. He got hit by a bloody prison van, Pam! I'll bet anybody there's a few pints for a murderer's blood sloshing around the last bloodstream. Oh, honestly, Leonard. You can't go back to the hospital to see your records now, can you? They'll be looking out for you. Oh, I'd try the people in that prison van. I bet they'll know give you blood at the roadside. She's an absolute genius. <laughs> right, give me half an hour to get ready. I'll get over to the prison, you get over to Dan's gaff. Okay. It's Becky. The police are checking all my known addresses. I can't go anywhere near Dan's. We need to go now, Uncle Lenny. We haven't got half an hour. We need to go. You need to set me with you. Let's go, Uncle Lenny. Plan of attack. I'll drive up to the gates and distract them. Okay. You sneak in and you find the records office, okay? Right, all right. And once I've found the records office, where is it? I'm Hang on a minute, hang on. It's a prison. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> Obviously. They'll see you on the cameras. <laughs> You'll never make it. <laughs> Lenny, please, for once. Seriously, I still look like a murderer. And Lee is still dead. Listen to me now, Ryan. Me and Yanti Pam, we brought you up. We've seen you have fights. And you've all you lost. Yeah. Now, you might have convinced yourself, but I am not buying it. I know one thing. My nephew, he ain't capable of murder. Now, get your head down, son. I've got a safer plan. Oh, so I spoke to Irene at the clinic and I've been Google eyes in it, and it says that blood's checked for diseases and infections first. OK, OK, but does it say if bad traits and things can be passed on through DNA and blood or not? I'm telling you, it's a proper thing. You won't like what you read. Yeah, but, Dan, we need to know if it's true. No one's seen them both for hours now. Lenny said they were off looking for answers. If this is real, it could be in serious danger if Ryan flips again. If a killer gives blood, what else do they give? Well, you deserved it, mate. You put a few hours into uh, our queen, haven't you? Yeah, not half, mate. Not half. 
I think it was me that was a lifer. All right, mate. Do you guys always drive this van? Yeah, driver, escort. What about it? See that didn't there? I think my lad did that when he hit him. You're looking for trouble, mate. You're in the right place. Mate, I'm not here for trouble. I'm here to shake the hand of the person who helped save his life. How do you mean? Well, he had to have a blood transfusion, some at the side of the road and some in the hospital. And the doctor told me that the blood came from the van. So, if it wasn't one of you two, I'm guessing it must have been from the guy in the back. It's all right, mate. It was me. They don't allow him to give me three pints, though. Luckily, your guy had the blood donor card on him. Oh, mate, that was down to me and his auntie Pam. See, we lost his mum and dad when we were young. We had to take him as our own. But I'll tell you what, I've always taught him to do the right thing. You've raised a good kid there. It's probably you that saved his life in the end. Mate, that's very, very kind of you. Listen, you two, have a good day. Thank well, you for all your help, yeah? Thank you. See you, buddy. Take care. Bye, mate. Right, good news and bad news. The good news is, there was no serial killer in the back. There was a prison guard who kept you going with a few pints. Oh, oh, thank God, man. OK, well, that's good, but hang on. What's the bad news? I haven't got a damn clue what we're going to do next. Oh, cheers. Thanks, Uncle Lenny. Oh, man. <sighs> Mate, I'm tired. Really tired. I need to get my head down. Somewhere safe. Leave it to me. I've got just the place. Come on, son. Come on. Nobody will think of looking here for you. This place hasn't been used in ages. Come on. You just have to have the keys. It's best not to question why an industrial exterminator has the keys for a derelict building that you're going to be spending the night in. You'll probably keep you up all night. Oh. Ah. What happened, son? None of this is like you. <laughs> you need to remember. I just remember that I, I just got out of the hospital. I was feeling woozy. Right. And I just... I just wanted some fresh air. And then... The pub, the pub was quite empty because it had just opened. Right. Well, he was in there, mouthing off at me. Well, he would be. And after that... Right, come on. Think, lad, think. <gasps> Sorry, I just felt like there was someone else there with me. Well, that's what I need to find out. I need to do some digging if you want. I'll get the feelers out. Feelers <laughs> out? Hey, <laughs> you can scoff, lad, but you make some right contacts in this pest control game, I can tell you. Oh, Uncle Lenny, thank you so much, but I just want to get some rest. Honestly, you go home. Are you sure? Yeah, you go home, get some sleep yourself, and we'll just... we'll go again tomorrow, OK? We'll be OK, you'll see. Get your head down. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Good night, son. Where is he? We can't just leave him out there on his own. You should have been at mine, but maybe you telling him about the police has, I don't know, scared him off. God, what have I done? You were only doing what you thought was best. I've got to take this. Sorry. What's going on, mate? Are you OK? No. This blood I was given, you were right. It's doing something to me. Don't be daft. I'm sure it's not. There was someone bad in the van that day. And now they're saying there wasn't. They're covering up and they're lying. I had a massive transfusion. And then I killed someone. OK, OK, OK. Just where are you? Let me help. I can't, mate. I can't get anyone else involved. Not you and not Becky. Look, mate, just let us know where you are and we can sort this out. I can't, mate. I can't get anyone else involved. I already know what to do. I've had enough.
Jewish people. Bex? Bex, it's me. I love you so, so much. I just... There's only one way I can put an end to all of this. I just want you to know that I am so sorry for everything. Becky? Have you spoken to him? No, I keep trying, but he left me a voicemail last night, Dan. I'm dead worried about him. Yes, I'm sure everything's gonna work itself out. Bex, you don't look well. This is massively taking its toll on you, and it's not right. Why don't you try and relax or something? Let me look after you. Show up. Why don't you fuck off back out there and find Ryan? That'll make me feel better. Becky Fletcher? I'm D.S. Wakeman. I'm gonna need you to come down the station with me. It's about your husband, Ryan. But like I told the last copper on the phone, I don't know where he is. I've seen him for days now. Seems to be the problem. And you are? Daniel Hello. Hancock, I'm... Uh, Mr. Hancock, yeah, I'm gonna need you to come with Hello. me. Hello. Come yeah. Have you found Ryan? Look, unfortunately, the body of Ryan Fletcher was found earlier this morning. It appears he's committed suicide. <gasps> I can't do this. Come on, love, stay strong. Okay, please brace yourself. Fuck you. Hey. I take it you can positively identify the body, Mr. Fletcher? We couldn't find a suicide note in his body or in the area that he was found. We assume that the guilt of what he did to Lee Cargill was too much for him to handle. Instead of facing trial and a lengthy imprisonment, he chose to hang himself. No, no. I'm so sorry, mate. I never meant for this to happen. What have I done? What have I done? What do you mean? What have you done? It was for you, Bex. I love you. I've always loved you. With Ryan out of the way, we could have been together. Hold on. Did you kill Lee? And then let Ryan take the blame for it? He was unconscious, Becky. Lee would have killed him if I hadn't got in first. If anything, I saved his life. And all he had to do was repay me by going to jail. Evil bastard! That doesn't explain why. It can't just be about wanting me, Dad. He's been your best mate for so many years. We can help you there, love. He waited years for you. When you split with Lee, he thought he were in there. I always saw the way he looked at you. Yeah, but damn the man didn't have the balls to admit how he felt, did you? And instead he watched you and Ryan fall in love. Ever since we were kids, Everyone said he was boring and I was unpredictable. The reality was he was cleverer than me. He held down the good jobs. He had literally everything I ever wanted for years. Including you, Becky. Ryan was ten times the man you are. I hope you rot! No! Ah! Lee wasn't worth it. You are definitely not worth it. Ryan, you're dead. We all saw you were dead. Dears Wayman said you were dead. Love, I won't believe a word he says. He's not even a real cop. Oh, it's like I'm coming out all over again. Hang on. This was a setup all along. Dougie Wakeman works for the Council Pest Control Department. I only answer the phones, though. I don't want to deal with any of those filthy vermin. But I do a bit of amdram on the side. And this job, I got to be all smart and wear a suit and be butch. 
He still can't prove anything. It's your word against mine. Your fingerprints are on that knife. Well, little thing about our industry, sweetheart. We've got cameras poised to catch what goes on in those mucky houses. So your confession is all on video. So I reckon by the time the police get here, they'll have enough evidence to put you away for a long time. You made me think you were dead. Could you left me alone for days not knowing what was happening? I didn't know myself. But listen, please, Bex, listen. I never once stopped thinking about us. I just, I just had to prove somehow that was innocent. We just followed our gut feeling. I knew he were talking shite when there was nothing on the interweb about dodgy DNA. He were just a myth he used against you all. So just one thing before I go. Can I? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> you bastard. <gasps> we caught ourselves a rat. <sighs> never thought I'd get to see you on the new house every day. A new start now, babe. Yeah. Just the three of us. I swear, next time you send me for something, I will never, ever walk anywhere ever. Three of us. Yeah. You, me and baby. I know a lot has happened, Ryan, but I am actually pregnant. <sighs> no, really? Oh. Right, get yourself upstairs. I'm gonna move the box. I'll be straight up. Don't be long. I won't be long. Right. I love you. Ah! Ah! Hey, that's very, very kind of you. Listen, you two, have a good day. Have Thank you for all your help, yeah? You're scared of needles, you lying sod. You're just telling the truth. <laughs> you just see him back at a nice guy. I didn't want to worry him. What was that, baby? You okay? Are you coming up or what?
So when we say politics, I think sometimes it becomes like, oh, I have an opinion and you have an opinion, and let's try to find a balance. Sometimes it's beyond that. No, it's about people. It's about lives. It's about people's choices, emotions, truth, experience, and freedom, honesty. So I'm thinking not just about that idea of what is CAA and what is the politics of that. It's like, hey, this is not okay. You know, what's going on is not okay because this is about misleading people. It's about truth and freedom, and you cannot deny me that. People need to understand if you can be considerate of yourself, surely you can be considerate of other people. तमाम विरोधों और साजिशों के बावजूद ग्रह मंत्रालय ने CAA को देश में लागू करने की तरफ बड़ा कदम उठाया. Continued throughout the day and night. Additional viewers in the national capital, 13 people have lost their lives and over 150 people have been injured. So how did this spiral of violence even start? किस लिए इकट्ठे हो जाओ? देश के भले के लिए भागे तो हम भी अपने ढंग से देश की सेवा कर रहे हैं और उस हर व्यक्ति को जो चाहता है कि जीवन स्तर अच्छा होना चाहिए everybody was talking about different different things and so in delhi the issue is something else uh, maybe in delhi itself around different different people were talking about different different issues in manipur this whole caa and all that uh, was something else altogether it was about like bangladesh and muslims and you know those kind of things borders and stuff like that so there were translations all over the place so for me it was like information information information information one and then what do we do with this ultimately it is it is just some decisions that are being made and then those ideas are being put forward with something with some other reason so i guess for me that was a summary of the whole situation everywhere and so it was like hey think for yourself you know don't follow this news or don't follow what your friend is saying think for yourself i am not political but i'm all about freedom right like freedom in the sense freedom from everything so it may be political but i don't see it as politics for me i see it as just the truth you know it's not even about oh i believe in this party or i believe in this idea i'm a socialist or i'm a consumerist or whatever i i don't care about any of those things but right? for me it's like the individual just think for yourself and you be true to yourself right so for that maybe the challenge is not political So when we say politics I think sometimes it becomes like oh I have an opinion and you have an opinion and let's try to find a balance sometimes it's beyond that no it's about people it's about lives it's about people's choices so you and I so now all of us are different right you are from a different age group I'm from a different age group but it doesn't matter 
basically does not matter so it's not about the politics of age or the politics of gender or the politics of thought or the politics of uh, you know religion or anything it's just like okay we are human beings here and can we all just learn to respect each other and think for ourselves and leave everything else behind and that might be freedom you know that might be true freedom to leave everything aside and just be you the thought that people are being misled and that misleading has to stop that's all it was very simple and there was an emotion attached to it more than the thought no see there are musicians who think from their head and they play also from their head right so there are people like that everything is like skill and intellect and training and practice and this and that and like, that's one way there's another side to it which is purely about emotions and experience and truth you know so i am from that side which is like emotions truth experience and freedom honesty like that so i am thinking not just about that idea of what is caa and what is the politics of that it's like hey this is not okay you know what's going on is not okay because this is about misleading people you're misleading people you're putting thoughts into their minds and that is not what is going on what is going on is something else you're doing something else you know towards the end of the song you'll see that somebody is saying out the constituency right right that i for me i want that was very important because ultimately it comes back to that that behind that reading there's this idea that everybody is to be treated equally everybody is to be respected equally nobody take advantage of each other you know this is what it it entails right beyond that so i thought the message was there see we have a country that has all those thoughts we're trying now we are going away from that let's come back to that you know what message sending a message and encouraging helping like so i think music is very powerful as a message because people can see when you're listening to music no maybe if you if you go technically here um i am a music therapist my job is i work with people through music i work with all kinds of people but i use music in my work so it's not just about politics music is something that can be used in every field there is lot of possibility many possibilities emotionally politically whatever so everything you know and music has a way to address that in a way that may not be happening in another way it's easy because uh, they start with all these thoughts and then eventually they realize that these thoughts are not changing anything okay let me tell you something the more extreme they are no the more afraid they are so if you just bring them down and say like hey i care about you everything changes because ultimately it's like the more aggressive the more afraid it's it's very simple no you are hiding behind that that violence or that anger or the threat because internally there's a there's a very fragile person and i i want to connect with that fragile person they will not want it but eventually through music we can connect many people said don't do this this will happen don't do that this will happen whatever in that moment in that time it was my truth and i was like i want to put my truth out if anything happens it will happen but for me at that time it was very important i am no longer like that because the time has changed you know we are always changing so i don't have one political thought right now i i don't know whether i would react the same way but at that time it was very intense for me and so it was important to be honest with myself truth doesn't mean proving no truth can easily be confused with trying to prove something oh i have this to say i will say it in my truth that, that is not that is not what i'm talking about there is no compassion in that no that trying to prove something is also fear no i don't have to prove anything proving is fighting fighting is fear i'm i'm talking about kindness and compassion right so when i was during that time i was like everybody in general whoever listens to this song i hope that you will at least take that step back you don't have to prove anything you don't have to fight with anyone but just think for yourself use your compassion for people around you you know muslim hindu christian it doesn't matter be compassionate you know 
can you can you find a way to be kind and compassionate and thoughtful to each other so one person in the band he was very scared he's like let's not do this let's not do that whatever and i was like okay fine i won't put your name anywhere you know like he was like let's not do it like that let's not do it like this i had drawn something i also draw so i drew something he saw the picture he's like you cannot put this out we will get in trouble but finally i don't want to make him also get upset so i didn't music can be anything it can be anything uh, i am only discovering all the possibilities of music but here's what i can tell you like it means a lot to me i don't know what it is but it means a lot to me and i know i can do something i know i believe in music right? well actually my belief is useless whether i believe or not it's still there so forget about my belief music is very important to me i really like it uh, and i am very curious to keep on discovering what is possible through music and i keep doing that they get up in the morning on sunday they go to the church and they sing they start singing and they start singing and then they get excited and then they start going into some space then they feel very good and then they go home so i saw all this happening and that was where i realized something is there with music i want to learn this it's a very basic level i want to go beyond that because obviously it's deeper then i entered the space of mental health and music so i'm going deeper and deeper into this the music can affect the human body and therefore you can create a lot of things through music because music and the human brain are so closely connected you have no idea like everything in your mind can get erased is possible but music cannot be erased it's the last thing that remains no matter what you do there are people who can't recognize the face of their own child so no matter what happens to your brain also music remains कि हिंदू और मुसलमान को लड़ाया कैसे जाए ये लोग इस देश के अंदर खून के प्यासे लोग हैं इनकी आंखें खून देखना चाहती हैं इनकी आंखें आग जनी देखना चाहती हैं The national capital, a battleground. Violent clashes between Hindus and Muslims have rocked the city for days. Entire neighborhoods ripped apart as mobs roam the streets. The riots have been centered in the northeast of the city, in largely Muslim neighborhoods. It is a lust to divide. It is not a desire to unite. There is a powerful and continuing nationalism being shared into our national fabric. There is an unimaginable subjugation and controlling of mass media today.
वैष्णवी मी तुला कितीदा बोलले रात्रीचे केस मोकळे सोडत नको जाऊस म्हणून तुला माहितीये तुझ्या आजी सोबत काय झालंय ते बाबाकडे घेऊन गेले सायकॅट्रिस्ट जरूर होती आणि तुम्हाला बोलू नाही शकत की ती मेंटली अनस्टेबल नव्हती तुम्ही या नवीन काळाच्या मुलींना ना कळतच नाही फॅमिली काय असत जुन्या पद्धती काय असतात सगळं विसरलात तुम्ही आजकाल तुझ्या ना फिफ्टीज च गोष्ट इकडे नको आलोस हे टू थाउजंड ट्वेंटी थ्री आहे जेन्सी पीपल काय जेन्सी पीपल मला पण माहिती तुझं जेन्सी पीपल आजकाल काय चालू आहे तुझा ना तिथे केस बांध नाही तर मला ना काहीतरी करावा लागेल मी कापून टाकेल तुझे केस आधीच सांगते बांधून घे तुझे केस पटकन वैष्णवी जे सांगितलं ते मी जास्त शहाणपणा करतो कळ ना वैष्णवी तुझे केस कापून टाकेल आधीच
Oh my God. कितने दिनों बाद अरे क्या बाल बाल बढ़ा ली तूने अरे क्या कर रहा है नीचे होता है दिनों बाद यार Seriously man, you are aging backwards. तू जैसा था वैसे ही है मुझे देख ऐसा लग रहा है कभी भी फट सकता हो हाँ तू बहुत बदल गया है कोई बात नहीं यार तू कब काम आएगा चल आज से तू मेरा ट्रेनर अरे हम खड़ी के है बैठ ना एक बात बता मैं कल सुबह से आया हूँ और तुझे आज तक का टाइम मिला है इतना बिजी कब से हो गया देख हाँ यार एक प्रॉब्लम का सोल्यूशन नहीं मिल रहा था बट फाइनली आई फाउंड इट वॉज द प्रॉब्लम छोड़ना यार जैसा मैंने कहा सोल्यूशन मिल चुका है बस उसे प्रैक्टिकली अप्लाई करना बाकी है ओके okay. और बता तू कैसा है <laughs> जैसे तूने कहा मैं जैसा था वैसा ही हूं अंदर से भी और बाहर से भी फाइन हे अंकल आंटी कैसे एवरी वन इज फाइन तू कुछ लेगा चाय कॉफी नो नहीं यार मैंने छोड़ दी तू भी छोड़ दे ये सब मैं तेरे जैसा नहीं हूं आई स्टे विथ एवरी थिंग दैट आई लव एक मिनट साले, तू तो पूरी तैयारी करके आया हाँ हाँ ये तो कुछ भी नहीं अभी बहुत से सरप्राइज बाकी ओ फक आई एम सरप्राइज फॉर यू टू वेट ये देख थैंक यू अबे खोल के तो देख बाद में आराम से देख लूंगा ओके फाइन लेकिन मुझसे रहा नहीं जा रहा है मैं रिव्यूज करने जा रहा हूं तू बहुत एप्पल एप्पल करता था ना सो इट्स ब्रांड न्यू लेटेस्ट आईफोन यस यू नोट ट्राई और मुझे ये भी याद है कि तूने कहा था जब कभी आईफोन लूंगा तो गोल्ड कलर का ही लूंगा सो इट्स अ गोल्ड वन चलो कुछ तो याद है तुम्हें ऐसे कैसे भूलता यार लेकिन बहुत जुगाड़ लगाना पड़ा हर जगह आउट ऑफ स्टॉक था बट फाइनली आई गॉट इट इसकी इसकी जरूरत नहीं थी बट थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच
विक यार आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू समिंग अरे मुझे भी ढेर सारे बातें करनी है लेकिन उसके पहले पुरानी यादें ताजा करते हैं लेट्स हैव अ ड्रिंक दैट्स ग्रेट मैं ग्लासेस लेके आता हूं ये ले तेरी फेवरेट थैंक यू तू अभी भी वही है कम ऑन मैन मूव ऑन आई कांट आई कांट मैं आखिर तक साथ देना पसंद करता हूं वॉट आई एम इन लव विथ इससे धोखा नहीं दे सकता ओके लवर बॉय लेट्स हैव थ्री चप्स ऑफ लाइफ friendship Are you happy? Not just happy, yar. I think this is the best phase of my life. ये दो साल जो मैंने खुद को दिए हैं, it's the best thing that I've done for myself. Vic, you know the Queenstown city जहाँ पर मैं रहता हूँ, it's one of the most beautiful places. Population कम है, वहाँ के लोग open minded हैं. कोई आपको जज करने वाला नहीं है ग्रीनरी माउंटेन्स एक अलग सुकून है वहा विक दिस जर्नी वॉज लाइक अ सेल्फ डिस्कवरी फॉर मी अब जाकर मैंने कहीं खुद को एक्सेप्ट किया है ग्रेट नकुल आई हैव ऑलवेज लुकड अप टू यू एज माय बिग ब्रदर एंड यू नो दैट राइट तूने मेरे लिए जो किया है वो मैं कभी भूल नहीं सकता मैं तुम्हारी बहुत इज्जत करता था शायद अपने बाप से भी ज्यादा मुझे लगता था तू तो जिंदगी में कभी कोई गलत काम कर ही नहीं सकता नहीं यार मैं भी तो एक इंसान हूं मुझसे भी गलती हो सकती है या यूर राइट वैसे नकुल तुझे रिया याद है ऐसे क्यों पूछ रहा है यार याद क्यों नहीं होगी हो ईशी वॉट जस्ट एंसर द फकिंग क्वेश्चन
She's my wife. <laughs> क्या कर रहा है क्या रिया से शादी करने का फैसला तेरा था हाँ तुझे पता है रिया की कंडीशन क्या हुआ उसे यू फक्ट अप एवरी थिंग यू फक्ट लाइफ मैन शादी करके तूने उसको ऐसे ही छोड़ दिया ना तूने कभी उसके लिए टाइम निकाला ना कभी उसे प्यार से गले लगाए नकुल तूने एक भी ऐसी चीज की जो इस रिलेशनशिप के लिए जरूरी होती है तुझे पता है रिया खुद को कोसने लगी है उसे लगता है कि कमी उसमें है क्योंकि तू तो सबके लिए हीरो है पिछले ढाई साल से देख रहा She lost the smile, man. She can't even smile. ऊपर से तो उस पर शक करता है वहां बैठकर मुझे पूछ रहा है और रिया ऑफिस किसके साथ जाती है घूमने किसके साथ जाती है लंच किसके साथ करती है Vick. साले कितना मात्र चौदह इंसान है तू तू यार, तू गलत समझ रहा है लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इसका भी एक्सप्लेनेशन है तेरे पास टेल मी फिर टेल मी मुझे जानना है इस सिचुएशन में भी तू खुद को कैसे सही साबित करता है मुझे उसमें उस तरह का इंटरेस्ट कभी नहीं था आई नेवर गोट अट्रैक्टेड क्या कमी है उसमें दिखने में इतनी खूबसूरत है नेचर अच्छा है अरे खुद कमाती है और क्या चाहिए तुझे भी तो समझ दे रहा है यार आई मीन आई मीन मुझे और तो मेरी इंटरेस्ट नहीं है फक तो तो तो तो रिया से शादी क्यों उसे क्यों नहीं बताया अरे मुझे क्यों नहीं बताया भाई भाई क्योंकि तुम मैं खुद नहीं जाता तो मैं कौन हूं क्या हूं जिंदगी के सत्ताईस साल पेरेंट्स के एक्सपेक्टेशन पूरे करते करते निकल गए कभी खुद के लिए टाइम ही नहीं मिला और जब टाइम मिला तो सब शादी के पीछे पड़ गए दादी मरने से पहले घर में बहू को देखना चाहती थी दिन रात सुबह शाम बस शादी शादी शादी तो मुझे कुछ समझ नहीं आ रहा था मुझे लगा रिया मेरी अच्छी दोस्त है मैं उसे धीरे धीरे सब कुछ बता दूंगा एंड शी विल अंडरस्टैंड मी सेल्फिश यू आर तुझे वक्त चाहिए था तो तूने उसे बली का बकरा बना दिया एक दफा भी रिया के बारे में नहीं सोचा तुझे पता था वो सब कुछ छोड़कर तेरे पास आ रही उसके साथ साथ उसके सपने इस रिश्ते को लेकर उसकी उम्मीद एक अलग जिंदगी जुड़ रही थी तेरे साथ कब बताने वाला था तू उसे तीन साल तो गुजर गए आई ट्राइड मैंने बताने की बहुत कोशिश की उसे बट आई फेल्ड आई डेंट हैव दैट मच करेज मुझे और थोड़ा सा वक्त चाहिए था शादी हुई नहीं कि सब बच्चे की डिमांड करने लगे किसी को बेटा चाहिए तो किसी को बेटी फिर से एक्सपेक्टेशन रिया मुझ में परफेक्ट हसबेंड ढूंढ रही थी और मैं मैं ना तो उसे फिजिकली सेटिस्फाई कर पा रहा था ना ही उससे नजरें मिला पा रहा था शाम होते ही डर लगने लगता था घर का नाम सुनते ही पैर अपने आप रुक जाते थे दम घुटने लगता था मेरा आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू एस्केप फ्रॉम एवरीथिंग और जब मुझे मौका मिला मैं बस निकल गया और विक मैं रिया पर शक नहीं करता था मैं वो सब इसीलिए पूछता था क्योंकि मैं खुद चाहता था कि रिया मूव ऑन करे उसकी जिंदगी में कोई और आई रियली लव सर हु गिव्स सर ऑल द हैप्पीनेस दैट शी एक्चुअली डिजर्व्स बच्ची कांड अरे मूव ऑन करना इतना आसान नहीं होता मेरे भाई और एक एक औरत के लिए तो बिल्कुल भी नहीं शी कांड बिकॉज शी लव्स अ फैमिली वो अपने माँ बाप के बारे में सोच रही थी तुझे हमें बता देना चाहिए था यार शी सफर्ड लॉट तेरी फैमिली से लेकर उसकी खुद की फैमिली सब लोग उसमें खामिया निकाल रहे थे बिकॉज यू आर अ परफेक्ट मैन तुझ में तो कोई कमी हो ही नहीं सकती नकुल 
आई नो यू ऑल्सो सफर्ड लॉट लेकिन तेरे पास रास्ता था तू चाहता तो खुद का दर्द मेरे साथ बांट सकता था लेकिन तूने क्या किया खुद का दर्द बाहर निकालने के लिए किसी और को अंदर ढकेल दिया इट्स नॉट राइट वॉट यू हैन इज अन फर्गेबल आई नो दैट आई मेस्ट अप एवरीथिंग यकीन नहीं होता हम दोनों ने तेरे लिए इतना बड़ा सेक्रीफाइस किया वॉट वॉट सेक्रीफाइस मैंने कभी सपने में भी नहीं सोचा था कि तुझे ये बात बतानी पड़ेगी लेकिन लेकिन अब बताना जरूरी है मैं और रिया एक दूसरे से बहुत प्यार करते थे फ्रॉम और कॉलेज डेज वी वॉन्टेड टू सी आर फ्यूचर टूगेदर एन आई I I still have feelings for क्या बात कर रहा है Fucking life. That time I was looking for a job and I was struggling a lot. और जब मुझे पता चला कि तूने खुद रिया को शादी के लिए प्रपोज किया है देन आई थॉट ही रियली लव पूरी जिंदगी तू मुझे देता ही आ रहा है मैं तेरा दिल नहीं तोड़ना चाहता था मुझे पता था कि मेरे जितना प्यार रिया से और कोई नहीं कर सकता लेकिन यह भी यकीन था कि तू रिया को मुझसे ज्यादा खुश रखेगा एक बेहतर जिंदगी देगा बिकॉज यू आर द परफेक्ट मैन फॉर रिया की पूरी फैमिली इस रिश्ते से खुश थी रिया में सच बताने की हिम्मत नहीं थी क्योंकि एक तरफ था तू और एक तरफ मैं जो बचपन से एक नालायक बेटर रहा है इस रिश्ते को कोई एक्सेप्ट नहीं करता I'm the worst person in this world. मैं चूती आऊ जो पूरी जिंदगी खुद से भागता रहा असल में हीरो तू है मेरे भाई योर अ हीरो बिकॉज यू सैक्रीफाइस योर द वन इज परफेक्ट फॉर रिया तू टेंशन मत ले ये सब मेरी वजह से हुआ है ना तो ठीक भी मैं ही करूंगा I want to tell you something. I met someone in Queenstown. His name is Aman. We deeply fell in love with each other. He's like me. Now I know. This thing that I was running away from is actually the most beautiful thing I have. I'll give Riya a divorce. And इसके लिए उसे कोई ब्लेम नहीं करेगा मैं सबके सामने जाकर अपनी सच्चाई बताऊंगा आई विल टेल एवरी वन आई एम द वन हु डिजर्व ऑल द हेट नॉट रिया मैं सबकी माफी मांगूंगा फिर सब ठीक हो जाएगा पहले जैसा अब तो इस देश का कानून भी हमें अपना रहा है वी बोथ कैन लिव हैप्पी विद आवर पार्टनर्स हु एक्चुअली लव दिस इज गोन बी अप्पी एंडिंग बहुत देर हो चुकी है अब कुछ भी ठीक नहीं हो सकता मतलब मैंने तुम्हारे ड्रिंक में बेंजोस नाम का ड्रग मिलाया है इट कॉजेस रेस्पिरेटरी डिप्रेशन स्लोली स्लोली इट विल डैमेज योर मसल्स ब्रेन एंड एंड यू लूज योर रिया को पता है एक्चुअली शी इज दू केम टू मी इट्स हर डिसीजन
कितना टाइम है मेरे पास आई डोंट नो दस दिन दस हफ्ते या फिर दस साल आई रियली डोंट नो यस यस आई डिड इट नो नो डोंट क्राई अरे तूने जो किया है वो बिल्कुल सही है ही डिजर्व दिस अरे उसके बाहर अफेयर चल रहे थे तो डोंट क्राई यू डिट डू एनी थिंग रॉन्ग ओके मैं थोड़ी देर में मिलता हूँ तूने उसे सच क्यों नहीं बताया सच बताता तो वो खुद को ब्लेम करती मैं उसे और तकलीफ में नहीं देखना चाहता राइट आई डिजर्व दिस और मुझे मेरे लिए बुरा नहीं लग रहा है बुरा लग रहा है तो अमन के लिए ही वॉन्ट्स टू मैरी मी What should I tell him? नकुल नकुल ये सोसाइटी तुम्हें कभी एक्सेप्ट नहीं करेगी लोगों का तेरी तरफ देखने का नजरिया बदल जाएगा ये क्विजम नहीं मेरे भाई ये इंडिया है या यहाँ आज भी छक्कों के ऊपर जोक बनाए जाते हैं और लोग उस पर तालियां भी मारते हैं और हंसते भी है मेरी बात मान दिया को डिवोर्स दे और निकल जाए कहीं दूर और रही बात तेरे और अमन की तो लव इज ऑल अबाउट सेक्रीफाइस तुम दोनों कोई ना कोई रास्ता ढूंढ ले लोगे <laughs> अब मुझे जाना चाहिए नकुल <laughs> Thank you for everything, and I'll always remember you as a good human being. Vic, जाने से पहले का आखिरी बात घर नहीं लगेगा all right so i'm going to pause this screening right now because we have a speaker session right now so firstly thank you so much for the people who are watching this these films i guess i i i i'm also watching and it's too beautiful you know the uh, the, the filmmakers who have made this film they've uh, given their everything in this film and i i i've been so much enjoying i have my chips and cold drinks here you know so uh, i guess everyone everyone can hear me right can can you please say all right all right good so i'm going to uh, present uh, i'm going to introduce you first my host for this session and then the host will introduce the speaker so please uh, uh, welcome our host varnika jain varnika jain she is a student in amity university noida and she is a script writer also and she also directs a theater so please welcome varnika jain now uh, varnika the stage is all yours as a host so you can introduce the speaker please uh namaste and greetings everyone i am varnika your host for this session i extend a warm welcome to all the participants and viewers from both india and around the world so ladies and gentlemen a warm welcome to our esteemed parina losh our distinguished speaker for today 
she is a screenwriter director producer who concentrates on the complexity of human relationships in her short films the debut film never has gained eight official selections in the international cinema festival and has won the best drama twice uh, we are privileged to have her here let uh, let uh, her welcome and let her share her insights with us so get ready for an enlightening session giving you a heartly welcome polina losh hello hello do you hear me yeah i i'm super super excited for this session i am so grateful for you uh to invite me to participate here uh i love this film festival uh i am super excited for everyone to come so thank you all for being here today and i guess we should start as soon as possible i need to demonstrate my screen i hope i will be able to do that uh so do you see my screen uh yes we can so our topic for today is guiding theater and non-professional actors crafting convincing performances in film so basically we will talk about uh acting we will talk about how to direct actors in your movies because actors are a huge and a really important part of filmmaking um a little bit about me uh my name is Polina I'm from Kazakhstan Almaty and right now i'm living in maryland usa for a year um i really love cinema theater and art and also i like hiking and traveling and here's my little filmography i usually make short films and sometimes i also produce short films let's start because we have a no time <laughs> here you can see uh, some uh, um film shots from my movies and the first thing i want to talk about is why is acting important so for people who are far from cinematography uh just our audience maybe not on film festivals but just in movie theaters actors are the face of the film they don't think about all of the technology stuff about all of the outstanding shots or lighting No, they are looking at the actors and it's the only thing they care about. So your actors should be truthful and they should be trusted by the audience. And of, co of course, therefore, bad acting will ruin any perfect scene. Even if you think that you're a brilliant director and you've thought about everything so so detailed, but if the actor will be bad, the scene will be bad. uh and of course bad acting will make your character really boring if you saw that you made a really great interesting character but your uh actor plays really really bad no it's not going to work and uh on the other way uh good acting will make your character brilliant it will make this character so so memorable and the audience will tell you it I really loved how this uh how how this actor played. And in this presentation I will give you lots of lots of tips. So I don't know if you you can make screenshots of the presentation if you want. And here are my personal tips on how to uh how to understand the actors better because director has to understand any aspect of filming. Uh the first one is a little bit a little bit weird but try acting yourself. It is really really important because after you tried acting yourself maybe it will be like week workshop or a month in acting courses but you will understand what's happening in the mind of actors. And uh, because of that you will be able to direct them better. You will know what words to say to them to describe what you want from them so it is really important to try acting yourself and to understand how it feels because sometimes we don't understand the actors and it is really important to do that uh, also you can play little roles in others movie why not um also be prepared to answer lots of questions from actors tons of questions 
because all of the questions about their character, about everything around them, maybe in other characters, it is what makes them understand what's happening. And if you will know answers for all of their questions, because you have to know the plot of your movie really good, they will play really good because they will be in context, they will be in your script fully. That's why you should maybe make a little biography for them or just answer everything they ask. Um, also, it's a really important thing. If this all was pre-production and now we get to the production to film it on set. So make sure actors don't get bored on set because they will play horrible after that. If they, if they came on set and it's like in hours and you're trying to set all of the technology, uh, I don't know, your DOP is late, but your actor is sitting and not doing anything, they will play horrible after that. They will be tired and exhausted and they won't be able to work. So you need to make sure that they rehearse something or they have something to read or they have someone to talk about their character. Uh, so please make sure your actor is active all of the time. Also, be attentive and listen to actors. If you, even if you think that, oh my God, I have no time, we're so in a rush, oh no, oh no, please, if your actor tells you, um, I have an idea, or I don't know what am I doing in this scene, listen to them. Listen to them and um, try to solve all of these problems, because then you will regret it. And the last one is if actor improvises really good, if they can do some funny or maybe dramatic things just by themselves, please let them do it. Because improvising in cinema is actually a really interesting uh, technique. And uh, for example, uh, those famous scenes from the movies that I'm sure you watched, uh, they were totally improvised. They were off script. So please don't let this chance slip from your movie because sometimes improvising can make uh, your movie uh, better and more interesting. Uh, so let's go uh, into the topic of working with non-professional actors uh, in particular. Mm, the first tip of mine is really important. If you, sometimes we have to work with non-professional actors and my biggest, biggest advice is to find a person that is really, really uh, similar to the role itself. And that's how they will be not acting, but leaving on screen. And that is actually, it, it works all of the time. Uh, you just need to find a person who is really, really like their character. Um, also, don't underestimate rehearsals with non-professional actors. They need your support and help. Uh, give more details and even more information to non-professional actors. And take your time to explain the uh, process that will be uh, that will be proceeding in uh, during production, during film setting, because they don't know that. Uh, you should start playing after you set action, for example. Uh, they don't know uh, what everyone is doing on set. So please take your time to explain everything to them. And also a little tip, if kid, uh, if your main actor is a kid, have fun with them. Don't try to be super serious and super mm, moody, have fun. I, I don't know, sometimes it is, of course, it is really difficult on set when you're nervous, but try to make everything feel as a game. Working with theater actors, it's a little bit of another topic because theater actors are professionals. Um, but on stage, they are used to be really loud, really clear and very emotional. Like theater actors are really, really emotional. And it is your responsibility to explain to them how you want them to play in the movie. Uh, and that's why uh, you should make sure to give actors some actions or odd objects that they can uh, use in a scene while they're playing, because that's how they will have something 
to play with. They, they shouldn't just stand and not do anything steady. It, it will look really terrible on screen. Uh, also, if you don't like how actor plays, again, just tell them. Tell them and uh, make them play how you want because theater and movies are really different. And uh, that's why you should demand more subtle emotions, more, um, more of those emotions that probably they're not used to doing uh, on stage. And that's why you should work with them really, really profoundly on uh, how you want them to play. Um, also, a little tip, if you like going to the theater, or maybe, maybe even if you don't like, you can try. Uh, try to go to their place uh, in, in theater and observe how they play, how they play on stage. Maybe you will get some new, fresh ideas uh, after those plays. And this will, all, this will also enrich your film. Um, and many, many people think that theater actors are not good in movies because they're so, so emotional and so over, over, over. But I think that theater actors are professional. And that's why every good theater actor can be really great in film, but only when director does their work. And that's why you should really, really, if you choose and you've, if you cast theater actor for your movie, take this responsibility to work with them profoundly. But in the end of the day, you shouldn't forget to just have fun because filmmaking is fun. Um, uh, actors, for me, it's my personal opinion, they were always a really huge and important part of filmmaking process. And without them, your movie is nothing. Uh, it's, it's how you, you cannot put any part of the production out of the movie. So actors are part of it. Mm, but all in all, after all of those tips and pieces of advice, just be a good person. Because it, it is all about personal bonds and communication. So in the end of the day, you just need to communicate a lot. You need to be a good person to them, get friends with them, get on well. And uh, you will see how your character that you wrote in your script will become alive on screen. For me, is the most exciting feeling, uh, feeling that I can feel um, while filmmaking is when I see my characters become real. Uh, so I think uh, uh, I can and on that point and if anybody has any questions i am ready um thank you Bolena. that was a notable session as you were addressing the audience i want to ask the audience if they have any questions so you guys have the chat box open uh, you can ask the questions there and I'll address it to Paulina. Hi, I have a question. Am I allowed yes. to ask? Oh, okay. So, um, do you believe that um, starting off in theater acting? Wait one second. Let me just turn off. Do you believe that starting off in theater acting is the easiest way to get into the industry of acting um, before TV, film, and movies that are indie and independent? A uh, really, really interesting question. Well, honestly, I will tell you that theater actors are, are they, their job is really different. And working in theater is really risky. Uh, that's why I don't think that it's the easiest way to get into the cinema. Probably the easiest way is to get uh, an acting education. And usually when actors get an education, they have a degree in both film and theater. So they can choose. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And uh, I think that casting to movies is faster and easier than being a theater actor, 
but it is more like what you want to do in your life. Uh, yeah, because theater is really hard. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, sorry to add this, but I know that if a, like if it, in a film, like if you mess up, you could redo the scene. But um, when theater is live, it's a lot harder to um, when you mess up, you mess up in front of everyone and you can't yeah. like undo it. So uh, that's that was my question. And uh, just one last question. Um, do you believe that talent agencies are important in um, the field of acting as well? I, I think yes. Personally, I think yes, because of course you can you can uh, go and apply in all of those castings yourself. Uh, but when you have a talent agency, it's just from my experience. When you have a talent agency, they have more connections. They know more people. So it is easier to get into big movie productions when you have uh, people that uh, will say something for you and that will get you into those productions. But of course, uh, it depends on what person you are because some people are so energetic and they're so, so... Uh, communicative that they can get into I don't know Hollywood films by just being themselves but it, it happens rarely and that's why talent agencies for actors um, it's a really good field to start from okay thank you I won't take up thank too much you of your time for the question thank you <laughs> Um, is there anyone else who wants to ask? Okay, so there's a question from uh, Justin. What are your ways to rehearse actors more effectively? Uh, rehearsing. Oh, rehearsing. is I, On my first movie, uh, my two main actors were rehearsing in my house <laughs> for two months because we had no place to go. <laughs> and it was really fun. It was really fun. We were friends with them. Um, so it was okay. But I think, well, first of all, I make sure that uh, actors read full script and they know what's happening uh, in the movie, in all of the parts of the movie. And uh, from the first day, I tell them to learn their lines because it is really important, please. Uh, sometimes they forget about that. Um, and I, I don't have like a special method of uh, rehearsing. Uh, but I just try to get like from scene to scene in the script. We read it together. We try to play it. We are try uh, we try and thinking uh, what should we do? Uh, how how should we film this scene? And probably I have some ideas while we are rehearsing. Uh, and as soon as uh, actors have some questions for me, like why do I behave like this in this scene? I, I don't understand this. I, I explain it to them. I don't know. You are exhausted in this scene. You are angry uh, on, on them because of this and that. So uh, it's just a really, really close work with the actor. Because like on, on the first movie, I had this uh, inconvenience that we were doing that in my house. But we got really, really close in that time. Um, second time, we were rehearsing in... Uh, like media center so we had a little bit of stage to do all of that so it was more comfortable uh, but also it is really important to get close to your actor and to get through every scene and make sure they also take notes on what you're telling them because they will forget everything <laughs> hey i had a, a, a second question sorry about that is that okay just one last question for me and, uh -huh. and then, okay. So um, I was wondering, a lot of people have been talking about this, like on TV and things like that. Um, what, how do you feel as a director about the SAG after strike? And um, if actors, um, if you've heard about it, that is like, um, do you believe that actors uh, deserve fair wages and that they're important for film? you know, and for the world, basically. That's the question. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I've been thinking a lot about those strikes because they affected a lot 
uh, especially in the U.S., the only the only films they now can show uh, in movie theaters are Barbie and Oppenheimer, and wow. they're just <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> just getting them over and over again for like three months now, and it's <laughs> crazy. They don't have any yeah. movies to show, uh, and I think that. Uh, I think that, of course, actors uh, in Hollywood, actors are really underestimated. If you're yeah. not Brad Pitt or, I, I don't know, uh, you won't get paid uh, fairly. And acting is, it, I, myself, I tried acting. That's why I have this seat in my presentation. And I know cool. that acting emotionally is really, really hard work. So I, I, I'm absolutely on the side of actors in strikes. Yeah, that's they, really great. Should be paid. Yeah. Thanks. Um. So we have a question from Karthik Mohan. Is it fine to repeat casting same actors in our film whom we are comfortable with, or will it create a comfort zone for us and wouldn't allow us to keep exploring? It's a really good question. Thank you for that. Um, I honestly, I was also thinking about that because I tend to cast the same people for different parts of the movie. Um, and it is really hard to understand that. Uh, I think that uh, you, you can cast the same actors for your movies or maybe uh, you can cast some actors to your another film, maybe another ones to your uh, third film. So you can mix them up so that they won't be like whole cast is the same for every movie. Uh, this will be suspicious. Uh, but if you like just cast one actor, for example, twice or three times, I think it's okay uh, unless you're giving them the same role every time. Because if they played someone super dramatic and uh, they cried a lot in your first film, for example, and if you give them the same character in the second film, this is a little bit lazy because you know that the actor can do that. And uh, of course you, you can do that, why not? You're the director, but it is uh, not, uh, it's not gonna give you uh, change in your films. It's not gonna improve you in filmmaking. So you need, you need to learn how to work with different actors, of course. Uh, and if you work with the same actor, try to give them completely different roles. It will be interesting both for you and for them. Um, so I, I think like that, but I have my favorite actors, so uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, so I guess we don't have other questions. Uh, the next thing, Anyone else have any other questions? So please um, ask in the chat box or we'll proceed further. Uh, we have another question from Justin. Considering that guiding actors during production is a very important thing, is it important for a director to know acting to some extent? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's what I was talking about in the first slide. Uh, I, I don't remember in which slide. Uh, uh, because uh, understanding how acting works in your head is really important. And uh, you, it's a really big piece of advice for me to try acting sometime of your life. Uh, just, it shouldn't be something like, I need to get a degree in acting. No, it can be like a little workshop or uh, like acting courses. For example, I was going to acting courses for two months, but that's because I like it. If you don't like it, you can just try. You don't need to perform anywhere or act. Uh, well, you can, but you're, you're, you, um, you're, it's not mandatory. Just uh, try to understand the basics of how acting works because it's a real profound uh, psychological work. It's the work with your body, with your voice. Um, and if you will understand how it feels to be an actor, you will be 
more fair and more kind to your actors uh, because it's really uh, a demanding and a really risky and emotional psychological job uh, so to guide an actor perfectly it is really good to know how it all works because you know how to explain uh, something that uh, you want from an actor to fill. Um, for example, when I explain to my actors um, what's happening in the scene uh, and what I want them to do, I may give them, for some people, like weird instructions when I'm trying to get them into some um, state of mind. Uh, I might say something like, um, so here you should feel absolute grief. You should feel that somebody, uh, probably your somebody close, uh, died, for example. Uh, and what would you feel in that situation? And so actors start thinking and they start telling you like, oh, so, okay, uh, this, uh, this character does that in that scene. I uh, react like that. And they start being in process. Sometimes those uh, uh, directions, I cannot give them without uh, knowing how an actor will understand me better. I can tell them, uh, you should make emphasis on this and that, uh, and they will understand me. No one else on the set won't understand us because they are more in technical jobs and they will just look and like, what's happening? But the actor and me, we understand each other. That's the most important thing for acting. The questions are so good. Thank you so much. He'll answer uh, your question page after the meeting ends in the ALP group. Uh, we, I would like to thank you, Paulina, for your inspiring answers. Your insights truly captivated the audience. Uh, and we appreciate your time, effort, and sharing your expertise. And we look forward to applying your wisdom in our life. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us your time. You. I'm really grateful for you to inviting me. I, I send luck to everyone. I wish so, so much luck. For everyone who participates in this film festival and thank you so much for joining today and remember actors are really important <laughs> good luck thank you so much good, uh, love from india thank you all right so that was a very great presentation i guess and i hope Whoever who the participant and the audience have asked their questions have satisfied with the with uh, with her answer and uh, if anyone wanted to connect with her so I'll share her Instagram uh, page here so you can contact her and you can ask the questions to her okay so let's move to our screening again okay so I'll be sharing my screen again and I request you all to be humble in the chat and don't use any inappropriate word all right. All right, so let's go. Aman, I want to tell you something. You are one of the best things that happened to me. I will always cherish the moments we spent together. And yes, I love you. 
I know what I am doing, but remember one thing: I am doing this for the love. Nikul, hello. Oh, oh my God! Say something for God's sake, Nikul. Could you give me a break? I'm just a fool. When it comes to loving you, could you give me a break? I'm just a fool. When it comes to loving you. Uh, I'm so sorry for the interruption. Uh, I will share it again. Uh, I'm so sorry. సంపాదించేవాళ్ళు కానీ కాలంతో పాటు అన్నీ మారుతూ వచ్చాయి ఒక మనిషి హిజ్రాల ఎందుకు మారుతాడో ఎలా మారుతాడో మనకు తెలుసు కానీ మారిన తర్వాత వాళ్ళ జీవనం మరణం ఎలా ఉంటుందో ఇప్పుడు చూద్దాం ఏమన్నా కావాలా కొత్త చీర కట్టుకోవాలని ఆశగా ఉంది ఇంకా పువ్వులు కూడా కావాలి అక్కకు పిడిపచ్చినట్టుంది సరే
బాబు డబ్బులే నా దగ్గర లేవు ఉంటాయి చూడు లోపల జబ్బులు పెట్టుకుని ఉంటావు తీ లేవు ఏ ఏంటది అలా గోల్ చేస్తున్నారు డబ్బులు ఇస్తే తీసుకోవాలి లేదంటే వెళ్ళిపోవాలి అంతేగాని ఈ సతాయించడం ఏంటి పబ్లిక్ ప్లేస్ లోకి రావాలంటేనే భయం వేస్తుంది ఎక్కడ చేరలెత్తి డబ్బులు అడుగుతారేమోనని ఎంత మంది పబ్లిక్ ఇబ్బంది పడుతున్నారు తెలుసా మీకు అది చేసేది మీకు కదయ్యా మాలా వేషాలు వేసుకున్న వాళ్ళు రాండే పోదాం ఇదిగో అబ్బాయి డబ్బులు ఇవ్వు ఐదు వందలు ఐదు వందలు అండి మూడు వందలేగా ఎక్కలేని బేరాలు మా దగ్గరకు వచ్చినప్పుడే చేస్తారు కదా మేము కోళ్ళు బయట డబ్బులు తేవాలంటే ఊరికి ఊరికి తెస్తారు మా దగ్గరకు వచ్చిన తర్వాత గీసి గీసి బేర మారతారు మళ్ళీ బైక్ లో కార్లు వేసుకుని వచ్చేస్తారు అర్ధరాత్రులు కాదు ఫైనల్ ఎయిట్ నాలుగు వందలు వస్తావరావా చూసావా అక్క ఎలా వెళ్ళిపోతుందో తన ఇష్టమే పోతే పోని మనం మాత్రం ఏం చేస్తాం అంతే అక్క పూలు దొరకలేదు చీర దొరికింది సరే పద అక్క అక్క లే పూలు చీర అడిగావు కదా పూలు లేవు చీర దొరికింది ఇదిగో ఇది చూడు ఈ కలర్ నీకు బాగా నొప్పుద్ది అక్క రనక రనక రనక రనక అక్క రనక అక్క లివ్వక అక్క అక్క రనక అక్క లివ్వక అక్క లేక అక్క లివ్వక అక్క అక్క లివ్వక అక్క రానక లేవక అక్క గడిగా ఉన్నప్పుడు మా ఇంట్లో వాళ్ళు సంతోషంగా ఉన్నారు నేను ఇలా మారినప్పుడు అసహించుకున్నారు ఇంట్లో వాళ్ళు సమాజం దూరం పెట్టినప్పుడు రాణి అక్కనే దగ్గరికి తీసుకుంది కానీ ఇప్పుడు ఇక్కడ ఏం జరుగుతుందో అర్థం కూడా కావట్లేదు జనాలకి సిరాలంటే డబ్బుల కోసం అడుక్కునేవాళ్ళు డబ్బుల కోసం ఒళ్ళమ్ముకునేవాళ్ళు పబ్లిక్ ప్లేస్ లో డాన్సులు చేసి పాటలు పాడి న్యూస్ సెండ్ చేసేవాళ్ళు కానీ అదే ఎందుకు చేస్తున్నామని ఎవరు ఆలోచించరు మాకు చదువు లేదు ఎక్కడికి పోయినా 
ఎక్కువ అమ్మాయికి అబ్బాయికి స్కూళ్ళు కాలేజీలు ఉన్నాయి కానీ మాకు చాలా తక్కువ చదువుకునేకి అవకాశం ఉన్న చాలా కారణాల వల్ల చదవలేం ఒకవేళ ఎలాగోలా చేసి చదువులు ముగించిన మాకు పని ఇయ్యరు పని చేయకుండా డబ్బులు ఎక్కంచలు వస్తాయి అందుకే పబ్లిక్ ప్లేస్ లో బలవంతంగా అడుక్కుంటా ఊళ్ళమ్ముకుంటా అంతేకాదు సిటీలో వెయ్యి మంది అసలైన ఇజరాలుంటే ఇజరాలు మని చెప్పుకుని తిరిగే వాళ్ళు ఆరు వేలు మంది ఉన్నారు ఆరు వేల మంది చేసే పనులే మనలా ఇజరాలలా ఉన్న వాళ్ళ కళ్ళల్లో నీళ్లు తెప్పిస్తున్నాయి వాళ్ళని ఎదుర్కొనే శక్తి మనకి లేదు నడుచుకుంటూ వచ్చేవాడు ఉన్నాడు కార్లు వచ్చేవాడు ఉన్నాడు వచ్చి రేట్ ఎంత ఎంత చేపు చేస్తావు అంటారే గాని ఏమన్నా అవసరం ఉన్నాయా మీకు అని ఎవరు అడుగురు అక్క ఇంట్లో వాళ్ళ గురించి సమాజం గురించి వదిలి గవర్నమెంట్ అందరికీ అన్ని ఇస్తుంది కదా మరి మనకెందుకు ఇవ్వట్లేదు మన గురించి వాళ్ళని ఎవరు అడగరా రెండు వేల పన్నెండులోనే మనల్ని థర్డ్ జెండర్ అని గుర్తించారు కానీ మన కనీస అవసరాలు కూడా ఎవరూ తీర్చలేదు ఎందుకు తీర్చలేకపోయారంటే వాళ్ళు అసలు మనల్ని మనుషులుగానే గుర్తించలేదు ఏ రోజైతే అందరిలో మనం ఉన్నామని గుర్తించి మనల్ని నమ్మి దగ్గరికి చేరదీస్తారో ఆ రోజే మనకి అసలైన జీవితాలు మొదలవుతాయి ఆ రోజు కోసమే నేను ఎదురు చూస్తున్నాను ఆ రోజు వచ్చాక చూసి చచ్చిపోతే చాలే ఈ జన్మకి ఇంకేం వద్దు ఊరుకోవే రోడ్డు మీద జనాలు ఎవరూ లేరు రండే జరగాల్సిన పనులు చూద్దాం మళ్ళీ ఎవరైనా చూస్తారు ఈ జన్మలైనా పుట్టావు కనీసం వచ్చే జన్మలైనా అబ్బాయిగా గాని అమ్మాయిగా గాని పుట్టి సావు ఎందుకక్క ఇట్లా చేస్తున్నారు ఎవరు కోరుకుంటూ పుట్టికే ఇది ఈ జన్మలు ఎలాగో ఇలా అయిపోయింది ఇప్పుడు పడిన అవమానాలు కష్టాలు చాలానే ఉన్నాయి కనీసం వచ్చే జన్మలో నేను మంచిగా పుట్టాలని ఇలా చేస్తాం ఇది ఒక నమ్మకం
అందరిలో చులకన తత్వం ఎవరేమంటున్నా పట్టించుకోకుండా బ్రతుకును భారంగా ఈడ్చుకుంటూ వెళ్లడం తప్ప వేరే మార్గం లేని పయనం ప్రాణం ఉన్న మనిషిని మనిషిగా గుర్తించలేని సమాజంలో గుర్తింపు కోసం వెతుకుతున్న నిత్యాన్వేషులకి ఈ కథ అంకితం
भोजन लिया गई अम्मा हाँ बेटिया आज दुईया घर में काम था सुरेश के यहाँ मेहमान लोग आ गए थे तो कहा कि हम खुद ही खाना बना लेंगे
साथ लगे उजालो की यहाँ
आ गई बिटिया लाओ बैग दो बैग दो चल बेटा बैठा अरे शाबास बड़े आराम आराम से बिटिया रानी स्कूल जाएगी खूब पढ़ेगी लिखेगी बहुत आगे जाएगी स्कूल से कभी भी अकेले बाहर मत निकलना समझी बेटा और कोई तुम्हारे पास आए और कहे मेरे साथ चलो हम तुमको टॉफी खिलाते हैं तो मत जाना हमेशा अपने बड़ों की इज्जत करना किसी से भी जुबान नहीं लड़ाना और हाँ सरे रहा अगर तुमसे कोई कोई बात करता है तो उसका जवाब नहीं देना ठीक है मेरी बात समझ गई ना बेटा मेरी ये सारी बातें हमेशा याद रखना सैचिया हमेशा खराब है रहते अब वो खराब है इसे के लिए अरे चनुआ वाला मोबाइल कहाँ है जल्दी ले आओ अरे तुम अपना काम करो उनका तो काम है चिल्लाना जब से ब्याह करके लाए हैं तब से चिल्ला ही तो रहे हैं हाँ दे रहे हैं लो रखो बैग सब कुछ रख लियो ना अरे मधु तार ओढ़नी खुश रहो बिटिया खुश रहो ठीक है अम्मा हाँ और ध्यान से जाना बिटिया
कुमारी मोहिनी गौतम मेनका भारती विघलेश शर्मा विशाल विश्वकर्मा मिराज अंसारी अंकेश प्रजापति कुमारी मधु सर खुशबू भारती यहाँ पे कह रहे हैं कि ये 60 डिग्री का एंगल यहाँ पर बनेगा और फिर कह रहे हैं कि उसी मकान के शीर्ष पर तो मकान के छत पे चले जाइए कोई पॉइंट यहाँ पे रख दीजिए जैसे मान लीजिए ई पॉइंट है अब कह रहे हैं कि जब ये ई से इसी इसको आओ पकौड़ा खा लो गरम है बहुत <laughs> वो क्या कहते हैं अंग्रेजी में हाट हाट है एकदम तुम्हारी तरह अरे किनारे कहे जा रही हो ए तुम ही से तो बतियाना है ए, मारे तो हारन मार रहे थे अच्छा सुनो नाम का है तुम्हारा अरे अरे जा कहा रही हो बहुत जल्दी है तो मोटरसाइकिल से छोड़ दे शर्मा आ गई <laughs> से नाम पूछे थे बता ही नहीं तो अरे हमारा नाम अमर है याद कर लीजिएगा काम आएगा हाँ। हमारा दीपक तुम जरा पहले कर लो अम्मा जब हम स्कूल आते जाते हैं ना तो हमारे लड़का पीछा करता है हमें परेशान करता है बिटिया इस सब बात तुम्हारे तो बाबू जी के पता चला ना तो पढ़ाई लिखाई छुड़वा के घर में बैठा देंगे उस श्वेता को तो देख ही रही हो इसी सब चक्कर में घर में बैठी है पढ़ाई लिखाई सब बर्बाद तू ना वो लड़का से कुछ मत बोलो बस सीधे स्कूल जाओ और आओ वो तो उसे कुछ नहीं बोलेगा समझी बहुत जल्दी में लग रही हैं। अरे कम से कम हमारा इंतजार तो कर लीजिए तब से हम आपके पीछे लट्टू की तरह गोल गोल गोल गोल घूमे जा रहे हैं अब तो भावे नहीं दे रही हमको देखिए हमें आपसे दोनों बात नहीं करनी अरे अबे यार ये लड़की हमारे दिल में धस कर दे अब इससे पहले वाली भी तो धसी थी अब आपकी फाइनल है मोहब्बत हो गई है इससे क्या हो गई है मोहब्बत अब मोहब्बत के चक्कर में मत पड़ो समझे जवानी का मजा लो आओ चलो तुमको ठर्रा पिलाते हैं
क्या करने आई थी है अच्छा बाजार घूमने आई थी का दो हम पकड़ ले अरे हम पकड़ लेते हैं तुम लोग भी खा लो अब खाइए हम लोग बाद में खा लेंगे वाह मधु की अम्मा क्या खाना बनाती है दिन भर खेत से आते हैं थके रहते हैं एकदम थकान मिट जाता है हमारा कहा मधु तुम कहा चुप जा सब ठीक ठाक चल रहा है ना पढ़ाई ठीक चल रही है ना अब ग्यारह में आ गई है अब बारहवीं के बाद इम्तहान देगी तो अफसर अफसर तो बन ही जाएगी बेटा ठीक से लगन से पढ़ाई करना ठीक है घर में बैठा देंगे स्कूल जाने का मन नहीं करता नहीं करता घर पे ही रहना कहा हुआ हमारे पास इतना पैसा भी तो नहीं कि हम आगे की पढ़ाई पूरी कर सके बेटी एक बात हमेशा याद रखना इस धरती पे अगर को ताकतवर चीज है तो वह पढ़ाई कहीं की पढ़ाई से तो दुनिया के हर एक चीज पा सकती हो हमारे समय में तो पढ़ाई का कोनो महत्व था ही नहीं बस बिटिया सयान हो गई तो ब्याह करा दिया जाता था जिंदगी के 25-30 साल गांव में कैसे गुजर गया पता ही नहीं चला अब तो यह हमारी दुनिया है चूल्हा चौका करते करते एक दिन हमको यही मर जाना है पता है काहे काहे कि हम अनपढ़ है का तू चाहती हो ऐसा रहना का तू देश दुनिया नहीं घूमना चाहती हो बेटिया हम सब कुछ बेच देंगे पर तुमको पढ़ाएंगे तब गांव में शोर हुई है कि कोनो गरीब की बिटिया अफसर हुई है समझी आ, अब सो जाओ हम अपन सब कुछ बेच देंगे पर तुमका पढ़ाई नहीं तब तक गांव में शोर हुई है कि कोनो गरीब की बिटिया अफसर हुई है अंटार्कटिका महाद्वीप ये क्या होता है इसे हम घुमंतु महाद्वीप भी कह सकते हैं क्योंकि यह क्या है बर्फ से बना हुआ बर्फ से बना हुआ है और बर्फ पानी में से क्या होता है घूमता है घूमता रहता है इसलिए हम इसे सफेद महाद्वीप बच्चे आलो खड़े जाओ ठीक है वो एक उप महाद्वीप भी है वो ये क्या है Salah sendiri. 
दिन बाजार से भाग गई आज यहाँ से भाग रही हो अरे इतने भागने का शौक है तो हमारे साथ भाग चलो ना <laughs> लगता है बहुत प्यार से बात कर लिए तुमसे अब तुमसे तुम्हारे भाषा में बात करना पड़ेगा बहुत इज्जत दे दिया साला <laughs> अबे उसकी ओढ़नी तुम्हारे हाथ में रहेगी बे अरे अपनी ओढ़नी तो लेती जाओ अबे ओढ़नी लौटा कर आओ साले इज्जत होती है लड़के की अरे तो हम कौन सा जान बूझ के की है बे लौटा कर आओ बे बहुत बड़ा गलती किए हो तुम एक काम करो तुम जाओ रही और नहीं देख रहा हम नहीं जाएंगे कोनो लफड़ा होगा तो हम ही फंसेंगे अरे कुछ नहीं होगा यार हम है ना यहाँ पर चाहो देख रहा और कुछ हुआ तो मातारी कसम खा रहे हैं कुछ नहीं होने देंगे तुमको पकड़ो इसको जाओ देख रहा जाओ अरे जाओ देखना ध्यान से देना कोई देखे ना करो उसको जाओ मन करता है हासिल कर लू दुनिया की हर चीज मन करता है हासिल कर लू दुनिया की हर चीज मन करता है हासिल कर लू दुनिया की हर चीज लेकिन भारी पड़ी हम मुझ पे लोगों की ये रीत लेकिन भारी पड़ी हम मुझ पे लोगों की ये क्या करूं कैसे करूं किसको सुनाऊं भी क्या करूं कैसे करूं किसको सुनाऊं भी मन मेला है लोगों का किसको दिखाऊं हमें आपसे कौन बात नहीं करनी चुप हो जाऊं कुछ ना बोलूं चुप हो जाऊं कुछ ना बोलूं कैसे मैं आवाज उठाऊं कैसे मैं आवाज उठाऊं कैसे मैं आवाज उठाऊं कैसे मैं आवाज उठाऊं लोग हैं समझे ना और मन की गांव गांव दिखावा था ना और टीवी में आज समाचार तब लड़के गांव में दिखावे लगा ना अब ठहरा ठहर हो गए लगा ले लुहेड़ा हो गई ना सारा लड़के में अब क्यों मायदा समझा ही नहीं पावा था तिपकवे की तो बात नहीं कर रहे थे लोग
अबे उसकी ओढ़नी तुम्हारे हाथ में रहेगी बे अरे अपनी ओढ़नी तो लेती जाओ नहीं आएगा तब तक हम तुमको क्या भोजन नहीं देंगे मलाई खाए हो आओ खिलाते हैं तुमको आज मन करता है हासिल कर लू दुनिया की हर जी लेकिन भारी पड़ी हम मुझ पे लोगों की ये रीत लेकिन भारी पड़ी हम मुझ पे लोगों की ये If there are more public places specifically allotted to the to public creativity and, and, and the, the public's idea of whatever they want to do with with art, I've been told, I've been told they're doing that in Europe is a lot easier. Just walk up on the wall and write on it, no problem. Legal. And you know, and again, hypothetically, we could do that in this country. We got walls all over the place, they're not doing anything. Establishment. You're not thinking about the better good of people by surrounding them by monochromatic, flat, dry, and just dead looking absence of life environment. You can't expect to get anything really good out of people, anything real inspirational. They're not going to be inspired. She makes me self conscious. Though. Shut up. 
sanction chaotic chaotic design it has no significance but the minute there's significance to it get it off the wall I want to just dedicate my time to writing lyrics and playing congress I mean painting is one thing to me but I've become like against painting yo. painting is kind of like for me unless it's walls I don't want to do it it's just, for me, it's like painting right now is like arrogant to me, you know? It's arrogant to me. It's like, cause, because like painting is like your own images, you know? And that's to say that the images you make, imitations you make of life, are better than what's already there. It's like, and then people prefer to have that. A, a wall is different, because a wall is like you're exposing, but painting's like, only one person can buy this shit, and so you know. So like for me, and yeah, and then and then on top of that, for walls, I don't even like to see, you know, characters shit like that. I want to see letters. I want that's all I want to see is letters. You know, letters like like like like like graffiti memes like Roman Roman graffiti was the you know and domino la letra and like people if, if you know how to use a use a chisel right and you can get the letters like perfect, then you are you are really, uh, Grafitero back then, <laughs> but but really, man, that's what it is to me. Like you look at the like the with the Muslims and how they um and how they uh they write the name of God or name of Muhammad. Those are beautiful. Those are like those are like intricate designs. And you and if somebody really has the skills, like old as hell or young or whatever, a prodigy or like an old you know master or whatever, they do it like in a few motions. That's perfect because everyone looks at it instead of looking at a white Christ with blonde hair and blue eyes. They look at, they look at the name of God, and everyone's like, "Yep, that's God, all right," <laughs> you know. So it, like, it burns that it shit, you know. Prints that shit on everybody's soul. So it's kind of like for me, man. That's all I want to really do is just graffiti right now. Lettuce. Let's go over there and sing next to the microphone. Okay. That way, everything's heard. I want to take you around the world tonight I forgot all the loving and the serving right And I do Maybe we get to the crib for real So you be able to see what you meant to feel Truly I want to take you around the world tonight In my room Got all the loving and the serving right And I do Maybe we get to the crib for real So you can be able to see what you meant to feel Truly You better get up off your ass for Get it like you asked for Let it go when I'm at the blast off Honey spraying on the perfume Making up she only wanna shake it up sideways. Hips got me minding the days, so by the way, and shake like a dime of the day. It's no lie. Hold it behind and just slide to the whole tough of the night. It's alright, baby. You can tell it I'm high more time. You don't wanna lose the Man means mind, and dra means to free. You pull your arrow back. And you say your mantra. You let it go. Next time you're gonna walk out the door, ask the person that's gonna watch you walk out the door and not accompany you to tell you that you're gonna have a crash. You're gonna have a big car crash. It's gonna be terrible. You're gonna rip your skull open. Watch your brains come out and you're gonna die. Have a good day. No, you wouldn't like that, would you? You'd rather have them say, you're gonna have a good day. Thanks, honey. I'll see you when I come home. These are little mantras. They're not mantras but they're words and they're very, very powerful because with those things you bless somebody or you curse them. I'm a Hare Krishna. I'm a Vaishnava. I'm a Vaishnava because I got into mantras because I was in the word, because I was in the graffiti. Funny, isn't it?
This is what I, this right here, this is the design for the bus that I painted upstate. This is the only, people think I had a big drawing for that whole bus, I had this little piece of fucking paper, this little yeah. chintzy piece of paper. That's how it started. I started <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, I could have painted a whole tour bus up there. Mirror time. Sounds like the rain. Jimmy, you were not
It's got caffeine in it. It's got caffeine and electrolyte, which is odd. Oh, um, do caffeine, nicotine, no. alcohol. Yep. So what's wrong with smart water? What's wrong with bacon? You're the one high fiving that you hate it. Tell me what's wrong with smart water. Somebody tell us which way to go. Snow is closed all the roads. You gotta get the hill out of here. The city is a graveyard. The city is a ghost town. Entreguense, zombie meal. Vete el programa de la mañana y mátele al cabrón que me despierte todos los días. Yeah, you should be saying shit while you're talking. Somebody shake me. I found dreaming. Sugar, won't you wake me? Sugar, won't you wake me? Sino si Mayor Benavista? Kaibigan ng lahat. Napakasimpleng tao. Laging maasahan. Champion ng masa. Matalino. Manas tatay niya. He is a servant leader. And I can say na he is destined to be one. Bakit si Mayor Benavista? Bakit hindi? Saksi ako sa magandang pamamalaan niya dito sa Las Espadas. Malaki ang ibinaba ng primates natin under his leadership. He was able to achieve this even without the use of violence. He definitely deserves something big as the Nobel Peace Prize. Tinulungan niya hindi lamang ang aking pamilya, kundi lahat na nangangailangan. Wala siyang pinipili. Naghahatid din siya ng gobyernong nakikinig at di kinatatakutan. Nabawasan din ang mga squatter at mahihirap dito kasi binibigyan niya kami ng pabahay, cash gift, Napuntawid namin araw-araw. And most of all, wala siyang bahid ng korupsyon. Number one enemy niya kaya yun. Pangarap niya ang isang bayang binikis ng malasakit. Kung ako ang tatanungin, papasa na nga yung national hero eh. And yes, that came out from my mouth and I will seek to what I said. Magaling si Mayor. Marangal, makabayan, at tunay siyang isa sa atin. Honestly, I see Rizal in him. Our town could become a utopia because of him. Bangha maging pinakamaunlad pa sa buong bansa dahil sa kanya. Sa dami ba naman nilang tons of gold nila tatago, Las Esparas is ready to reclaim its former glory. Knowing me, I wouldn't live somewhere na I don't trust. Sa totoo lang, siya ang naging pag-asa namin. Nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral si Nabunso, at unti-unti gumiginhawa ang buhay namin. Hindi nadadawit 
sa kahit anong illegal practices. Walang bagay na ginawa na nakatatapak sa aming karapatang pangtao. Hindi mandaraya, hindi mandarambong. May degree sa Vail University. Patuloy na tumatakbo para sa ating mga tagalas espadas. He only wants what's best for us, his people. Siya ang ama ng ating bayan. Our living hope. Leader na magpapaunlad sa atin. Answered prayer. Iboboto mo ba siya sa darating na eleksyon? Yes na yes! Oo naman! Doc, yes of course! Buena Vista is my man. Buena Vista para sa mahirap. Vista will be great again. Si Buena Vista ang mayor ko. Cut! Good day! Ah, galing nyo dun ah! Siguro lang next time. Mas kalmado pa ng konti. But, I'll take it from that. Mayor over here would be so proud. Dapat, sabi niya yan para hindi kayo napapahama. na-interview mo siya. Galingan mo sa pag-build up sa kanya. Pabanguhin natin lalo ang pangalan niya. This is your first big assignment, Clara. Make me proud. Ha? Huh? Ano po? Build up? What do you mean by that, sir? As a journalist, it is your duty to come up with quality articles. So, you know what to do. Nalikpit mo na ba mga sagabay? Siguro duhin mo lang na malinis ang ginawa niyong trabaho, kundi malilintikan kayo sa akin. Young lady, kanina ka pa ba dyan? Hindi naman po. Kararating ko lang rin. Magandang araw po. Clara De La Cruz po from INSM. Hindi ako pwedeng magkamali. Iba ang kutub ko. May connection kaya sa pagkawala ng mga journalist si Senator? Anong klaseng article to? De La Paz? Hidden Wealth? Is a sure sign of cryptocracy? You're only giving a simple task! May hindi na tayo nito! But sir, that's the truth! Maniwala kayo sa akin! Big expose ito against Senator De La Paz! Tama na pagbubulag-bulaga natin! The truth? Sa tingin mo maniniwala sila dyan? Basura! Ang tangit trabaho mo lang isusin the best in him! Hindi mo pa magawa! Para kay Papa at para sa mga kapwa ko journalists. 
Hoy Mars, alam mo ba may itinatago naman parang baho yung si De La Paz? Ha? Buti naman, natabon niya ito bago pa mag-eleksyon. Ipabotok pa naman sana yun. <laughs> Such a disappointment. Lagot ako sa senator nito. My God! Bakit ganyan? Hindi ganyan ang inutos ko! Hinding-hindi ko pagsisisihan ito hindi ko po para sa tama. Panahon na para alisin ang takot. Panahon na para lumaban. Kapag namulat ka na sa katotohanan, kasalanan na ang pumikit. Young lady, susutin mo ba o hindi? हाँ मेरे मिश क्या बात है अरे क्या बना उस डिलीवरी का अरे पहुंची नहीं है अभी तक तू बहुत झूठ बोल रहा है क्या पापा पॉकेट में नहीं हाँ एक मिनट एक मिनट होल्ड कर होल्ड कर हाँ हाँ बताओ बोलिए वो होना चाहिए बस काम आज डिलीवरी पहुंचनी चाहिए आज की आज बेटा ये क्या आप सारी पॉकेट मनी इसमें क्यों डालते हैं गुल्लक में हम्म पापा मेरे ये पैसे आपके ही तो काम आएंगे। वो कैसे? आप सिगरेट पीते हो ना? आपके इलाज के लिए यही पैसे तो काम आएंगे।
Good morning. Please sit down. Good morning, students. I am Vikram Jaswal, and I am your new science teacher. Hope you all are doing well so far. But in future, we have to do best. So alternatively, all the students will give their introduction with their name and place. Yes, you. My name is Kushme, and I am from Mysore. Good. Yes, please. You. My name is Pragya Pathani and I am from Radhu. What's your name? My name is Saksham and I am from Nagdev. Tell me your full name. My name is Saksham Rohit. Sit down. Yes. Yes, you. Yes, you. What's your name? So my name is Juhi. Tell me the full name of yours. So my full name is Juhi. Tell me the full name of yours. So my full name is Juhi only. Tell me the father name. So my father's name is Shimshir. Tell me your full name of mother. So my father's full name is Shimshir only. Tell me your mother name. So my mother's name is Nisha. Your mother full name. So my mother's full name is Nisha. How many brother and sister do you have? Sir, I am alone. I do not have any siblings. <laughs> What's your religion and caste? Sir, I am a student. and that is my caste and acquiring knowledge is my religion i know that now you'll ask me what is the religion and caste of your parents so let me tell you that the religion of my mother is to teach me and take care of my father's needs and the religion of my father is to take care of me and fulfill my mother's needs so one thing more i'm a science student and i want to become a scientist after completing my studies and fulfilling my parents dream i'll definitely get engaged in the study of religion and whatever religion will stand for the fact of science i'll follow that but if in those pages of scripture i found anything which is against the fact of science i'll consider that whole holy book to be impure so since science says that even if a drop of kerosene is mixed with a glass of whole milk the whole milk becomes impure and that's it sir said inside it's okay sir i don't mind it so but i think teachers should treat every student equally so you know what a student's caste is only a student anyway sir have a nice day
I realized that there's a lot of us around, and, uh, but I also felt that in many ways I did. I feel left out in, like in the general guest scene because it's very white, Anglo-Saxon, middle class, and a lot of us are not. And a lot of us don't speak English. And um, creation recollected. As per the legends, when Brahma, the god of creation, recollected Ayurveda, the science of life. It's for all life forms on this planet, not just for humans. For plants as Vriksha Ayurveda, for animals as Pashu Ayurveda, and for many more species. Our health is interlinked with everything that surrounds us. Not just our health, health of soil, water, air, plants, animals, everything matters. This is a journey throughout the length and breadth of this marvelous nation to revive many practices which remain undocumented and is confined to some particular areas. A journey to bring back the buried science, the hidden treasures for the benefit of not just humankind but life kind. A journey to explore the great Indian legacies that is left behind. Yeah, Surapala's Vriksha Ayurveda is the ancient text dedicated solely for the plant life. Written over a period of 1000 AD, this spectacular text containing 12 chapters have many interesting references. While in Drumaraksha Adhyaya, Surabala describes healing of broken branches in a tree similar to healing of broken leg in a man. Chitrigarana Adhyaya explains about hybrids and grafting. Surabala's Vriksha Ayurved was a lost text doomed in the darkness of Bodleian Library, Oxford, UK for centuries. It was freed and so the light because of the continuous efforts of Dr. Y. L. Nini, one of the eminent Indian agricultural scientists. He copied the original text, translated it to English and disseminated this priceless knowledge to the whole world. Asian Agri-History Foundation was established in 1994 along with a group of agricultural scientists to learn from the traditional wisdom and the indigenous time-tested technologies for the environmental friendly and sustainable agriculture. It's been three decades now. We took our journey to AAHF in Padnagar where the soul of Vriksha Ayurved took its rebirth to see the fruits of his vision. When the Vriksha Ayurveda practices were practiced by the farmers, the yield level were tremendous. 
Normally we are told that our E level were very low during 1947, which is a fact. And if we compare the E level of that period, we can see the published data. Even today we have that literature which says that the productivity level for example of rice was 200 quintals per hectare. And in some places of Tanjavuram, the productivity levels were 150 quintals per hectare, 120 quintals per hectare and so on. And that time the India was known as the golden bird, Sone ki chiliya tha Bharat. Now the time has come that we need to look back all those practices and apply it because they are contemporary. They are as useful as those times. All the agricultural practices, if we look the Parashar's book, Krishi Parasar, then we can see the contents and we can tally the contents of the modern agriculture book. Hardly there is any difference. They were having the all practices, all agricultural practices starting from land preparation to the selling of the product, market strategy, all technical strategy, maybe wheat control, water management, insect and pest management, metrology, rainfall prediction models and all those we were having at 400 BC which have practical implication right now also. It is a need of our and a very important aspect to work and we will be producing as we were producing 200 quintals per hectare and if we compare the present productivity of rice at national level it is 25 to 30 quintals per hectare we are struggling for and at uh, Vrakshayar Veda practices were followed the productivity levels were too high, too high. So many scientists from Albert Howard and others also they have uh, appreciated this Vrakshayar Veda time and again. While the soils degrade globally at unprecedented rates with loss of trillions of microbes in the soil, it is a key challenge to find agricultural practices that improve yields while maintaining the soil health. Surapala's Vriksha Ayurveda has this beautiful concept in its Poshana Vithi Adhyaya, the Kunab Jal, a liquid fertilizer come pesticide prepared from animal waste which later was modified into herbal fertilizer by AAHF. Kunab Jal is made from germinated black gram, jaggery, oil cake, cow dung, water boiled with rice husk, milk, buttermilk, herbs with neem, bilwa, jamun, eranda, grass and weeds available in the vicinities. These are mixed with water kept in an airtight container for anaerobic fermentation and are stirred often. The absence of gas bubble formation confirms the completion of the process. It usually takes 15 to 25 days and is used in the ratio of 1 is to 10 along with irrigating water. Many research projects on Kunabjal are conducted in this institute on various crops like lady's finger, paddy, brinjal, tulasi, black soya bean, black ram. We were astonished to see the high yield and pest resistant quality of these crops. We took a short journey from there to Kotabag in Nainital where many small scale farmers are encouraged to use Kunabjal. Farmers shared that it is cost effective, easy to produce and gives more yield than the chemical fertilizers. Vrakshayar Veda has number of technologies which need to be validated, which need to be researched, lot of research is required. As we proceed with our efforts to popularize Rakshayar Veda based farming practices into our agriculture system, there is bound to be a tremendous scope for other disciplines, not only in agriculture but also Ayurveda. Because Rakshayar Veda has basic applications of Ayurveda 
टू प्लांट रेफरेंसेज ऑफ वृक्ष आयुर्वेद एस कैटर्ड इन मेरी अदर टेक्स लाइक कृषि पराशर बृहत संहिता उपवम विनोद विश्व वल्लभा एक्सेट्रा All these immense knowledge required for organic farming are confined only to the book which needs to be researched and implemented to increase the yield of organic products this will ensure the basic right of access to healthy food to the mankind and thus preventing many diseases Pashu Ayurveda our journey took us to Guruvayur in Kerala goats on country the land of elephants Punnathur Kota in Guruvayur is one of the world's largest elephant sanctuaries elephants here are nurtured with traditional knowledge passed on for generations along with contemporary medicine On talks with Dr. Devan Nambudri who is practicing Gajra Chikitsa for more than 20 years mainly three textbooks are followed Palakapya the main textbook contains 160 chapters it explains about the disorders of elephant with diagnosis and its management Madanga Leela A regional textbook explains about signs and symptoms of the diseases that affects the trunk, eyelid and ear movements of the elephant. Gajya Shastra is a book which explains the milestone development of the elephants for each decade period along with the treatment aspects. Anaha, abdominal distension and padaroga, food diseases are the common disorders during the practice of gajra chigilsa for anaha ayurvedic formulations like ashtachurnam hingavajadi churnam and gandharva hastadi kashayam are commonly used just like as in humans the difference exists in dosage the wounds occurring in the feet are usually managed by washing it with panchavalkala kwad followed by application of panchavalkala thaila Why they ask claim that elephants respond well to these treatments medications like rock salt palm candy as a fetida are administered before any kind of travel it helps to prevent the digestive disorders that usually occur after travel diet of the elephants are planned here according to the seasonal regimen mentioned in palakapya The diagnosis should be made by keenly watching its movements and by enquiring the mahout. Stages of must is well explained as a sexual urge of the elephant and managed based on the principle navega antharaniyam that is urges should not be controlled. Herbs like harita ghee along with ghee, sugar and rock salt are used. Even though hasta chigilsa is practiced successfully it is still confined to a particular area and must be brought to light for the welfare of this magnificent creature So the most authentic book of us the ayurveda is palaka Signs and symptoms of an elephant in one year two years three years etc cleanly explained So those who have interest in the elephant field they might have noted that the main roga is erandakatta and padu if that is properly managed the life of an elephant will be increased and also rasayan also very important role. the treatment is based on three doshas only and elephant also have got sapta dhatus and the whole body is developed from the five five bhutas prithvi up tejas vayu and akasha actually the elementary treatment is easier than ours 
it will not do apatya if you are not giving we are giving according to the condition the medicines are same but the difference is in dosage those who have studied ayurveda can keep the step to study hasti ayurveda a golden subject full of knowledge authentic knowledge but nobody is there to support it's a pity condition and if you are going in systematic way the reach hope the life span of each and every elephant can be improved if you are following our system ayurvedic system horses and cows are revered in this holy land seen as symbol of royalty and divinity salihotra samhita describes in detail about the disorders of horses and its management in 12000 slokas vrishakalpa druma is an ancient text about diseases in cows and their treatment in spite of the availability of these texts it is neither researched nor implemented amidst these scenarios We came to know about an institution which manufacture ayurvedic medicines for animals. We set our journey to the manufacturing unit headed by Sri Sudhakar Agarwal in Saharanpur, a small town in Uttar Pradesh. It welcomed us with a stunning manufacturing unit equipped with high-tech laboratories, machineries and skillful technicians. The formulations are taken from Ayurvedic classical textbooks like Charaka Samhita, Sushruta Samhita and Bhaishija Ratnavali. The principles of medicine preparation are similar to humans except for dosage and formulation. It is catered and customized according to the need of the animal. It is exported not only to different states in India but also to various Asian and European nations. It is gaining popularity among the cattle keepers and the few medicines like Himax, Prajna capsules are even becoming household names. The Ayurvedic veterinary medicines are efficient in chronic illness, infertility and to increase milk production and to improve weight gain. Common disorders like dysentery, cough, skin diseases, liver disorders, digestive problems, stress disorder, retained placenta, involution of uterus are managed efficiently. Usage of Ayurvedic medicines in animals ensures that their products like meat, milk, etc. are free from antibiotic residuals which are suspected for antibiotic resistance in humans. Regarding future scope of Ayurvedic veterinary medicines, it is increasing day by day because of increasing awareness about side effects of allopathic products. the residual effect in milk and meat people want organic products safe which are environment friendly so these have, uh, products have very good scope in, not in india but all over the world national dairy development board encourages the farmers to use ayurvedic medicines for their livestock uta deva avahitam deva unnayadha puna utagasta kusam deva deva ayurveda the science of life has ashta angas eight branches kaya chigilsa bala chigilsa Graha Chigilsa, Urthwanga Chigilsa, Shalya, Damshra Chigilsa, Jara Chigilsa and Vrusha Chigilsa. Among these Ashta Angas, Jara Chigilsa or Rasayana is one of the branch dedicated to Swasthasya Swasthya Rakshanam that is maintaining the state of health. Rasayana is mainly administered in two ways, Kudi Pravishiga and Vadadabiga. In Kudi Pravishiga, Rasayana 
an Ayurvedic formulation is administered to the person residing in a specially designed hut for a period of time. This makes it unique. In spite of few efforts taken by visionary doctors like Dr. Madan Mohan Malviya, still it wasn't practiced widely and was confined to pages. A word came in the air. A hospital in Kerala managed to transfer this wisdom from pages to patients. Thus, we set our journey towards Padinarakara Ayurveda Hospital and Research Center. On talks with Dr. Sedu Madhavan, chief physician of this hospital, Kodi Pravishika is akin to entering the womb and undergoing a process of rebirth. Kudi is built in three concentric circles in the form of a maze. It has fine holes for the regulated supply of air and light. The hut wall is built by two layers filled in between with Navadhanya, ash of cow dung, Navaratna, which provides an insulation of temperature and noise. It is built based on Vastu Shastra and Ananda Kandha by Ravana. Person after undergoing cleansing therapy enters the Kudi in Shukla Paksha of Uttarayana. Every day, Parthiveshwara Puja is done by making Shivalanga of different shapes with clay. Chavana Prasha or any Rasayana according to the person is served in Panjaloha vessel by Vaidya. Amidst the small lamplight and hut, patient is advised to think about himself and to chant mantra. It's a time period for self-realization and for increasing the physical and mental vigor. Period of stay varies from 45 days to 9 months. The person on completion of stay undergoes abhyanga and gradually exposed to the outside world. Apart from physical and mental well-being, there is improvement of eyesight, visible reduction in wrinkles, enhancement of glow, blackening of hair and overall aura of the person is improved. It is a preventive, curative and rejuvenative therapy and the person becomes a calm soul in a rejuvenated, healthy body. Everybody is saying this is obsolete. But it is not like that, it is up to date. Nowadays, the replacement of the organ is going on. But the body replacement is uh, not possible now. But this is equal to a body re replacement without a donor. I'm feeling very strong. My mind is feeling very clear and my metabolism is feeling stronger. I'm 65 years old. So um, it's an advanced age for these things, I think. And I'm feeling very good. It's very good to see the sun. <laughs> I haven't seen the sun oh, yes, yes. for three months. <laughs> So, hello. <laughs> that was a very interesting three months for the body, for the mind, and for the spirit, but mostly the mind. For the fast-moving world, Ayurveda offers Vada Atabhiga Rasayana, which can be administered in day-to-day -day life. Apart from Rasayana formulations, single herbs like Yashti Madhu, Mandugaparani, Shankhapushpi, Guduji, Ashwagandha can also be used. Many of these herbs contain antioxidants and shows anxiolytic effect. 
Rasayana delays aging, increases strength, intellect and promotes longevity. While we may think of Pashu Ayurveda, Priksha Ayurveda, Kuti Pravishika Rasayana Chigilsa and other such modalities as the unexplored areas of Ayurveda, even the Daiva Vipashya Chigilsa and Sattva Vajya Chigilsa are largely unexplored in the practice of Ayurveda today. As a firm believer in the idea of authentic Ayurveda for universal well-being, it is extremely important that all the different modalities of Ayurveda be explored, be researched, be documented and then used for creating experts who can then take forward the study, research and practice of Ayurveda in the best way possible. There are isolated efforts in different parts of the country in many of these areas. But ideally the community needs to come together, needs to have a concerted team work in pursuit of bringing up some of these modalities because due to many years or many decades or many centuries of lack of use and practice some of these modalities are not fully understood today the texts are not fully available today even if the texts are available there are not enough experts to decode these texts so only a combined effort from the entire Ayurveda community supported by the Ministry of Ayush, Government of India who are doing such phenomenal work in promoting Ayurveda. Only when everybody comes together will Ayurveda truly become a knowledge system which addresses global health needs not just for human beings but also for plants and animals in a truly holistic evidence-based manner. Knowledge essential for healthy existence of all life forms remain dormant, untamed in these scriptures, which has to be sculpted according to our times. In our beautiful planet, one species is blessed with high intelligence. It comes with the responsibility to protect our earth with all its glory. Soil health degradation, zoonotic diseases like COVID-19, Nipah virus, Ebola virus, mental health issues, antimicrobial resistance. All these are soon gonna challenge our very own existence. It's the time to take action. These hidden treasures, the knowledge we cherished for this long time, must be put in use for the world's benefit. Rejuvenating Ayurveda helps in rebuilding the world. Let the glory from the past guide us to brighter horizons. Govane Tavadana Shatajana Rogavane Tavadana Shatajana Rogavane Tavadana Tanvandari Narayana Mama Shatajana Rogavane Tavadana Tanvandari Narayana Mamava Shritajana Rogavane
quebrada. Se liga na história de Kai, artista de rua, remunerado em capital simbólico, um valor inestimável para qualquer artista, o reconhecimento. Kai, que é o melhor pico, de maior destaque, onde todos possam ver onde ele conseguiu chegar com a sua arte e com a sua coragem. Corre, Dê! E de repente, pá, Caio acordou num paraíso. E ele tinha tudo, um pico perfeito, um muro novinho de testa que ninguém tinha chegado ainda. Ele tinha as letras na régua, ele só não tinha o principal, a porra de uma lata de spray. Fofura da minha vida. É o seguinte, meu amor. Você vai pegar esses 50 reais aqui, vai entregar uh -huh. pro AC. É tá. pra entregar porque ele tá esperando, tá, hein? Tá, pode deixar. Hoje. E pega esses 5 reais aqui, compra o um salgado pra uh -huh. você, amado. Uh -huh. hum, valeu, mãe. Meu amor, ó, hoje a mãe saindo daqui vai trabalhar na casa do seu Antônio. Beleza. E não esquece, vai com Deus. Um beijão, te amei. Eu também. Deixa eu entrar aí. Não, cara. Porra, já tá com a chave na mão. Deixa eu entrar aí. Não, cara. Eu fui lá conversar com a minha mãe. Me ouve, Caio. Hoje não. O pessoal da supervisão de ensino tá todo aqui. Eu não posso quebrar teu galho. Pô, Sinto muito. Você viu se o Sulemão veio? Você não, não veio? Você não viu, ele não veio. Ô, oh, Kai, espera pra segunda aula, por favor. Porra. Ô, Maria! Maria! Você viu se o Sulemão veio? E aí, Lemão? Tranquilo, meu mano? Ih, cara, é, irmão, tranquilo. De novo, né, velho? Ah, tio, você tá ligado como que é a Priscila, né? Tô ligado. Meu mano, fala pra você, eu tô precisando ah. daquela lata lá que eu te prestei naquela Ih, mão, mano. Ali, vou Botei ficar... o pico. Vou ficar te devendo, velho. Devendo, parça? Eu te prestei o bagulho faz mocota, caralho. Tá tô precisando, tio. Tá emocionado, velho. Tô tá emocionado. Tá Deixa de ser vacilão, caralho. Não me apavora, não, filho. Não vai adiantar, não. Faz o seguinte, vai lá na, vai lá na pista de skate que tá rolando uns mutirão de grafite. Às vezes sobra umas latas lá. Ah, e sobra umas latas. Eu tenho que ficar resolvendo o BOC, mano. Ô, parça. Leva a minha bolsa então, mano. Depois nós se tromba eu pego ela. Hum. Nossa, Lemão, valeu. Ganha, irmão, carrego um dia. Claro, meu mano, enquanto eu sou teu mano, eu tô só me criticando. Eu só era real, cuzão. Tava eu e você pichando uma parede antiga, tá ligado? Tinha um picho do pote. Mano, passei por cima assim, você falou que os bicos tava vindo, tá ligado? Sei que eu peguei assim, terminei o bagulho, olhei pra trás quem quer o bico. É. Logo o pote enfardadinho de cinza, tá ligado? Mano, era bota, cuzão. Caraca, oh, tá o Mate tá Marcha... do pote tá dizendo que ele é Steve lá. Ô, Barça, acho que eu tenho medo de pote, amigão. Não, não tem, não. Fala sério, amigão. Ô, oh, mas falar pra você, saca o pico que eu vi hoje, mano. Raço, né, quente? Pura, hein, Dê? Mano, você é louco. 
Só falta tinta, tá ligado? Você acha que não sobra do mutirão, não, mano? A gente pior que nem sobra dele. O que sobrar, eles vão levar pra usar depois, tá ligado? A tinta tá mó cara, velho. Mas o quê? Minha coroa, ela tá trampando no novo restaurante ali, uh -huh. elas pagam vintão pra quem ajudar a servir a mesa na hora do almoço, tá ligado? Uh -huh. Se for lá, lá eles colam um bico pra você. Caralho, pode crer. Lá vai ser o point, cuzão. É o estouro. Beleza? Como é que tá? Rapaz, e aí, e aí, Caio? Fica esperto, hein, mano. Que se o pote se encontrar aqui, ele vai te amassar. Ah, ó, mano, quem que é pote? Deixa o maluco vir, vai ficar pagando de mensagem dinheiro, cabeça. Tô te dando papo. Mano, dá cinco pontos do Matei que você já vai salvar o mundo. Com firmeza. Falou. E... Nossa. Olha isso, ele tá bravo, que eu acho. Tá bom, passa o pano aí. Cadê o Thiago? Vai casar com o chave, mano. Qual que será que é o canal do, do cabeça? Putz, e aí, mano? Verdade. Pode estar tá vindo ali, de... Vou sair desbaratinado pra evitar que eu sou suave, ideia, mano. O que, que ele vai fazer? Não, assim, verdade, uma mais aí, mano. Dobro do seu tamanho, cara. Ele é grande, mas é dois, fiote. Salve, mano, pode aí, Dede, sem maldade, de não. Vou te tomar mal entendido aí, Dede. Vou resolver o bagulho pro pai. Pode, qual que é a fita aí, amigo? Você chegou ontem, não, tá? Você não sei mesmo o que eu falei. Você não sei mesmo o que eu falei. O bagulho tava todo fudido lá, amigo. Vai tomar no seu cu, cara. Calma aí, quebrada, que eu vou passar a caminhada pra vocês. O Kai atropelou um trampo antigo do pote. E agora, o pote veio cobrar essa deselegância do menor. É, quebrada, a rua cobra e a conta sempre chega. Mano, tava passando aqui pra ver um trampo, tá ligado? Será que não é pra eu trocar umas ideias? Sobe aí, mano. Falar pra você, Tida. Pode apareceu lá ele mais três, mano, querendo causar alvoroço, tá ligado? Hum. Se o bichão tivesse sozinho, tinha amassado ele, mano. Olha aqui, se orienta aí, filho. Pode correr aí, tio. Vai moscando. E essa tela aqui, Dida? Tá virando artista agora, mano? Nós somos artistas. Mano, eu já te falei, o bagulho é ser anarquista. Meter só o ibope. Ah, filho. Então vai lá, então. Tenta a sorte aí. Como é? Tipo um preto fosco na parede de mármore. Aí, cara, você ouviu falar de Walter Benjamin? Não. O que, que é o maluco? Então, o Walter é o mano que falava desses mano que não cria nada, que só faz aquilo que o mercado compra. O Walter sempre falou que a arte foi controlada pelo mercado, pela igreja, entendeu? Tem esses mano aí que defende a aura da arte. A aura? É, mano, tipo uma espécie de arte pura. Realmente ligado com política, empresário grande. Esses, mano, eles querem determinar, eles querem falar o que é arte e o que não é. Só que o Walter já deu a letra. O que nós fazemos é arte, é arte popular. Tá na rua aí, ó, tá pra todo mundo ver, entendeu? Essa parte da cidade aí que eu odeio o bicho, na verdade odeia tudo que vem da gente. Odeia rap, grafite, funk, tudo, tudo, tudo. De vez em quando eles selecionam um ou dois pra passar na peneirinha deles. Gida, o almoço tá pronto, vamos comer? Vai, neguinho, bora lá, vamos lá, botão. Não, tá suave, Gida, tô com fome não, mano. Como tá com fome, mano? Você tá o dia inteiro na rua na hora da maconha, não tá com fome? Tá tirando? Ô, oh, vamos lá então, mano. Ai. Tem nem como negar. E aí, dona Cleide? Ô, Caio, 
Oi, tudo bem, meu filho? Tudo bem contigo? Tudo certo. Te falar, o Buba disse que vocês estão precisando de gente aqui pra servir no almoço? É, verdade. Todo dia estamos precisando de gente pra... E como funciona? Ah, é simples. Você chega aqui umas 10 e meia, 11 horas, uh -huh. ajuda a montar as mesas, servir o pessoal. Acabou o almoço, recebeu 20 contos. Fechou, molezinha. Você pode arrumar um avental desse pra mim? Vou começar agora. Ô, oh, oh, Caio, tá com a cabeça nas nuvens, moleque? O almoço de hoje já foi, agora é só amanhã. Não, fechou, dona Cleide. Eu volto aqui então amanhã. Valeu, hein? Valeu. Beijão. Beijo, te espero, hein? É, quebrada. Pode até ser clichê, mas é fato. A vida é feita de escolhas e cada um tem que aceitar as consequências que vierem, sejam elas boas ou ruins. E aí, o saco de vacilo? Tá andando aí meio bronzeado porque... Não começa não, hein? Já te falei que o platinado é só no final do Sim. ano que lança. Você tá mais louco que o Batman, você tá aí, relaxa, <risos> chará. Firmeza? Yeah. Pô, pode estar tá pegando a cerveja aqui, meu mano. Ficava antes, mano. E esse Sim. uniforme aí é de onde, Xará? Pô, não consegui entrar na escola. Ah, é? Boa. Ah, tô uma vergonha. A cerveja de alemão, o bagulho tá mal quente. Só pra que seria. Aí, ó. Eu me mandou te entregar. Opa, vai dar pra comprar um de cigarro, mano. Mas então, você tava arrumando, eu não sei não, mas eu tenho uma aí boa pra te contar, Xará. Ah. Eu tinha um rolê na, nas antigas aí, um rolinho atrás. Você tava numa praça pra tomar umas viritas, uma cerveja, aí pegava um violão. E do lado tinha um amigo meu, um artista plástico, o uhum. Paló. E ele era um cara assim renomado. De vez em quando a gente trocava uma ideia assim nessas vibes de arte, né? Que é uma coisa que não predomina muito, mas. Só assim, para de ficar assim. Ia lá, pronto, vai procurar marido na baixada. Pô, uh, tem até um copo te esperando o pai já. Opa. E aí, moleque, Não, foi bom? E aí, como é que foi o trampinho lá, cachorro? O Luca é na... Perdi a hora lá na casa do Dido, vai ficar pra outro dia, mano, rolê. Putz, mano. Pior que eu também fiquei lá até o final, mano. Sobrou uma lata, mano. Ah, então, é mano. Cheguei em São Paulo na caçamba de um caminhão. Lá sim é terra de oportunidade. Se você quer mostrar o seu trabalho e prosperar com a sua arte, Lá é o lugar, mano. Tem que meter o pé. E quando você chega em Ribeirão, você começa a perceber que é ilusório. É uma cidade com porteira oh, Vocês estão ouvindo essa música? Não vai te levar pra lá no meio, entendeu? Então, se você é esse, quer né? levar seu trabalho pra frente, mete o pé, vai pra samba. Esquece um pouco, aqui é residência.
ですよ。Levanta aí, vão ali, você também. Vai, mano. Aí, ó, chegou e jogou, tem. Vai, vai, vai, vai, vai. Entra, entra, vai, vai, vai, vai. Vai, mano, beleza. Ali o pivete, filho da puta, ó. Ali o pivete, desce daí, desgraça. Bora no chão, pega da puta, no chão, caralho. Desgraça. É, quebrada. Esse foi mais um dia na vida de Kai. Mas ele tá vivo. Tá salvo. Salvo pela arte que conseguiu fazer. Vocês estão ligados que o final dessa história poderia ter sido bem diferente. A rapaziada, a saideira. Serve o pai. Não, caralho, aí também não, né? Não é cerveja, oh. é detergente. A mesa tava Cê pedindo. Vai, é Edi. Você vai dar nada. Opa. <risos> <risos> <risos> <risos> <risos> <risos> <risos>
बेल अरे क्या जरूरत थी लाने की गुलाब जामुन मेरा कितना सुबह से मन कर रहा था खाने को तुम्हें कैसे पता ऐसे लो ना హలో మేడం నేను కిషోర్ ని మాట్లాడుతున్నాను హలో కిషోర్ గారు మీకే కాల్ చేద్దాం అనుకుంటున్నా ఈ లోపే మీరే కాల్ చేశారు ఓ అవునా మేడం మీకు నేను ఎందుకు కాల్ చేశానంటే అది డిజిటల్ టెక్నాలజీ వల్ల నాతో రెగ్యులర్ గా పబ్లిష్ చేయించుకునే వాళ్ళు కూడా స్లోగా ఈ బుక్స్ ఆడియో బుక్స్ కి షిఫ్ట్ అవుతున్నారు దీని వల్ల నా కంపెనీలో వర్క్ చేసే స్టాఫ్ కి పెద్దగా పని లేకుండా పోతుంది మీ నుండి కూడా ఇప్పటిదాకా కాల్ రాకపోయేసరికి మీరు కూడా బుక్స్ నుండి డిజిటల్ వైప్ కి షిఫ్ట్ అయ్యి ఉంటారని అనుకున్నాను అయ్యో లేదు నేను ఇంతకు ముందే చెప్పాననుకుంటా 
ఐఎమ్ అల్ అడైట్ పర్సన్ ఐ మీన్ ఈ డిజిటల్ టెక్నాలజీస్కి దూరంగానే ఉంటా మీకు చెప్పాలనుకుంటుంది ఏంటంటే నేను ఒక నోవెల్ రాద్దామని అనుకుంటున్నా మీరు అనుకున్నది రాసాక చెప్పండి మేడం మనం మళ్ళీ మాట్లాడదాం ఉంటాను మేడం హే సేత్ అక్కడ పాలు పెట్టిన అంతకున్నా ఏం చేస్తున్నావు ఏమైనానా వైర్ ఇస్ సో శాడ్ ఎవరైనా ఏమన్నా అన్నారా సేద్ వాట్ హ్యాపెండ్ నథింగ్ మామ్ కమ్ ఆన్ సేద్ నేను మామ్ మాత్రమే కాదు నీ ఫ్రెండ్ ని కూడా నువ్వు నన్ను ఫ్రెండ్ అనుకుంటే అని చెప్పాలి టెల్ మీ ఇట్స్ మై ఫోర్ We had a fight at school. Is Mike your best friend? Yes, but... See, Sid, let me tell you one thing. Sometimes these fights have a reason to be a fight. Sorry, Chippy. Close up with the reason. It's okay to say sorry for most wanted people in your life. But remember one thing. అది ఏ సిచ్యువేషన్ అన్నా కానీ నువ్వు మాత్రం సెపరేషన్ కోరుకోకు ఒరే నాన్న రాహుల్ మీ నాన్న ఇంటర్నెట్ లో అమ్మాయి ఫోటో పెట్టారట చూసావా మరి ఫోటోనా చూడలేదమ్మా ఈ సంబంధం కూడా గాలికి వదిలేస్తావా ఏంటి అది సరే గాని ఫోటో ఎందుకు చూడలేదురా కావాలనే చూడలేదు ఎందుకంటే ఇంతకు ముందు చూసిన అమ్మాయిలు ఫోటోలో ఒకలాగా బయట ఇంకోలాగా ఉంటున్నారు సో ఈసారి డైరెక్ట్ గా చూస్తా జాగ్రత్తగా వెళ్ళి ఆ అమ్మాయిని కలవరా రాహుల్ ఏంటి పేపర్స్ ఆల్గరిదం అసైన్మెంట్ సారీ ఆల్గరిదం అసైన్మెంట్ క్లే ఆండర్సన్ ఇస్ యువర్ ప్రొఫెసర్ రైట్ హౌ డూ యూ నో దాట్ నేను ఇదే యూనివర్సిటీలో చదివాను ఐ ఆమ్ యువర్ సీనియర్ హాయ్ ఐఎమ్ రా హాయ్ దిస్ ఇస్ మహా అది సరే మీరు ఇక్కడ ఏం చేస్తున్నారు సీనియర్ గారు వెళ్ళి చూపులండి ఇక్కడ వెళ్ళి చూపులా యా ఆ అమ్మాయి ఇక్కడికే రమ్మనింది మీకు క్రేజీ థింగ్ చెప్పనా ఆ అమ్మాయి ఫోటో కూడా చూడకుండా అని పెళ్లి చూపులకు వచ్చాను అసలు ఫోటో కూడా చూడకుండా తనని ఎలా కనిపెడదామని వచ్చారు తమరు కనిపెట్టొచ్చు వన్ మోర్ థింగ్ 
తను మీ క్లాస్మేట్ కూడా అయి ఉంటుంది మేబీ మీ ఇద్దరికి పరిచయం ఉండొచ్చు తన పేరు శ్రీ గజ్జల కనక మహాలక్ష్మీదేవి మీ పేరేమన్నారు సరే మరి నేను వెళ్ళాలి అండ్ మీ పెళ్లి చూపులకి ఆల్ ది బెస్ట్ ఇఫ్ షీ కమ్స్ థ్యాంక్ యూ హలో శ్రీ గజ్జల కనక మహాలక్ష్మీదేవి అలియాస్ మహా మన పెళ్లి చూపుల కార్యక్రమం మొదలెడదామా ఆల్రెడీ నా పెళ్లి చూపులు అయిపోయాయి అండ్ నువ్వు నాకు నచ్చో నా సైడ్ నుండి ఫిక్స్ మనం కలిసి జస్ట్ ఫ్యూ మినిట్స్ కూడా కావట్లేదు అంత త్వరగా టెన్షన్ అలా తీసుకుంటారు చెప్పాలంటే చూసినప్పుడే నచ్చో మాట్లాడుతుంటే ఇంకా బాగా నచ్చో ఇప్పటికే లేట్ చేశానేమో అనిపిస్తుంది అది మీకున్న క్లారిటీ నా క్లారిటీ విషయంలో కొంచెం కన్ఫ్యూషన్ ఉంది నాకు కొంచెం టైం కావాలి టెన్షన్ తీసుకోవడానికి కావాలంటే ఎంత టైం అయినా తీసుకోండి కానీ ఇంటికి వెళ్ళాక నా ఫోటోని మీ ఫ్రెండ్స్ కి చూపించి వాళ్ళ ఒపీనియన్స్ నీ డెసిషన్ గా మార్చుకోకండి నేను ఒక డెసిషన్ వచ్చేసాను నేరుగా నా ఫ్రెండ్స్ దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళి అబ్బాయిని కలిసాను ముందు ఏ ఒపీనియన్ లేదు మాట్లాడుతూ మాట్లాడుతూ తన మీద ఒక క్లారిటీ వచ్చిందని చెప్పేస్తాను మహా నీ క్లారిటీ సరే ఆ క్లారిటీ ఏంటో నా క్లారిటీ వచ్చేలా క్లారిటీ ఇవ్వు బైదివే లైఫ్ లాంగ్ నన్ను మహా అని పిలిస్తే చాలు అలా పిలిస్తే నాకు చాలా ఇష్టం చెప్పు నాకు స్టోరీ చెప్పువా మీ డాడీ బ్రెయిన్ లో స్టోరీస్ అయిపోయాయి బేబీ డాడీ నేను ఒక క్వశ్చన్ అడుగుతాను చెప్తావా క్వశ్చన్ సరే అడుగు చెప్తా నేను ఎలా పుట్టాను డాడీ మా దోర్లు వంచడం కాదు మీ ముద్దల కుదరక ఇప్పుడు ఆన్సర్ చెప్పండి ఓయ్ ఇటురా ఏంటో చెప్పు నా కిచెన్ లో పని ఉంది బాబు ఒకసారి ఇటురా కదా మై బేబీ ని హా నాలో లవ్ ఉంది మీ మమ్మీలో లవ్ ఉంది దట్ మ్యాజికల్ లవ్ మా ఇద్దరిని కలిపింది అండ్ దట్ మ్యాజికల్ లవ్ నేను పుట్టేలా చేసింది యదవ ప్రాజెక్ట్ టీం వర్క్ అంటారు కానీ మొత్తం వర్క్ నేనే చేసి సావాలి నాకు చాలా హెడ్ ఎక్ గా ఉంది రాహుల్ అవునా టాబ్లెట్ దానా వద్దు ఇల్లంతా చాలా చిందరమందరగా ఉంది నువ్వు కొంచెం దాంతో హోంవర్క్ అయినా చేయించు లేకపోతే కొంచెం డిషెస్ అయినా వాష్ చేయి రాహుల్ అలా ఖాళీగా కూర్చోపోతే నేను చెప్పింది ఏదో ఒకటి చేయొచ్చు కదా ఖాళీగా ఎవరు కూర్చున్నారే ఆఫీస్ లో ఫుల్ గా వర్క్ చేసి వచ్చి ఇప్పుడే రిలాక్స్ అవుతున్నా కొద్దిసేపు చేస్తాలే జాబ్ ను ఒక్కడు చేస్తున్నావా ఇంట్లో నేను కూడా చేస్తున్నాను కదా లైఫ్ కొంచెం బ్యాలెన్సింగ్ గా ఉండాలి రాహుల్ అవునా మరి నీకు బ్యాలెన్సింగ్ లైఫ్ ఉంది కదా నువ్వే చేయించు పాపతో హోంవర్క్ మరి వంట ఎవరు చేస్తున్నారు రోజు నువ్వు చేస్తున్నావా లేదు కదా అబ్బో నువ్వు చేసేది కూడా ఒక వంటేనా అంతగా నచ్చకపోతే నువ్వే వండుకోవచ్చు కదా అది చేత కాదు గాని మళ్ళీ మాటలు ఒకటి సరే ఫ్రాంక్ గా ఊడి మాట్లాడుకుందామా పెళ్లి ముందు మీ అమ్మ వంట చేసేది కదా అది అంతా నచ్చేది నీకు ఏయ్ మధ్యలో మా అమ్మ గురించి ఎందుకు అయినా వంటల గురించి మీరే మాట్లాడాలి మీ అమ్మ వంటలు ఉప్పు ఉంటే కారం ఉండదు కారం ఉంటే ఉప్పు ఉండదు రెండు ఉంటే రుచే ఉండదు 
ఎలా తింటున్నాడే మీ బాబు ఎన్ని సంవత్సరాలు అవునా అమ్మ వంట గురించి స్టార్ట్ చేసింది ఎవరు ఫస్ట్ రే అయినా ఇదంతా కాదు ఇప్పుడు ఏమంటావు లైఫ్ లో కొంచెం రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ షేర్ చేసుకోవాలంటాను సీరియస్లీ షేర్ చేయకుండానే ఇల్లు కొన్నానా చెప్పు అది సరే టూ వీక్స్ బ్యాక్ రవి అండ్ ప్రియాకి జెండర్ విల్ ప్లాన్ చేసింది మనమే కదా మరి లాస్ట్ వెళ్ళింది ఎవరు మనమే ఎందుకు నువ్వు ఆఫీస్ నుంచి లేట్ గా రావడం వల్ల ఆ రోజే చెప్పా కదా వర్క్ వల్ల లేట్ అయిందని మళ్ళీ ఇప్పుడు ఆ పురాణం ఎందుకు మొదలు పెడుతున్నావు వర్క్ అందరికీ ఉంటుంది రాహుల్ వర్క్ ఎక్కువ ఉంటే నెక్స్ట్ డే చేసుకోవచ్చు వర్క్ తో పాటు ఫ్యామిలీ రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీస్ కూడా ఇంపార్టెంటే కదా మాకు తెలియదు మరి అయినా నీ ఇలా టెస్టింగ్ జాబ్ అయితే నెక్స్ట్ డే చేయొచ్చు కానీ ప్రాజెక్ట్ మేనేజర్ అంటే పై అవ్వగానే బాయ్ బై చెప్పి వచ్చేస్తానంటే దొబ్బదు ఇప్పుడు నా జాబ్ గురించి ఎందుకు మాట్లాడుతున్నా ఎందుకంటే ఎక్కువ జీతంతో పాటు పని కూడా ఎక్కువ ఉంటుందని అయినా వర్క్ అండ్ శాలరీ గురించి మాట్లాడుతున్నావు చూడు దిస్ ఇస్ రియల్లీ సిక్ రాహుల్ దీని అమ్మ జీవితం డ్రామా షురు తల్లి మొదలు పెట్టకు ప్రతిసారి ఏదో ఒక డిస్కషన్ రావటం నువ్వు ఏడవటం అది చూడలేక నేను వచ్చి ఓదార్చటం ఇదే తంత అయింది నాకు స్మోకింగ్ అంటే చాలా చెడ్డ చిరాకు నీకు అంత చిరాకు తెప్పించే ఈ సిగరెట్ ఇంకెప్పుడు ముట్టుకోనే ప్రామిస్ గజ్జల కనక మహాలక్ష్మి దేవి ఏంటి బుజ్జి కన్నా అని పిలవాలా ఇంకొక క్షణం కూడా ముందు ఉండలేకపోతున్నా రాహుల్ ఐఎమ్ కంప్లీట్లీ ఫిడ్ అప్ విత్ యూ ఈవెన్ ఐ కాన్ సఫకేషన్ వస్తుంది చెప్పాలంటే ఇంకా చాలు ఈ గొడవ ఇక్కడ తాపేద్దాం నా ఖర్చు అప్పు కష్టం లేదు ఇంకా నాకు అంతకన్నా లేదు ఇది ఒక్క రోజు గడిస్తే చాలు ఇంకా రేపటి నుండి నువ్వెవరు నేనెవరు ఏంటి ఫ్రెండ్ డల్ గా కూర్చున్నావు చెప్తావా ఫ్రెండ్ మరి డివోర్స్ తీసుకోవడం అంటే ఏంటి డివోర్సా అది చాలా పెద్ద విషయం నువ్వు చిన్నపిల్లవి నీకు ఎలా అర్థమవుద్ది చెప్తే నువ్వు ముందు నాకు చెప్తావా లేదా సరే ఒకటి అడుగుతా చెప్పు నీ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఎవరైనా నీకు ఇష్టమైన టాయిన్ బ్రేక్ చేస్తే అప్పుడు నువ్వేం చేస్తావు అలాగే మీ మమ్మీ డాడీకి గొడవ అయితే అలాగే కటిఫ్ చెప్పుకుంటారు కదా దాన్నే డివోర్స్ అంటారు అలా కాదు నువ్వేమో నాకు స్టోరీస్ చెప్పట్లేదు మమ్మీ నువ్వేమో నాతో 
గేమ్స్ ఆడట్లేదు మీరేమైనా అలగితే అలగండి అలగిన వాళ్ళకి టాక్లు వస్తాయి పోండి అలిగితే అలగండి అలిగిన వాళ్ళకి తోకలు వచ్చేస్తాయి చెప్తున్నా ఒళ్ళు చూడేలా కాలిపోతుందో నువ్వు రెస్ట్ తీసుకో నేను స్కూల్కి వెళ్ళి పాపాన్ని తీసుకొస్తా చూడరా కొంచెం ఒక టూ మంత్స్ లో ఇచ్చేస్తాను వాళ్ళని వెళ్ళి మనీ అడగండి టూ మంత్స్ లో జాబ్ వచ్చేస్తుంది అన్ని సెట్ అయిపోతాయి ముఖ్యంగా ఒకటి నేను మళ్ళీ మళ్ళీ చెప్పలేను ఇంకెప్పుడు కూడా నేనున్న చోటుకి మాకు తెలియకుండా పాపను కలవడానికి ట్రై చేసినా కూడా నేను భరించలేను రాహుల్ అది చిన్న పిల్ల దాన్ని నేను చెప్పుకోగలను కాలం గడుస్తున్న కొద్ది తనే తన లైఫ్ లో పీస్ఫుల్ గా ఉంటుంది అక్కడ ఎవర్స్ పేపర్స్ ఉన్నాయి ఫ్యూ మినిట్స్ బ్యాక్ అయ్యి ఉంటే అలాగే చేసేవాడినేమో కానీ ఇప్పుడు పాపనే కాదు నిన్ను కూడా వదులుకోలేను చచ్చా ఒక్కసారి మన మెమరీస్ కళ్ళ ముందు కదులుతూ ఉంటే వాటిని నిజం చేస్తే బాగుండి అనిపించింది మెమరీస్ కూడా ఒక ఎక్స్పైర్ డేట్ ఉంటుంది రాహుల్ మోయి లేని జ్ఞాపకాలు మానలేని గాయాలతో లైఫ్ లాంగ్ ట్రావెల్ చేయలేము ఇదే నీ ఫైనల్ డెసిషన్ last thing i love you maha prem ante ento telusukune shanaaniki మనం ప్రేమించే మనిషి దూరం అవుతుంటే ప్రాణం పోతున్నట్టుంది వన్ లాస్ట్ థింగ్ ఐ లవ్ యూ మహా నేను ఆ విషయంలో ఈ డెసిషన్ తీసుకుంటున్నానా లేకుంటే బాగా ఆలోచించి మంచి డెసిషన్ తీసుకున్నానా నాలో జరిగే ఈ అంతర్యుద్ధం ఒక మంచికి ఆరంభమా లేక ఒక మంచి బంధానికి అంతమా అనేది ప్రశ్నగానే మిగిలిపోయింది మెమరీస్ కూడా ఎక్స్పైరీ డేట్ ఉంటుంది అనుకున్నా కానీ 
మెమరీస్ ని కూడా రీక్రియేట్ చేయొచ్చు అని హీరో చేసి తెలుసుకున్నా పట్టి బుర్ర పట్టి బుర్ర అసలు వాడిని ఎలా వదులుకోవాలనుకున్నావే ఇప్పటిదాకా జరిగింది చూసాక నాకు ఒకటి అర్థం అవుతుంది ప్రతి చిన్న విషయాన్ని ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్స్కి తీసుకెళ్తే చివరికి మనకంటూ ఎవరూ మిగలరని అంటే నువ్వు లవ్ యూ టూరా ఇప్పటి నుండి గొడవ పడిన ప్రతిసారి ముద్దుతో తిట్టుకున్న ప్రతిసారి హక్కుతో కలిసిపోదాం రా ఎలా సాగించాలో బయట సమాజం నేర్పిస్తుంది కానీ బంధాలకు బంధవ్యాలకు ఎలా వెలువివ్వాలో ఇంట్లో శబ్దం చేసే వస్తువుల నుండి నిశ్శబ్దం పాటించే మనుషుల వరకు ఒక్కొక్కటి ఒక్క అధ్యాయం జీవితానికి సరిపడ తాత్పర్యం Thank you. 
परेशान हुआ हाँ वही तू जानती है उसे स्वाति बता रही थी इसकी फटती है उससे स्वाति से भाई उसके सारी लड़कियों से फटती है अच्छा हाँ वो मेरे ही क्लास में है एक नंबर का चोमो है पता है एक बार क्या हुआ उसके बर्थडे पर मैंने उसको अपना हाथ दिया उसको बर्थडे विश करने के लिए और वो डर के मेरे पीछे ही भाग गया जैसे मैं तो मर ही जा रही थी उसका हाथ पकड़ने के लिए भाई रिया चक्रवर्ती की एक झलक देखने के लिए लड़के तरस ही जाते हैं है कि नहीं ऑब्वियसली स्वीटी अब आपके तो लड़के क्या हम लड़कियाँ भी दीवानी है अच्छा सुन सुन सुन मैंने इस चोमू के बारे में एक मजेदार बात बोलती हूँ ये चोमू जितना डरा हुआ लगता है ना उसकी मम्मी उतनी ही डरा हुई दिखती है एक बार मेरे घर के बगल वाले सुपरमार्केट में उसने दुकानदार से झगड़ लिया और पता है क्यों भाई वो दुकानदार वो दुकानदार ने मैडम को गलती से हाथ में टच कर दिया पैसे देते वक्त हाँ जो बवाल मचाई मैडम ने मैं तो दूर से ही भाग गई चल चल चल बस आ रही मुझे आपसे एक बात कहनी है शान प्रशावत कर प्रशावत 
समझी? तेरे बच्चों को पालो हाँ तेरे बच्चों को पालो सुन बहुत हो गया तेरा अब तेरे लिए इस घर में कोई जगह नहीं समझी सारी प्रॉब्लम ही सॉल्व हो जाती है। तुम्हें 
पता था ना कि मैं तुमसे प्यार करती हूँ और तुमने क्या किया याद है तुम्हें वो दिन याद है कुछ कहना चाहती थी मैं तुमसे मैं सोचती थी शायद किसी दिन तुम मुझे एक्सेप्ट कर लोगे शादी की थी हमने मैं प्यार करती थी तुमसे पर तुमने हाँ क्या किया तुमने बोलो ना बोलो ना तुम तो बोल ही नहीं सकते तुम्हें पता है ऐसा नहीं है कि तुम हारे जाने के बाद मतलब मैं पागल हो गई या कुछ कुछ हो गया पर पर मेरा ना मजाक से भरोसा उठ गया अब देख लो ना हमारे बेटे को ही ऐसा नहीं है कि मैं उसे नफरत करती हूँ पर मैं उससे प्यार भी नहीं करती क्यों तुम्हारे वजह से उसे जब भी देखती हूँ ना तुम्हारा चेहरा नजर आता है मुझे हाथ सुबह जब वो ब्रेड सेक रहा था उसने अपनी उंगलियां जल मुझे फर्क नहीं यू आर डेड Wow, actually that was something very dark. What I see right now. So, guys, I guess I am audible to you all. Am I? Please, uh, send the send yes in the chat box if I am audible to you. All right, great. So. Uh, in the next five minutes, we'll have our next speaker session. Her name is Farah Sobhi, so she'll be joining in just five minutes. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about the last film. It was very, it was kind of dark actually. So let, uh, so if uh, I have uh, posted the link in the chat box, if anyone of your friends or a filmmaker wanted to join this session, they can join. 
because this session is going to be very useful to the people who you know love films and want to join a film society club actually so it's a society club in malaysia it's which is actually online you know and on wednesdays they actually screen films so if you and your friends anyone who love films who is a cinephile so he if he or she wanted to join this session which is going to be very useful because uh, for us so we will be talking about if you have a small camera so we can make the film with that too so if anyone of your friend wanted to join this thing this session so they can surely join i have already sent uh, i have already pasted the link of the meeting in the chat box so please do share it in the next 4 or 3 minutes we will be joining with farah sofia so uh, before we join is uh, anyone wants to talk about any film that he has he or she has watched uh, in the, in this session like anyone wants to talk about it or if anyone wanted to you know ask any question to me or about the film festival so i can tell you about this anyone you can uh, you can turn on your video and you can ask also or you can uh, put your question in the chat box also i'll tell you about the film festival and all which film did you enjoy the most out of the ones from today so you know uh, i was watching all the films there was a film of one uh, one was from the transgender community okay that film was very good the acting was very good actually and uh, and this last film i watched it was it was kind of dark actually you know i i didn't know that what that uh, she was hitting is his son at last it was very good actually it was it kind of amazed me actually you know the, the the way they wrote the story it was very good independent filmmaking is going like huge you know all right so it's time i'm uh, please uh, let me invite farah sofia she is from malaysia uh, farah has uh, is your camera on now yeah she is here yeah, yeah. let me just introduce you to farah sofia uh, she's uh, she's the founder of the film club society as i was talk about she is a vibrant filmmaker uh, in the community club and uh, she studies in unikel her passion lies in inspiring others to start the creative journey with the resource at hand and she'll be talking about start start with what you have all right so uh, farah the stage is all yours and please do tell us about the Uh, the film club society we are very excited about it because a lot of people wanted to join this kind of uh, you know film clubs and they they they love the uh, the streaming thing as you can see there are people here who have been watching you know from morning so please show this video then we'll move over for the uh, to the presentation all right stage all is right. yours thank you rajat yeah can you see the screen is it good is the screen visible to all of you right 
All right. Yes, you can go on. All right. Every story starts with an idea. But it takes more than just a thought to bring it to life. It takes passion, determination, and a drive to create. Unleash your creativity with. Okay. Hello, Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Farah Sophia, and I'm the club president of the Film Society. I believe that film has the power to connect people from all around the world. And I believe that together as a community of film enthusiasts, we can create a space where we can share and grow, learn, grow and share our love in this art form, which is films. And that is one of our goals here at the Film, uh, the film Society. Uh, so the, the short video that you saw earlier was actually a club's introduction made to invite people from my campus to join the Film Society. And over time, we uh, gradually like, um, over time we had people, more than 100 people joining the club since the club establishment in March. And at the time, I had, I didn't expect that was going to happen. I had really, I had low uh, expectations of what the club was going to be and what's, what was going to happen. But um, I, I, didn't, I didn't remember that. I, I believe that every one of us have something something special to contribute to this community and that everyone has the potential to create something meaningful through films. And I'm glad that resonated with a lot of my club members here at the club. After making this club, a lot of people have asked me, do we need to be good at filmmaking to be a filmmaker? The quick answer is no. Anyone can become a filmmaker. Anyone can become a filmmaker as long as they have the passion, the dedication, and the drive to create. Um, so why? why? Why did I start a club? Why was this so important to me, right? The reason for uh, this is that um, I uh, there wasn't any there was there wasn't any filmmaking community here in Malaysia. It's quite rare to find this kind of club, and the um I didn't know anyone. I didn't have any. I didn't have any. I didn't have anyone to talk about my my interests. I I love films. I love video making. I didn't have any fancy equipments, but uh, I would, I would borrow my friend's, my friend's camera or sometimes my mom's smartphone just to create something because I love the creative, creative process of it. Because of these excuses and all, right? We we we always have excuses wh whether it's lack of equipment or we just we just don't have any time to do it. But I'm pretty sure there's. There's a lot of talented people here who are better at the crowd than I am, but doubt like that, doubt prevents us from reaching our fullest potential. Yeah, so why the Film Society? I want to provide a platform for aspiring filmmakers, for students like me, to enhance our skills in filmmaking and experiment and learn from each other and this is where, this is our safe space to learn more about ourselves. And a place where we all, we can all, we can all start with what we already have. This film festival is actually a really great, uh, a really great start for, for all of you to learn more about what you can accomplish. And we're all gathered here for a reason. Why? Why is it important for us to be in this kind of festival, right? Like, why? Why should we be in a community? In to, right? So, first of all, 
having a community with similar interests is extremely important because it helps us feel connected and grow as individuals and as a society. Our work, our films, they are meant to be shared. This is a safe space. Like I said, it's a safe space for all of us to learn more about the world different cultures. Since this, and this is an international film festival, we get to learn more about our friends, different cultures, stories, characters. And most importantly, we get to learn more about ourselves. And that is exactly why we're all here today. Um, I would like to, first of all, I would like to congratulate for those who, who took the initiative to join, to submit your films and giving you yourself a chance, your teams a chance to start with what you have. This mindset, this mindset of start with what you have is much more than a piece of advice. It's a philosophy that, that propelled many, many uh, people, many filmmakers to remarkable heights. It's about utilizing the two the resources that you already have. It's about embracing them. Whether you have a smartphone, you're just using your smartphone, or just a basic ca camera, or even just your imagination, right? You, you can still create something um, that defies cinematic wonders and def um, something you can do outside of your expectation, what, what's, whatever it is, you can re embrace the tools that you have. For example, think of cinematic legends such as Christopher Nolan, Quentin Tarantino. Both of these directors are just an examples of great directors today. Both of them um, started their journeys with um, crafting their early works with passion, ingenuity, and maybe a sprinkle of det determination. It was because of this mindset, right? The start with what you have. It developed them to, um, it helped them develop their unique voices and perspective to, to lay the foundation of their iconic careers as directors. Start with what you have challenges the notion that having an impressive camera is equal to good filmmaking. But actually, it defies the idea that an impressive camera is the sole gateway of, uh, um, of, of a great filmmaking. But instead, this mindset, it focuses on the resources that we have, your resourcefulness, your imagination, and your unique perspective. It's not about the camera. It's about telling a story. It's about channeling your inner artist and tapping your resourcefulness to create something remarkable with what you have. It's about telling your perspective, sharing ideas with your colleagues, your crew. And it's about learning and pushing boundaries with what you have. The world of filmmaking is brimming with stories of ingenious techniques. We can experiment with shots because of this, these are the obstacles, the challenges that we have, right? But with these ch challenges, we can come up with creative creative thinking and within with using with minimal resources so whether you're using your smartphone whatever your basic camera whatever you have your your the tools that you have your lay you can lay your hands on remember that start with what you have is is an invitation to embark on your cre creative journey start with what you have it let this phrase be a reminder that creativity knows no boundaries and that the heart of filmmaking beats within the stories that we tell and the connections that we forge not the equipment that we use let this be a reminder start with what you have that is all for me thank you Yeah, that was something because as an independent filmmakers, people, you know, wanted to know about this. This is the first question, actually. Start start what you have, you know. 
if you, mm-hmm. it's like i'm a, i'm a budding filmmaker and in the first uh, in like for the first time i've used a samsung s7 s1 or i guess in that that's a very small camera actually of mm-hmm. so i i i used to have that so it's it's like it's like if i also used my mom's samsung for yeah. shooting videos cooking videos whatever it is <laughs> we so all start good. somewhere yeah. right exactly so it's good if if you have a very small phone with a small camera it's on it you're just making content so exactly it, it doesn't matter if you have a dslr or a film camera you just have you just have to be your own creative way to find mm-hmm. it more, right that was a very very great and inspirational ppt what you have shown and please uh, uh, uh, tell all the participant and audience about this uh, the, the movie night yes all right about this yes so the film society we we organize movie nights on every wednesday at 9:30 pm which is malaysian time est uh you guys can scan the qr code and you will be uh you will be invited to our discord server where we we announce movie nights and screen them based on your suggestions and majority votes so you you guys can also follow our instagram there in our instagram here at the film society club yeah because i'm i personally I personally attend these uh, film screenings so mm. it's it, it's a very good uh, uh, streaming service where they, they have opened in the that discord channel because a lot of um, passionate filmmakers and a lot of people are there who goes to the chat section and we just chat about we the films discuss about the films right yeah yeah <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, so as uh, to the audience and the uh, participants who have uh, understood and inspired by this presentation so anyone has any questions regarding this also okay. we we also um host video challenges if you guys want to join you can check our instagram for more information yes video, I'll check. Yes. Uh, video of the month challenges yeah which can, is open uh, for all if you want to join yeah, yeah. i can uh, i'll surely paste, paste the link of this of your youtube channel and the discord server and you can also join the uh, channel by sc- uh, scanning this qr code so if anyone have any question please ask how do we join your movie notes a person movie has notes a- yeah movie notes movie nights nights oh movie nights oh, now he's correct okay uh there's a qr here we uh, it's lead to the discord server you have to sign up using uh, you have to sign up with your account and then that's it basically so uh you and then there's a channel the channel there yeah. yeah so you can just scan the qr code or you will be like go into that page anyone has any other questions because i'm getting a lot of questions from a school actually so i'm going to tell you that there are 300 students are watching you oh so, yeah from mumbai it's a school actually so they're watching you and they have a lot of questions so if anyone has any questions here so they can ask please then i'll go to the uh, school's question so does anyone have any questions i'll, I'll in- share the link later for the yeah, discord you, server you can uh, you can ask questions here but uh, let me ask from the students also so there's a student he wanted to ask that i always uh, i will always steal my mom's phone Whenever I uh, I have to make a video, so do I have to you know uh, buy a new phone for me, or do I just have to steal always? <laughs> uh, honesty is always the best way, right? <laughs> why Why would your mom prevent you from filming? It's a That's hobby. It's something fun. Yeah. Something creative. Why not just be honest? <laughs> so there's an, another question, and mm-hmm. she, uh, her name is. Her name is Chaya, and she's asking Chaya. that if uh, uh, if she wanted Chaya. to join your club, yeah. Hi, Chaya. She uh, for us saying so. She's saying that if she wanted to join the club online, so she can join. So this club is uh is under our uni, but I'm uh for like online sessions like movie nights there and club activities they're open to to everyone. So hmm. you you can join, yeah. 
Oh, that, that, that's a very good that, thing. That's the, the only way. You just follow our Instagram and be just um be, you can participate from there. Yeah, so it's, it's like if you if you have followed the Instagram page, so you you are uh, you are already a mem member of this group, right? So you are already the yeah. member. Of, you are You're part of the society. Yeah. The that's film society. <laughs> that's good. And then <laughs> another question is so, uh, as you have asked that, uh, as you have told. To us that start what you have mm -hmm. so i wanted to be a uh, i wanted to become a filmmaker and i yeah. don't know how to proceed first so how should i do it i don't know where i lie but i love to write you can start with what what you're good at which is writing writing a story you write down the ideas and then from there you can uh just um use your like since your strength is from writing right so start from an idea for a story and slowly build up from there yeah yeah so it's, it, it's a great thing because you know as a as a filmmakers and to the, all the filmmakers who are here it's like you know if you are a writer so it's good to make films the most about important that. thing about a film is the storytelling so it's good yeah. that you like writing. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's this, where you can start. Yeah, we can say that. And there's another question that um, do we, uh, uh, it's like, can we uh, tell uh, the, like, it's in Hindi, so let me just uh, rephrase it to you. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, he wanted to say that if he wanted to recommend a movie to your yeah. uh, screen, so he can do that? Yeah, you can. You can oh. recommend there, and then we we line up the queue queue up the films everyone suggests mm. from the committees, and then we make a vote All based right. on the list of films. And yeah. do you also like stream uh, apart from the Hollywood films? Like you can you also stream Bollywood? Yeah, we and... can. We, we stream all types of movies. All right. oh, that. That's and sometimes we do. Sometimes we do themes. Like last last time we. We do a general list of genre, and then they pick or they want to watch action, horror, or romance, right. or whatever, whatever genre, and then uh from there we we pick okay what's the best, like what's the major majority vote. Yeah. All right, uh, Rosa yeah. just uh, text uh texted on the chat box that congratulations for us, Sophia. Interesting and well explained. Thank you so much. <laughs> So there's another question. This will be a last question, but there are a lot of questions here actually. This will be the last question. So right. a, a student is asking that if he wanted to make a film, so and they want and he wanted to share a story to the film mm -hmm. club society, he just wanted some instructions regarding that. So do you have people there who can then like ins instruct to yes? There's we have a channel where we you can share okay you if you want you need help or feedback or advice filmmaking advice there's a channel for that all right uh, yeah for that discord all right so there are there are channels divided to the people who can join anything yeah. like there's, there's a streaming service also i guess there is a radio channel also i i, I saw that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's also and, voice chats there and or you also... can personally personally talk to any of the club members you can talk right, to that, me that's good because uh, there's also a channel called uh, self promotion. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah. yeah. Where yeah, I promote my film. You can promote your films to your work. Yes. Yeah. That's good. That's that's a very great thing. So anyone of in this Zoom meeting wanted to ask something, or for do we have time because there are a lot of questions loading. Oh okay okay I have time. Yeah. You have to all right. So there's another it's question. Like the example movie nights. So Oh, so this is the dashboard actually, right? Of the. Uh, this is just a screenshot from right. our, one of our movie nights. All right. So, uh, people, uh, parts so, in the uh, audience who are watching, this is actually the dashboard where uh, all the film, uh, all the people from the club members join in this uh session in the screening and they watch this mm -hmm. film. It's it's a very good thing. I've also on. Uh, I've already. I, I've also joined this session. It's it, it's it, it's very great and overwhelming, you know. And in, in the Indian time, it starts at seven p.m. IST. So to the Indian people who will who will be signing in, 
so you can join every wednesday at 7 pm ist so this okay so this is the last question i'll be not taking too much time because we have to you know screen the films also so this is the right. last question is that a girl uh, there is a girl actually uh, her name is uh, yeah her name yes her name is saloni and she wanted to ask that your presentation was very great i was really inspired uh, and uh, the way you and uh, the, the way you said is very good it was very good thank I you so wanted, much sir i just wanted to ask that what inspired you to open this club society what inspired me yeah um so what inspired me was okay the the story is actually long but yeah story short it was our final final year project a final final project for for this class where we have to present films so uh yeah that was our final final project and our final class for that year and the environment was very whole, wholesome because everyone was there to watch the film like we we were share screening our films you know it was in in class and we were sharing this the films on screen so i was like, oh, everyone is enjoying their their time there and laughing and i see that a lot of them have the potential to create really good films right so i was like okay this is a really good good target audience for me if i want to start now if i want to start a club and then i just started to pour on like okay what if what if we do every every night you know every friday night uh, any like every night we do mo- movie screenings and then we will watch our films share feedbacks what what we can do to improve our work right also i had this idea okay maybe we should do what if we do video of the month challenges all of this so all of these what if questions was like pouring in and slowly so yeah like, okay i cannot i have to write them down the ideas yeah so basically what inspired me is them my my classmates the unique l students yeah that's, that's really, why the really film cool. society was born that's how it is that's really <laughs> like you are doing a very inspirational thing actually see it's it's a very motivational thing to the people who wanted to you know join these clubs there are a lot it's of people mostly, it's mostly about um about them i want i want them to yeah. go like yeah it's mostly about them the the initiative is very good actually just that's what i wanted to say it's it's a very great thing so uh-huh. we have actually two questions from here so please i i, I really request you to please answer these two questions anything specific in this film uh, in this film society club for editors editors yeah video this, editors no uh, i'm uh, there's a question from justin and he is yeah. asking anything specific in the film society for editors for the film editors is there any specific in this film society specific, specific what do you mean like like uh, it's like you know uh, th- like you screen films right yeah for the cinephiles who loves to watch films so is there anything you do for the editing uh, to the editors oh okay so um since this club is still new we haven't done any events yet but uh we're thinking we're doing we're thinking of doing film festivals such as this seminars talks we can do workshops uh but it's still in the plans right and it's right for, for the video of the month challenges Hmm. Well, uh, it's it's really great for video editors because uh, if you join these challenges, we would do screening sessions of our films and showcase them, and then uh, give feedbacks, critics, or you can uh, we we yeah, basically we do feedback sessions, which is All very right. helpful. Yeah, that's good. So Justin, if it's like. Uh, there are monthly challenges in the film club society so right now there is really short short challenges easy challenges yeah like practicing color grading yeah um what else like okay that's what i can think of right now so there's a recently there's a video is currently 
which is currently going on actually can you tell us about that challenge like the uh, one scene and three yeah. moods right oh the recent one three yeah. moods one scene challenge three moods, one so scene. basically so, yeah. uh, members have to or okay members have to have to display three moods or three genres basically like happy or uh, sad angry okay three moods and then the scene has to be at the same location All right. same scene but just different moods and then from there you can let you can practice your color grading because we can see that there's different styles of it like you know you joker like an example, Joker film is much is so gloomy and dark green because it's port- portraying mental health, right? Yeah, something like that. The challenges are very great. I just want to say that. Yeah. And the last question is: What do you screen mostly? Any particular director or language or work when you're screening the Wednesday screening? So, uh, all of this what screening what the challenges or the movie nights the, the movie nights the movie nights uh, the movie nights um there's no specific um yeah there's no specific but it's based on what they list the the society the film society the club members right. yeah, yeah so yeah so the way has asked this question and justin has asked that editing wala question so mm. thank you. so i guess you have satisfied with the answer the way and justin you're satisfied with the answer so uh, thank you so much, Sophia, for this. Thank you uh, so much, Richard. Way you have answered the question. I guess all of the members have, all of the participants and the audience and the students have satisfied with the answers. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, yes, they were satisfied with the answers. He shared, yes, thanks. So thank you so much. And thank you so and, much. Uh, yeah, your presentation was very good. We were very inspired with that. And me too, I personally inspired by that presentation, like what you have, because we'll be uh, shooting the film in, in the next week, actually. So it is very inspiration for us. So All thank right. you so much for joining this session as a speaker. Thank you so and much, Razad, and the yeah. LLP Productions for, for hosting this film festival. It's really great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Bye-bye. Love from India. Hello. Namaste. <laughs>
Sunday. So like every other day I woke up at 5. Okay, not 5, but like 6 or 7. Okay, not even 7, but like max to max 8. I entered the kitchen. Every Sunday I try to book Maggie in record time. That is 2 minutes, as the packaging says. It's kind of my Sunday tradition, so I prepared the dish, kept it on the table, and I was just about to eat it. But then... For those two minutes, Maggie was alone. And when I returned, I was shocked to see... It was... it was just... gone. At the time of the crime, four family members were present at the site. One of them is a lazy animal. And the other one is the dog. Rod's father claims that he was fast asleep at the time. And also, um, he didn't bother to show up. Rod's mother says that she was busy watching her favorite TV. The first evidence is a piece of noodle found on the bed sheet. Second one suggests some tampering with the recipe. And the third being the fingerprints at the crime site. Unfortunately, these evidences were not enough. But a new revelation shows that the fingerprints were a fraud. Of course, because I was not making the dish. Why would I do that? Uh, maybe for the insurance money? Wait a minute, you didn't even collect my thumbprints. How did you know the fingerprints were mine? The secret as it unravels startled us to the core. Turns out the Maggie was poisoned. It was a plant-based drug. I can't believe it. Get, can you show me the weed? It's, it's, it's coriander. The sheer lack of physical evidence has led to this case being one of the most peculiar unsolved cases. Water is wild and we want to keep it that way. We don't want to control it. We want to be able to be in right relationship. <laughs> drop matters. Hi, my name's Debbie. I'm from Santa Fe, and I'm here to teach you about the environment and how to protect it.
My name is Jeremy Moss. I'm the park archaeologist. What's archaeology? Um, the study of historical rocks. Very close. Dry land farming was the most common type of agriculture, and that just relies on rainfall. So if you've lived in this area long enough, you know it can rain over here and not over there. Another thing that's really important for Pueblo people related to both water and agriculture is, you know, we really have to realize that a lot of the spirituality was all very connected to bringing rain. And the water from springs is considered especially powerful. Spring water collected directly from source. Notice the clarity and formation of star hexagons, as I like to call them. They indicate structural integrity. Here we see the crystallography of municipal tap water. I'd like you to notice how disordered the ice looks. It's interesting to see a visual representation of the kind of water many people are drinking. Seeing these photos of spring water and tap water is like looking at order versus chaos. Here we see the crystallography of water that has had little to no human intervention. As we progress on, let's look at what a microwave does to water. How is water medicine? I wish more adults would ask me that question. <laughs> if we didn't have water, obviously we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be alive. So we've forgotten that water is a medicine. And the water can be a medicine in a number of ways. For example, we don't realize that we make our own medicine with our body because our body is so much water. The science is still completely out as to where water actually came from. Beneath the thin atmosphere of Mars lies an enigma, a desert landscape shaped by flowing water. In the distant past, Mars must have had a warmer, wetter climate. We have some indications of water was flowing on the surface but how much water was there? We're talking about oceans, are we talking about small rivers, little rain? So these definitions of how much water was on the planet was very undefined. The findings indicate that only 13% of an ancient ocean remains on the planet today, now stored in the polar ice caps. 87% of this ocean has been lost to space. This means that early Mars would have looked much different than it does today, with a significant portion of its surface covered by water. This ocean had a maximum depth of around 5,000 feet or around one mile deep. It's deep, not as deep as the deepest points of our oceans, but comparable to the average depth of the Mediterranean Sea. By combining Martian topography with the new estimate for water loss, the researchers were able to simulate Mars's ancient ocean and its escape to space. As Mars lost its atmosphere over billions of years, it lost the pressure and heat needed to keep water liquid, causing the ocean to shrink and recede northward. The remaining water eventually condensed and froze over the North and South Poles. And ultimately we can conclude this idea of an ocean covering 20% of the planet, which opens the idea of habitability and the evolution of life on the planet. Some people believe that it came from asteroids. So when asteroids traveled through space, what they do is they, che they check for a certain type of water that's found in this, the kind of crystals in the asteroids, making it an alien substance. Inside the Earth's mantle is something called primary water. So there's more water that's drinkable inside the Earth's mantle than there is all the surface of the entire planet. By molecular count, we're actually 99% water. And our eye lens is 99% water as well. And that means that we see the entire world through the lens, literally, uh, of water. My dad is, is native New Zealand Maori. And we have this <laughs> saying in New Zealand and in our culture that I am the river and the river is me. And if the water starts drying up or behaving in a, a way it shouldn't, to give it back what we call um, its mori, which is its life force energy. And intention is even greater than thought. And this is being seen even in quantum physics realm. And when we're in our mother's stomach, the amniotic fluid that we are surrounded by in that sac is literally almost identical to an ocean. So these are examples of my work. Um, and I'm just going to kind of flick through these because, but 
there's a lot <laughs> and a lot by children my son sat with me uh, he sat on the couch watching batman with a petri dish of water and then froze it and saw, and saw batman here in new mexico our number one water source is the rio grande river which has started drying up 20 years ago after flowing for 400,000 years but at the same time it's part of we're also fascinated by it Mom and I come walking a lot out here, and uh, we've seen ducks, cranes, cranes. Uh, um, the elk. Oh, there's a herd of elks. Elk the places they don't have enough water, and we've always been blessed with water. We we we we can water, irrigate whenever we want to. Gosh, the day the Rio Grande uh, runs dry is going to be a very sad day for New Mexico, uh, and I hope none of us ever have to see that happen. The river is a watershed uh, for for many of our areas through New Mexico. But the other aspect of that is the biodiversity that lives alongside the river and within the river. Uh, we would lose our animals, just like uh, the first people who came through New Mexico. The first things that we're looking for were food and water sustainability. Um, we have to do a better job of taking care of of our water sources here like the Rio Grande River. To lose the river is to lose a lot of our agriculture, our farming and our ranching. Uh, so as a rancher, it's really important for us to be cognizant of our environment. Water is really crucial for us to grow the food that's important to have our livestock. a lot of water to create one hamburger and uh, we have to make sure that that water is there for years and years and years uh, it's all about sustainability our native lands are going to be heavily hit with this too so we have to do a better job of preserving what we have right now we could stay forever and there's not a cloud inside water <laughs> What is this? It's it's cards. Uh uh, do not touch your that. hair. Shows. <laughs> hold it from the bottom. Hold it from the bottom. Hold it. Get it. Three. Ah! Show me the water, people. Ella, Adamari. Yeah, we need you. Awesome. Hey, April, get over here. Come on, come on. Right. Start over, please. you are also very integral into your own health. So uh, when you're drinking water, just even thinking about what the last word you spoke was, the water that touches is touching your saliva and your saliva holds the last word you spoke in your mouth as a vibration. That then allows your body to um, assimilate your gratitude not only as water and medicine but you're the person who makes the medicine honestly I think that if we want to understand what it is to be human or alive or a living being and part of this nature world we're so much water the water within you is working for you but your thoughts your intention can make that the most powerful thing you can even imagine
What? Yeah, me too. Ah. I don't believe you. I know there's something that you know how to do. Is there something you know how to do? No, I don't know how to do anything. Say it in Georgian. I will try. Let's watch the little girl walk and talk. I can sing in Georgian. I can dance. I can even make my own book. I am smart. I speak English. I even know how to cook. Let's sing it and let's let them dance. Ori, Sami. I can sing. I can dance. I can even make my own book. I am smart. Speak English. I even know how to cook. Who are you? Eleni. Eleni. Let's talk to our friends. What do you know how to do? How do you say that in Georgian? What can you do? Say it again. Huh? Ra. Ra Gumgato? rom kageto. Gomgato? Kageto. Kageto. Yep. Should I try one more time? Got it. Stop. Don't uh, like um, he was by himself and he like uh, uh, mess up and he will come. Thank you. And Jenny, uh, Mago body together, together we can do sing it. together. Yes, thank you. Eddie, Ori, Sammy. I can sing. I can dance. I can even make my own book. I am smart, speak English. I even know how to cook. I know how to cook, and we're gonna show you how to cook too. Yay! That's a teaspoon. Tablespoon? Oh, okay, a big one, okay. One teaspoon of Food soda inside this matcha cup, and then you need to stir it until it gets bubbly. It's a chai scotty mari. Then it tastes scotty. It tastes scotty. Shut. Try not to get it. Sunny, sunny chicka. Quickly, we need to crack one egg in the bowl. And mix it. It's <laughs> Hello. Look, I'm going to use this tongue. Billy tongue. She's the king of the chat machine. Glad to see you. Where'd she go? I this land is your land. This land is my land. From California to New York Island.
taking the lavenders off and putting in the scrub. This is my lavender. So gently. Just take your time. This is what always Lisa says to me. Just take your time. Actually my dad's at America. I really, really miss him. I always give him a kiss on the camera when we call him in a big hug. I don't know how I give him a hug. Okay, my hands are all sugary. That means I'm that means I'm done. That's the stuff. Actually, this can't, you could eat this. You don't want to eat it, but I mean, it's not bad for you. You can't get hurt. It's just sugar, <laughs> coconut oil, and some plants. The essential oils aren't good to eat. I'm not going to eat this. Cold. Yeah, we're just pretending, right? Today, I'm doing everything backwards. I almost did this start upside down. I'm a very good cooker. You're an amazing cooker. I'm cooking the worst. I can't do anything. A lady thinks she's not doing a very good job, but she's actually doing a really good job, and she's going to make a lot of people very happy. I'm not a good cooker. I do everything backwards and upside down. I'm never crying though. I'm not crying. I'm just frustrated. I'm just gonna not give up. Even though I spilled some sugar. I'm still I gonna am finish giving the up. project. That's it. I'm giving up. No, I'm not giving up. Okay, so that's cool. doll version of me. I will decide what I want to do. I don't look anything like you. We're just friends. You don't have purple eyes. Yes, I don't. Hmm. This is not me. You can take it back. Okay. I just want to watch. How? This is a really big jar. How much more is going to fit in there? We did something wrong. Sticks are a part of life, and they're so awesome. We did something wrong. I mean, I did something. And that's awesome. There's no problem. Ada problema. Ada problema. We're Stop. almost Here. done. Then I mean, Elena is going to bring the sugar scrub to her family. To Let's sh post that too. Coming up. Next time, we'll make something else really cool to show you. Actually, I'm just going to tell you one little secret. Tell us. First, I'll tell you. Tell me first. Huh? What? Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I'm making for my mom one <gasps> times a chocolate flower. <gasps> what is that 
great idea. That's going to be really awesome. And I think High five. I think we should show the children how to make that. Okay. High five. High five. I'm a doll. <laughs> You're not a doll. You're my best friend. <gasps> I mean, you're my twin. I want to be in the video, but I don't have anything to say. You're Lisa. You're a fox in Russian. That's right. You can talk next time, okay? That's right. When Lisa wow, makes some stuff. That's perfect. It fit all in there. It's like absolutely the right amount. How did you do that? That's so cool. Well. It's like exactly right. Smell. I don't mm. know. Kai, smell. Smell it, Lainey. <sighs> I like lavender because it's purple like my eyes. Look how pretty that looks. This is my friend. Camera woman. No. This is actually close to my family person. I need to show the kids how... How do I give this to my family? You already have seen the fresh lemon. This is the freshest lemon. I like lemon juice. I need to tell you one thing. When my grandma told to us, take, I, I need some lemon, take off to the tree. We actually did go in tangerine tree and brought grandma some tangerines. Okay, now let's go and see my dog. Hurry, hurry. This is my dog named Toby. Oh, this is my home. This is my brother. Hello. What is your name? <laughs> Un cortometraje de 10 minutos. Un cortometraje 
que recreaba un pueblo y gente de mi país. Y siendo una historia venezolana, lo lógico es que tuviese música venezolana. Entonces llegó la pandemia y con ella el encierro. Pero en ese tiempo de reflexión surgió la magia de la música y todo cambió. El cortometraje se transformó en una película de 90 minutos contada sobre la historia de las canciones y todo gracias a la música. El álbum es la consecuencia. No me sentía a gusto con la música. Yo quería que el cortometraje tuviese sabor a Venezuela. Entonces trabajé una letra que de inmediato se convirtió en una canción. Y esa canción inspiró otra y otra y otra. Así nacieron los siete temas de la película. La inspiración surgió de los personajes y de las escenas. Pero eran tantas las cosas que quería decir que resultó muy difícil encajar esas ideas en los diálogos. Así que se me ocurrió hacer las canciones y a través de ellas decir lo que no podían decir los actores. El concepto musical lo tenía claro. Arpa, cuatro y maracas. Solo faltaba agregar la melodía. Pasé muchas horas tarareando hasta encontrar algo que sonase distinto. Y de la nada llegó el encuentro mágico. Las melodías no dejaron de sonar, solo tuve que ajustar las letras y así de fácil se hizo todo. La primera canción que escribí es El Galán del Mirador y estaba dedicada al antagonista. Ahí viene Don Marcos, el galán del mirador, el amo del pueblo, de la vida y del amor. Ahí viene Don Marcos, el galán del mirador, el amo del pueblo, de la vida y del amor. Para él no hay imposibles, no hay imposibles cuando quiere alguna flor. Para él no hay imposibles, no hay imposibles cuando se trata de amor. Y es que Marcos se la ingenia para hacer su voluntad. Tiene plata en el bolsillo y amigo en la autoridad. Es el dueño de destino, si un mariano de verdad. Es compadre del milito y regenta vecina. No hay poder en el camino que le rete potesta. Él no cree en el destino, ni en Dios ni en la oscuridad. Pero que cortó el camino, se enfrentó con Satanás. Lo que no sabe el ladino es que muy pronto se va. Este tema fue el más importante porque mientras lo hacía, se me ocurrió contar la historia a través de la música. Y una vez más lo digo, gracias a la música, todo cambió. Porque a través de la música, pude expresar mis sentimientos. Lo cierto es que con cada canción que escribía, modificaba el guión de la película. Entonces comprendí que no se trataba de las canciones para una película, sino que se convirtió en una película para las canciones. La música se convirtió en el centro de la historia, cambió la imagen del protagonista y lo transformó en el salvador del pueblo. Tremenda canción, le diste en la madre al corrupto ese. La película no tenía presupuesto, se hizo sin un centavo, mucho menos para la música. Pero la idea de tener música venezolana ya estaba alojada en el corazón. Yo escribí las canciones pensando que alguno de mis ídolos musicales podría interesarse y quizá grabarlos. En mi inocencia les escribí, pero nadie contestó. Busqué ayuda en muchas partes, pero nadie me tomó en serio. Cuando supe cuánto costaba una producción musical, pensé en abandonar el proyecto. Músicos, cantantes, horas de grabación, alquiler de estudio, ingeniero de sonido y los extras que aparecen después. Por esos días, renuncié. Sin embargo, poco tiempo después, conocí al maestro César León y le hablé del proyecto. Él se entusiasmó y me ayudó con los arreglos de las melodías. Él tocó todos los instrumentos y grabó las pistas por un precio simbólico. Fue un paso más pero todavía no tenía cantante ni plata para el estudio. Pero entonces pasó lo impensable. Como aún no había grabado ni una sola escena del protagonista, ni tenía siquiera el actor, 
me atreví a dar el paso y asumí el reto de actuar e interpretar las canciones. Yo improvisé un espacio de la casa y grabé las canciones, mezclé voz cruda sobre una pista plana y aquí está el resultado. ¿Qué cuánto gasté en producir el álbum? Muy poco, realmente, nada. No hubiese podido hacerlo de otra manera. Y para los que empiezan, les puedo decir que sí se puede, aunque solo tengan años, sueños y talento. Si no lo logran la primera vez, sigan intentando. Si tampoco lo hacen en la segunda o en la novena, no importa, no se rindan. Seguramente en el próximo intento lo harán. El álbum contiene siete canciones, cinco piezas de música criolla y dos baladas. El Galán del Mirador, la primera de las canciones, es la radiografía del malvado. Vamos a cobrarle a cada uno de ellos, a uno por uno. El castigo tiene que ser ejemplar. La leyenda del Tres Dedos es la pieza que explica el trasfondo de la película. del tres dedos, el espanto del mirador, la botija del dinero y cien años de dolor, él se apiada de tu penas y te infunde su valor, te hace fuerte en la condena, te convierte en El viento se devolvió, te amarra de por vida con lazos de devoción y te cambia frujería por familia y tradición. Y él te espera y en la loma donde el viento se devolvió, te amarra de por vida con lazos de devoción y te cambia frujería por familia y tradición. Le sigue emoción un visitante de Europa que se encuentra con gente cálida y alegre que le brinda fraternal ayuda. Esta canción es un mensaje de amistad y del enorme corazón de los venezolanos. Por la calle del museo, por la calle del museo, viene de historia perdido. No sabe nada de aquí, a todo dice que sí, asustado y sonreído. Ay museo, en mi tierra socorremos al hermano. Al que pide le tendemos una mano, somos grandes, así somos los venezolanos. La tetoya, la tetoya. Este tema habla de la nobleza del venezolano y la siguiente pieza tiene ese nombre, el venezolano. ¿Cómo es el venezolano, señor? Un museo me ha preguntado. ¿Qué cómo es el venezolano, señor? Un museo me ha preguntado. Yo le dije que en mi tierra todos somos como hermanos, bochicheros, sanerosos y también enamorados. Aquí lo sabemos todo y si no se lo inventamos. De lo malo no le cuento nuestra risa al firmamento, eso es secreto sagrado. Nuestro gentilicio, gente que se sobrepone a la adversidad y sonríe gracias a esa sobredosis de optimismo y alegría que nos corre por las venas. Somos hijos de Bolívar, orgulloso de mi patria, yo sí soy venezolano. Somos hijos de Bolívar, orgulloso de mi patria, yo sí soy venezolano. Te lo confieso, que es literalmente un poema de amor. Yo soy todo de ti, no respiro sin tus besos. Si no estás junto a mí, soy un barco. Sin un puerto eres tú mi canción, mis delirios. 
Y mis sueños todo tiene tu olor Sin tu amor soy un poseso ¿Qué me has hecho? Has tomado por asalto Mi razón solo quiero Que me quieras y me des todo tu amor, yo prometo darte el cielo y de besos embriagarte el corazón. Yo soñaba escucharla en la voz del maestro y la enchestra, Ricardo Montaner o Guillermito Dávila. También la pude ver y oír en voz de Luis Fonsi. Pablo Morán, David Bisbal y hasta del maestro Molde Guerra, por no decir el gran Rafael. Soñar no cuesta nada, dice el refrán popular. Las terminé grabando yo. Después escribí, adiós amigo, una sentida despedida a todos los que se fueron durante esta ingrata pandemia. La escribí pensando en una voz fuerte y profunda, pero cálida y sensible, como la del maestro Pesay Pérez, un canario a quien admiro mucho y a quien algún día le pediré que la cante. Siento en mi pecho dolor, la vida perdido color, me asalta la pena, es triste tu ausencia. Se mudó a mi corazón Compadre amigo Ahora sí creo que estoy muerto Los fracasos de la vida No perdonan Y me han llevado Hasta la tumba los tormentos La tristeza Se mudó a mi corazón Compadre amigo Ahora sí creo que estoy muerto Los fracasos De la vida no perdonan y me han llevado hasta la tumba los tormentos Y es que no salgo del dolor y el sufrimiento Por decisiones locas del momento Al Padre Eterno ruego su perdón Y en otra vida me vaya mucho mejor Y en otra vida me vaya mucho mejor las escribí en ese orden y con ellas escribí el guión. Sin importar la edad, los invito a creer y a atreverse. Solo hacen falta las ganas de hacerlo, porque créanme, sí se puede.
Bienvenidos a un viaje que mezcla historias y mitos. Para algunos, realidad mágica. Para otros, solo un mito. ¿Verdad o blasfemia? Será lo que usted cree. Porque la verdad es solo eso, la versión más repetida y no necesariamente la cierta. Esta es la historia de Lilith, la reina de los últimos, la primera mujer que habitó la tierra. Al inicio de los tiempos, todo era oscuridad. La luz encontró un plano apartado, libre de mácula. El infinito era el lienzo perfecto para pintar planetas, para colgar más estrellas y para sembrar vida. El rayo de luz fue enviado para iluminar el camino del arquitecto. El sendero parecía libre de vida. Nada existía a los pies de la luz. Nada había en la oscuridad perpetua. Pero no era así.
وسط یکی از روزای چهل سالگی در بین گیر و دار ملال آور زندگی لابلای آلبوم اکسات یه عکسی رو پیدا میکنی که اکسا مرگ کشنده لحظه ها هستن با هر بار دیدن یک عکس به اندازه یک عمر در لحظه زندگی میکنی دیدن اکسا عمر آدم ها رو طولانی میکنه
güçlendirebilmek için ikisini de kullanmayı öğrenmiştim. Tamam da ilk hangisini kullandın hayatında? İlk okulda hangisini kullandık? Sağ. Tamam. Bugün iyi günümde olduğum için ilk soldan başlarız. Oradan hepsi bitene kadar devam ederiz. Olur. Patron yalnız o son işte biraz kirlenmişti diye temizlemeye verdim onu. Nasıl bir kirlenme? Kan tipi. Tamam. Kime verdin? Bu son elemandan memnun kalmadık diye başkasını buldum. Kaç para vermiş? 10. 10 ne? 10 TL. Aptal herif. 10 liraya temizletilir mi? Aynen. Onu al. Sen nereden biliyorsun lan bu piyasayı? Bir dönem içinde bulunmuştum. Niye ayrıldın? Çok mesai yapıyordum, parasını da vermiyordu. Var öldüler evet. Tamam ara ne durumdaymış ara? Arayamam. Niye? Şarjım bitti. Sizden arasak? Bilmiyor musun ben çalışırken yanımda telefon taşımıyorum. Neden? Profesyonel bulmuyorum da ondan. Senden arayalım Hasan. Ne olur ama bence tanımadığın numarayı açmaz. Niye? Ben açmıyorum tanımadığın numarayı. Niye açmıyorsun? Prensip meselesi. Ben de açmam. Tamam siz açmıyorsunuz da. Belki onun farklı bir yaklaşım vardır sizde. Orada olduğunu nereden bildin? Cebimde olacaktır. Başka nerede olacak? Benim hep cebimdedir. Benim de hep cebimdedir de sağ cebimde olduğunu nereden anladın? Benim hep sağ cebimdedir. Benim de hep sağ cebimdedir de senle ben bir miyiz yani? Benim senden bağımsız tercihlerim olamaz mı? Bunu mu demeye çalışıyorsun? Abi yanlış anladın. Yok. Yanlış anlamadım. Senin kendi ifade etme biçimin yanlış. Bu böyle olmaz da hiç profesyonel bir... Yeter! Ara hadi sen de. Numarayı unuttum ya. Aptal herif. Şarj yapak o zaman değil. Şarj alınma değil işte patron. Benimkini al. Nerede? Sol cebimde. Benim de hep sol cebimde. Değil mi ya? Benim de hep sol cebimde. Ne Cidim. konuşuyorsunuz lan siz? Tamam sinirlenme ya. Efendi gibi işkencemizi yapıp evimize gidelim. Type-C bu. <gülüyor> iPhone mu kullanıyorsun? Evet. Abi cidden iPhone mu kullanıyorsun? Evet abi ne var bunda? Herkesin kendi tercihi yani. Herkesin kendi tercihi de bak ne oldu mal gibi kaldın öyle. Ne olacak şimdi? Gitsin komşudan falan istesin ya. Doğru git sor bakayım komşuya. Bunda yoktur ya. Nereden biliyorsun? Ya hiç öyle bir tip yok onun. Oğlum tipinden nasıl anlıyorsun? Ya insanların dış görünüşüne göre niye yer biliyorsun sen? Bence de çok yanlış. Aynen öyle. Ey Hasan, anlat bakalım nasıl geldin böyle? Geçen konuştuğumuz, bahsettiğim mesele var ya sana. Ben değilsin de senin yanında biri daha lazım ya. Şu herif gelsin de bir anlaşalım. Bizim kurumsal bir yapıya bürünmemiz lazım artık. Geçmiş olsun Hasan'cım ya. Sağ ol abi. Bak işte nereden nereye. Umarım buradan sağ çıkarsın da sen de gönlüne göre bir iş bulursun. Biz de iş görüşmesi yapacaktık sen çıktın karşımıza. O herif de gelemedi bir türlü hala. Evet abi de senin ekibi cidden büyütmen lazım. Hocam hala hayat yokmuş. Boş ver şimdi valla. Hasan da iş görüşmesi yapmaya gelmiş. Ne hale düşüyor? Geçmiş olsun kardeşim. Sağ ol. Ama yanlış anlama yani. Şirket politikası. Sana özel değil yani. Sorun yok. Ben olsam ben de öyle yapardım. Güvenlik önemli. Aynen öyle. Güvenlik şart. Tamam abi de sizin bu kapı niye açık? O konuda teknik bir aksaklık olmuş. Senin teknik aksaklık dediğin şey kapıyı açık unutmak mı? Evet ne var lan biz de hata yapamaz mıyız? Hemen savunmaya geçtiğine göre bence sen de suçlu olduğunun farkındasın. Bir de insanlık hali falan diyerek vicdanları atlatmaya çalışıyorsun. Neyse sen git kesici delici bir şeyler bul. Yeterince vakit kaybettik zaten.
Bu ne lan? Meyve bıçağı abi. Oğlum geçen sefer de bunu getirdi. İki saatten önce kestik adamın parmağını. Hayır, prestijdeki adam gibi yapsak? Yok. O bunun olmaz. Maalesef Hasan, seni konuşturamıyoruz malum sebeplerden dolayı. Saat de geç oldu. Salamayız seni artık güvenlikten dolayı. Doğru. Biz en iyisi kurtulalım senden. Sağlık olsun abi. Allah kusura bakma senin de şansına böyle denk geldim. Komşudan beklediğimden erken de mi? Patron ben... Sanırım bunun için gitmiştim. Bundan daha zeki olmanı beklerdim Hasan. Seni bıçaklayıp öldürseydim bu zayıf bir son olurdu. Ama şu an durup bekleyerek hem gerilim arttırıyorum. Hem de planladığını yeteri kadar düşünmemiş plot twist'i açıklayarak ne kadar zeki olduğumu gösteriyor. Ama bunu yapmamın sebebi çocukken zekamla dalga geçirip kendimi kanıtlamaya ihtiyacı duymam değil. Sadece süreyi uzatmak ve işin orijinalliğini arttırmak. Son dediğin cümleyi iyice göze parmak soktun, tempoyu da iyice düşürdün. Ne var lan tempoyu düşürdüysem? Ben belki ağır tempo seviyorum. Ben sevmiyorum. Açıklayacaktın orada plot twist'i. Öldürecektin ikimiz de gidecektin işte. Sana ne kardeşim? Mekan benim. İstediğimi yaparım. Mekan senin de. Böyle ikimizin de vaktini yiyorsun. Aynen. Arkadaşlar. Sakin olalım lütfen. Beni öldürüp yerime geçme planınızı bir yere bırakırsak ben öyle diğer meslektaşlarım gibi hayatı sokakta değil, filmlerden öğrendim. Ama sizlerle girdiğim Tarantino var ediyorlar beni çok hoşnut etti. Güzeldi. Hatta bir ara gayri içeride kaydık ama onun da içine ettin. Yok ya daha fazla eleman lazım onun için. Yani ama elimizdeki şartlarla böyle oluyor. Hem komşu öldürmeseydi daha da derinleşebilirdi belki. Öldürdüğümü kim söyledi? Öldürmedin mi? Öldürdüm. Ben de bundan bahsediyorum işte. Hep bir gizem yaratma merakı. Benim de tarzım bu Hasan'cı. Bana hitap etmiyor. Beğenmiyorsan izleme kardeşim. Hem elinde bal değil zaten. Gördüm orada bağlıyor gibi yaptım bu salak. Ya patron sen de eleştiriyi kabul edip nasıl daha iyisini yapabileceğim? <gülüyor> Zaten eleman açığımız vardı Hasancım. Bu arkadaşla aramızdan ayrıldığına göre seni ekibimizin yeni üyesi ilan ediyorum. Tamam abi. İş tanımı nedir? Bildiğin klasik mafya işleri ama bir farkla. Sahip olduğum engin sinema bilgisi ve pasif agresif kişiliğimi birleştirerek sinema sevdalısı bir mafyanın işlerini nasıl büyüttüğünü konu alan bir mokumentarı çekeceğim. Ben de görüntü yönetmenim olacağım. Yok. Sen bataryaları değiştireceksin. Ben bir batarya kullansak? Hayır. Tamam. Tamam. Tamam. Yazmayı bırakmadım ama zaten daha bir şey yazmadım ki. <gülüyor> Acaba yazmasam daha mutlu olurdum. Mutlu değil mi? Hayır, mutluyum. Ya da mutlu olmadığım için mi yazıyorum? Acaba hangisi daha kötü oldu? Bu kalemi ne zaman almıştım ki? Kalkıp eve mi gitsem? Yok ya, ayıp olur şimdi ev sahibine iki hafta dedik. Acaba yazar olmasam daha mı çok karam olurdu? Ne yesem? Hayır evet, o kadar zor değil. Önce tema belirleyeyim. Ama da güzelmiş. Sağlık kaç oldu? Şarja gitmiş. Neyse arayıp soran olmaz. En son ne zaman dışarı çıktın? Yani buraya gelmek dışında. Zaten arayıp soran olmuyor ki. Ne kadardır oturuyorum. Bir karakter yaratıp hikaye onun üzerine kurayım. Yani bütün hikayeler böyle değil mi zaten? Hayır, tam tersi. Yoksa diğeri miydi? Hasan! Anahtarı yerini mi unuttun? Hayır. 
Hmm. Evet. Kitabı bitirdiğin zaman anahtarın yerini söyleyeceğim. Ama o zamana kadar evde yemek yok, su yok. Telefonun şarjı bitmiş, birini arayamazsın. Dışarıda kimse var yok. Bağırıp çağıramazsın da. O yüzden hızlı olsan iyi olur. Bu biraz ani oldu. <gülüyor> Sağ ol, nasıl? <gülüyor> o kadar yeteneksizsin ki. Yazmanı sağlamanın tek yolu hayatta kalma içgüdünü kutmak. Mantıklı. Ama diyelim yazamadım ve yani zaten iki hafta sonra ev sahibi parayı almaya gelecek. O zamana kadar dayanır mı aslında? Ortalama bir insan aç ve susuz 15 güne kadar dayanabilir. Sen? Sen dayanamaz. Bence de. O yüzden sen iyisini başla şimdi yazmaya. Sen şimdi benim alter ego musun? Hayır. Ben senin gölge arketipinim Hasan. Tamam. Yani daha önce hiç kitap yazmamışsın. Kalkıp bir de ev kiralıyorsun kitap yazacağım diye. Daha önceden yazmıştım aslında bir şeyden ama. Onlar herkesin ilk okulda yazdığı öyküler. Gün oldu. Üç. Daha ne kadar dayanırım sence? O sana bağlı. Ki diyelim yazamadığım bir şeyler var artık ölmek üzereyim. O zaman anahtarın yerini söyler misin? Hayır. Tamam da sen de ölmez misin ben ölürsem? Bunu düşünmedim. Sen de ölürsün işte. Söyle şimdi anahtarın yerini. <gülüyor> Belki de başka bir zaman yazarım. <gülüyor> Bana ne kardeşim? Sen düşürdün bizi bu duruma. Artık benim kurallarıma uyacaksın. Yani anahtarı yerini unutmak tamam da yemeği nasıl unutursun? O konuda teknik bir aksaklık olmuş. Biraz yardımcı olsa muhteşem bir fikir anlamana gerek yok. Zaten bütün hikayeler bir noktada birbirinin aynısı. Önemli olan senin o hikayeyi nasıl işlediğin. Belki de aradığın şey düşünden daha yakındır.
Ne yazıyorsun? Adem adındaki bir senarist. Yeni bir senaryo yazmak için bir ev kiralıyor. Ama bazı aksiliklerden dolayı evde mahsur kalıyor. Evden çıkabilmesinin tek yolu senaryoyu bitirmek. Yani 7 gün düşünüp bunu mu buldun? Sen dedin ya muhteşem bir fikre ihtiyacın yok diye. O kadar da değil. Bir de yaratıcı kompleksine girip yarattığın karakterin adını Adem mi koyuyorsun? Evet ne var bunda? Tamam yaz hadi. Kediyi kurtardın mı? O ne? Okuyucunun karakterine sempati duymasını sağladı olsun. Ama artık önemi yok. Hasan. Yapabiliriz. Sonunda ne oluyor? O daha belli değil. Ne zaman belli olacak? Peki neden ben? Öyle denk geldi. Özel bir sebebi yok yani. Hayatta kalmam için seni yaratmam gerekti. Ne yani? Sırf kendini düşündüğün için benim iradem dışında beni mi yarat? Evet. Ama üzülme. Zaman gelince sen de onun iradesi dışında bir karakter yaratacaksın. Tamam. Benim bu iç sesim alter ego mu şimdi? Yok. O senin gölge arketipin. Aslında seni yazmanı istiyor ama hani kendine az yöntemleri var. Seni ölümle yüz yüze getirmek gibi. Peki bu Adem niye ev kiralamış senaryo yazmak için? <gülüyor> Atmosfere girmek için. Evde neden yemek yok? O konuda teknik bir aksaklık oldu. Ben neden kendi içinde bulunduğum durumu anlatıyorum? Yani çünkü yeteneksizsin. Yani bir şey yazmazsan öleceksin. 
Aklına gelen tek fikir bu. Biraz karo komedi gibi yani. Aynen. Ayrıca bizim gibi yaratıcı insanların içsel mücadeleleri ve yaratım sürecinin nasıl işlediğine dair bir bakış açısı sunuyor. E çok iyi. Evet. Adam yardım etle topluyormuş şunu. Ben çok sevmedim bu kitabı. Neyi sevmedin? Hikaye basit biraz. Adam seni ben yarattım. Benim yazdığım kitap hakkında yorum yapma etkin yok senin. Sonu olmamış ama. Sen yazsaydın o zaman. Neyse. Ben şimdi kendimle son bir mücadeleye gidiyorum. Benim senaryoda Climax gibi. Aynen öyle. Çok iyi ben de geleyim. Adem. Sen kendi yazdığın senaryoda. Kendi yarattığın karakterin. Seninle gelmesini istemiş miydin? Hayır ama benim ne yapacağımı sen yazdın. Ben olsam gelmesini isterdim. Neyse abi. Görüşürüz. Bitirdim. Anahtar nerede? Hasan. 10 gün oldu. Anahtarı yerini unuttum. Pardon. Bana olan borcumu böyle ödeyeceksin demek ki. Yes. Uh, so, hello to all the participants and the <clears throat> audience here from India and outside India. So, this was the last film from day one. As I know that you have been all waiting for your premiere, and uh, just want to say that tomorrow is the last day of the premiere, and you'll be getting your films to be premiered tomorrow also. And it's in the queue, as you can see the timeline. It's almost finished, so your film will be premiered by tomorrow also. So today. Um, before ending this day one event, I wanted to uh, uh, share with you the last speaker session. All right. So before this, I wanted to introduce you with our host, Sneha Sondi. She'll be, uh, yeah, she'll be hosting this speaker last speaker session of Kushi Junjunwala. So I request you, uh, Sneha, to uh, take the stage, and now stage is yours. So we can introduce Kushi Junjunwala. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste and love from India. I once again welcome all the participants from India and around the world to the International Film Festival. I am Sneha, your host for the session. Before we begin with the next 
evening, I would like to take a moment and express our gratitude to all the filmmakers, the actors, and the members who have brought their words and stories into life. Without keeping you all waiting much more, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Kushi Jhinjhinwala from India. Kushi is an aspiring cinematographer, a skilled photographer, capturing moments and visions with artistry, weaving stories through the lens of creativity. So, Queen, the stage is all yours. Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Neha. It was a lovely uh, introduction. So, let me just share my screen. So the uh, section topic, uh, as Neha has introduced, uh, frame of narrative, creating, uh, crafting stories through lenses. I am uh, Koshi Tunjinwara, and let me give you some of my uh, like introduction, like who I am, what I what I am doing right now. So basically, uh, I have doing photography for past uh, five years now, and I have done like as experiment a lot of genres in photography. You can say uh, portrait photography, street, food, landscape, and in fact, light painting too. And I started my journey from when I was in class 10. And when I was doing some doing my photography, then I got started interested visual narrative, uh, which you can call cinematography. So, so that is uh, all about me. So I'll talk about what is the important element for visual narrative. Uh, you might be questioning what is visual narrative. Visual narrative is basically uh, visual storytelling. Uh, it means expressing your ideas through audio visual. In, in audio visual, it includes a lot of things, elements such as uh, sound, performance, art direction, uh, etc. But one of the most key uh, element in visual storytelling is cinematography. And cinematography is basically an art form of you, like, is it art of visual of how to tell stories through cameras and their movement and lighting, colors, and etc. But base, I will focus on two main aspects of it. I'll not stretch it out too much. So the first element is uh, lighting, and the second element is composition. These are the two basic and the main aspect that uh, a one cinematographer should keep in mind before, you know, uh, telling st uh, story through visuals. Uh, lighting is the most fundamental thing in film because it creates a uh, look and feel of the whole uh, uh, thing that you are telling to the people. So basically, uh, like if you think about painting, painting. Uh, we use paint to, you know, to paint. We use paint just like we use paint in the painting. It's same similar goes with the lighting. It's basically a plain canvas. The frame is a basically a plain canvas. We as a cinematographer, we, we with the help of lighting, colors, composition, we paint the whole canvas uh, with the help of different elements. The first element is lighting, and lighting helps to help audience to you know, get into the character's mind and feel the whole narrative of the story. It also reflects the psychological aspect that the character is going through and also supports the genre that you are going to show. For example, if you're showing a TV commercial, so basically they use high key lighting. And for like genres like a crime or thriller, they use minimal lighting and more of a low key lighting because as to show the dark and lighter side of the, because it reflects the whole genre of the film. So the basic uh, lighting setup that uh, people use are, one is key lighting, fill light, and backlight. So fill light is basically the main source of light which is coming 
to the subject it's the main light and the fill light is basically the key light is creating a shadow which the uh, the uh, fill light helps to fill in the whole shadow of the subject and backlight is basically uh, put in in the back side of the character so as to distinguish the characters from the background i'll show some examples this is the key light this is the fill light and this is a backlight and all these things that i'm showing right now is my experimented i have uh, actually i have made my own short film when i was in college so from all that uh, films that, in that film what whatever thing that i've used like any any lighting setup i'm showing you that only uh, i'm telling from my uh, practical experience like and other lighting setup you can call it high key lighting low key lighting as i said high key lighting is basically uh, less less of a shadow and more, more of a brightness on the subject uh, these uh, these lighting is basically used in tv commercial and uh, television and low key lighting is basic is a lighting aesthetic which usually used in uh, more of a like showing shadows and basically genres like thriller crime etc and other uh, lighting setups are uh, hard hard light soft light and natural light hard light is basically uh, the harder shadows that are created through light basically from the key light only and soft light is uh, when the light is created when the shadow is lesser on the subject space or any subject that you are uh, aiming for and natural were very obvious uh, the light coming inside the shooting location you can say the moonlight or the sunlight practical light and motivated light uh, practical light is basically uh, a light which is coming for example uh, i'm sitting here there's a lamp behind me that is practical light it it just creating a cinematic impact on the visual narrative that's it and motivated light is a uh, cinematographer like we can if you are shooting uh, in the like uh, you are shooting in the night but the moonlight is obviously not the option to go to so we as a cinematographer we intimate the uh, the moonlight and create the whole motivated light from it the second most important part is composition composition is basic thing like uh, how you creatively uh, put in every element in a frame is called composition how beautifully you can uh, put in every element together is called composition uh, there are obviously elements of composition uh what i'm saying are the basic guidelines that one should follow but obviously it's a creative field and you can do anything uh, what you feel is good and visually appealing so i'm just you know i'm just telling the guidelines that is that they set by the uh, other cinema studios so first of all uh, the rule of thirds basically an imaginary we divide our image into nine parts and the the rule as the rule says we have to put our image either on the left side or in the either on the left uh, right side and and the image should be uh, between the intersectional point uh, of the image as you can see here uh, this is the intersectional point i have kept, kept my subject uh, towards left and the other subject towards right so you can like it's visually appealing that's it and obviously it's a creative tool so whatever you want to do you can do then other is balance and symmetry uh, so basically and all these pictures and whatever you are seeing are all clicked by me and uh, so uh, uh, balance is basically how you uh, block your character in the sub in the frame uh, as you can see i have blocked my character in the center frame uh, to show the feeling of her vulnerability like all the darkness like all the bad thoughts is uh, like accumulated on the center and she is uh, so much vulnerable to all that feeling that she is uh, going through so the center frame would be the like the one of the best appealing uh, 
composition that I've taken here. And this is a symmetry. Symmetry is basically uh, if we fold the picture into two halves. So that is the basic thing called symmetry. Like the other half and the other right half or left half should be equal. And the legend uh, Wes Anderson is very famous for his for this kind of composition symmetry. Then is leading line. It's ba is basically just the line which leads the uh, image to some point or whatever you have want to show the audiences. Uh, here you can see the lines leading towards the traffic and here the line is leading towards the, the subject dog. So it's the basic thing that uh, as, a, as a cinematographer you put in that leading line to lead the is the basic to lead the audience to some point. Then is eye level framing. It's very you know for straightforward eye level. Uh, it's basically the audience or audience audience eye level. It's just to create an impact that we are in par with the characters feeling that and whatever thing that is going in the frame and. To give a sense of equality between the characters and the audiences, and also, you know, to get a similar connection between the what is the cat, what is inside the character mind. Then is depth of field. Depth of field is uh, basically uh, the area which is in focus in the image. Uh, depth is basically the size of the area which is in focus. And feel is basically the area of the uh, feel which is in focus. Uh, one of the most uh, and the depth of field is divided into two parts. One is deep depth of field and one is narrow depth of field. Deep depth of field is basically everything which is which is in focus. Uh, the area and the depth is broader in a sense. So we can say that broader depth of field or deep depth of field, and in narrow the area of the field is very narrow and shorter. So that's why we can, I mean, the focus area is very smaller. So we can say the narrow depth of field. And interestingly, of uh, this is the basically for photography, and we can also say for cinematography too. But uh, this is a very interesting uh, thing called rack focus. Uh, it is a change of focus during shots, like from smaller to larger, or focusing from one point to another. So uh, rack focus is very interesting, and you can also experiment to like focusing from one foreground to mid ground to background. So it's like a very very I for me it's a very interesting thing. I I can show you one of my uh, like experimenting thing that that I've done before. So as you can see, uh, the it the focus is coming from the background to mid ground to foreground. So it gives a sense of you know a closeness, a far away from to the closeness. It give a feeling of that. So basically, that focus is uh, to give a little more emotion to the image. Then. This is deep space composition. Is basically uh, everything which is in focus. And one of the best examples uh, is from the Citizen Kane. Uh, I will show the. I will show you the shot. It, it is the one of the like the best example for uh, deep composition because if, in the shot everything is in focus. All the four characters are in focus. Even if they are in a different depth of field, but still everyone is is in focus to give us some sense of personal between them, the closeness between them, and not the uh, you know give a sense of uh, indistance between them by uh, 
by putting in the depth of field, the narrow depth of field concept. I'll sign those papers now, Mr. Thatcher. You people seem to forget that I'm the boy's father. It's going to be done exactly the way I've told Mr. Thatcher. There ain't nothing wrong with Colorado. I don't see why we can't Every, raise our own son uh, just because we can't raise some money. If I want, I can go to the the my father all has a right to. The board of the beach says Bill and leaves worthless stock behind. That property is just is as much my property as anybody's, property. now that it's valuable. And if Fred Gray... So, thank you. That is all from me. Thank you so much, Krishna, for this session. Um, I can see that the chat box has been bombarded with a lot of questions while you were presenting. Uh, so, Kushi, I would be asking you some questions. And uh, you can answer them. Okay, uh, Kushi, Sujit from India wants to ask you, how do you choose your subjects or themes for photography projects? Uh, photography project. Uh, can you be like more, for example, for uh, uh, for like street genre? I mean, actually, I, I, can you just uh, tell if that person is there? Can you just uh, tell him to say the question? Directly? Uh, theme as in I just if I feel like doing portrait uh, while doing photography so uh, it's not like the if I feel like doing portrait photography I just uh, call some someone from my friends group and I you know keep experimenting with the light and everything and do the photography if I want to do go out if, if I'm walking on a street if I have a camera if I feel like have, uh, doing photography in the street, I just do it. So it's not like I keep in, keep in mind that I do a certain th a theme, I do follow certain things. If I feel like doing anything, I just do it. So like that. It's a free will thing. Uh, Kushi, that from Australia wants to ask, can you describe your approach to choosing camera as words and movements to convey emotion or narrative in a scene? Uh, it's, it's actually a, your camera as well. So, yeah. Uh, see, uh, narrative in a scene is basically how you, uh, you know, tell a story. So te how to tell a story from a technical part, from a technical person like cinematographer, you basically use camera angles and camera movement. For example, high, uh, low angle is basically used to show the superior of the character. So basically it's to telling a story, right? So this is how you change the angle. If you're going for high angle, you're showing that the, uh, the character is in a depressed position or a suppressed position. Uh, or slavery, for example. And if you are talking about the eye level angle, basically you are getting a connection with the audiences and the uh, character. So it goes like, and for the camera movement, uh, it's like pan or tilt, uh, to tilt up, till, till down is basically, you know, to reveal the character uh, outfit, you can say, or uh, to or to give an establishment shot and of any location, you can go for tilt up, tilt down because you know you have to reveal the whole that whole frame. Like what are you show, showing? So it's basically that. And also camera movement comes under like tracking shot. 
uh, going with the flow of the character. So basically, you are with the character to show that kind of narrative that you are with the character. You show the camera movement or tracking shot. So there are like a lot of other uh, camera movements. इक्विपमेंट और लाइटिंग और लोकेशन set in everything and the actually for the uh, the short film i'll be sharing the link of it so you so you can go and uh, see the short film so in that short film basically i have to constrain my whole story inside the campus because i was not, i was not allowed to go uh, outside and shoot and everything like far away from the, from my college so i have to constrain my whole storyline within the studio within the Uh, college studio within the hostel itself so it is kind of a challenge you know to uh, compress your ideas into one location and you know do certain things so these are little challenges but obviously uh, there was a studio thing so i have got a like hands on creative aspect that i can do anything from lighting i can do uh, whatever experiment that i want to do so and also challenges was like uh, getting people on board that is the most challenging thing i think every filmmaker goes through like getting on people board is like a most hectic thing to do uh, basically the casting thing people just come and go like if you have decided the whole script and you have decided uh, the particular cast that you are going to go to then suddenly uh ob- obviously you have time uh, time constraint because you are like i was in college so i was having some certain of time uh, time stay and uh, suddenly one of my cast uh, said you know i will not come because uh, i have some issue uh, issue working i have my other work and you know the shoot kept uh, keeps delay and delay and delay obviously you have uh, books studios so There is another challenge that you have to get studio time. Then you will not get to work. Or if the location you have booked is not available, if the cast is cancelled, then you will not get to shoot. You have to again go through another process of casting, then again, again booking the location and everything. That, but obviously, it's exciting to do. So, no regrets. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kishi. Uh, also, uh, Gaurav. From India wants to ask, क्या रूल ऑफ थर्ड्स को हिंदी में एक बार एक्सप्लेन कर सकते हैं शॉर्टली? रूल ऑफ थर्ड्स इस इसका बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ये है कि आप अपने इमेज को नौ पार्ट्स में डिवाइड करते हो, ठीक है? आप इमेजिनरी चार लाइन आप समझ लीजिए एंड उसके जो पॉइंट पे आपका लाइन इंटरसेक्ट कर रहा है, राइट या लेफ्ट मे� to your uh, according to your storyline so basically why intersectional points mein aapko apne subject ko rakhna hai that's the, the, the basic thing of rule of thirds thank you kishi i think that would help karan uh, also manoj wants to ask how do you choose a good cinematographer this is hiring a cinematographer is like the most Okay. Uh, uh, choosing a good cinematographer. So basically, it everything depends on your uh, like the story, and which cinematographer fulfills your story is based upon that. If someone is doing, uh, for example, like, how do I tell you? Your story is crime or thriller, okay? 
तो आप वो बंदे को चूज वो सिनेमाटोग्राफर को चूज नहीं करोगे ना जो टेलीविजन या फिर कमर्शियल करता हो क्योंकि उसका जॉनरा अब लाइटिंग भी आप देखो ना आप वो हाई की लाइटिंग यूज करे लेकिन आपका जॉनरा क्या क्या डिमांड क्या कर रहा है आपका जॉनरा लो की लाइटिंग तो वो बंदा आपका यू नो ही विल नॉट एबल टू फुलफिल योर आइडिया सो इट्स वही आपको कंपेरिजन करना पड़ेगा यू हैव टू गो टू अ लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च इन टर्म्स ऑफ जॉनरा दैट ही और शी इज वर्किंग ऑन so in if the things work out ki aapka jo story uh, bol raha hai require kar raha hai aap usi cinematographer ko hire kijiye so right so uh, thank you so much krishna for the session uh, we have a lot more questions in the chat box uh, so guys uh, we will be attaching uh, krishna's instagram here in the chat box with her permission so you can connect with her there and you can ask all your concerns and all your questions from her uh thank you so much kushi for the session um even i learned a lot of a lot about lighting from you and some cinematic shots so uh, thank you so much very grateful like uh, you guys giving me opportunity to speak up so and this is a great thing that you are guys doing like Thank you so much. Lots of uh, love from Kerala. Production. Thank you so much, Kushi, for this session. It was a very great uh, presentation you did. Uh, so, Kushi, I just wanted to ask that there were only like two questions left. So, you would you mind if you like wanted to answer them? Yes, yeah, sure. No like problem. you have time. It's all right if you don't want to. Oh no no no. I, I have all right. Time. All right. So, Monica wanted to ask that what role does storytelling play in our photography? can you provide an example of a photo that tells a powerful story like you have showed a dog and a man in a story like it shows something right you know using ppt so do you have any like any story about this like you have captured a photo and you have showed that this is a very powerful story i can show you some example I show you example from my own short film. Uh. Oh, and Kushi, when you will be sharing the screen, now just try to. Uh, optimize the screen actually because it was a kind of uh, uh, it was a kind of uh, like ruk rahi thi kafi actually this want to say that uh, i have taken a still shot uh, for my short film to make the poster yeah please show me just see the don't see the information but only see the like the picture what the picture sees uh, yes. kintsugi the concept of kintsugi is basically uh, repairing any pot any broken pot with the use of gold dust japanese people do to repair the uh, you know the broken pot with the use of gold dust so basically broken the the whole story revolves around that uh, she is going through depression depression anxiety that like she is not able to cope up with with her feeling mm -hmm. so uh, you know there is a thing called self consciousness there as we say we go take a help from other people you know go for third party take counseling and everything but something or the other there is some thing called self consciousness uh, so that helps that is the goal of her you know to repair her uh, from her own feeling of depression and anxiety and getting a new like a re rebirth from her own uh, you know feeling of bad feeling from uh, like a you know you you understand right uh, i'm <laughs> yes. not able to put in words but yes uh, this is the same link you have sent me on the youtube the the the link you have sent that yeah. that that's not yeah that uh, that cinematography was very good actually the the tone was very good actually i just want to say that So the last question is, 
Justin has asked that what is the main difference between a cinematographer and a DOP? He said he knows he knows about it, but what is the main difference actually? Because if he'll be making a film in the future, so uh, like if he should hire a DOP only or the cinematographer too? So that's what he wanted to ask. Actually, there is nothing different between cinematographer or a DOP. मतलब देखो फॉरेन में जैसे बोलते कि सिनेमाटोग्राफर वो लोग हायर करते हैं दे डोंट हायर डीओपी बट इंडिया में देर इज अ इन डिफरेंस ऑफ वर्ड्स एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट बट दोनों का काम सेम ही है बोथ वर्क विद द डायरेक्टर दे वर्क ऑन द आइडिया एंड दे बोथ गिव द लुक एंड फील ऑफ द होल फिल्म दे ओनली डिसाइड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ लाइटिंग विल बी गोइंग ऑन व्हाट काइंड ऑफ इक्विपमेंट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ कैमरास दे विल बी हायरिंग एंड एवरीथिंग बोथ सिनेमाटोग्राफर डीओपी द meaning is the same yeah so it's like if we hire a dop so he'll be also shooting the film right yeah yeah that's the a good whole thing. obviously the whole camera department is the hmm. department for the of the dop and the cinematographer like yeah. dono ka word same hai yeah but wo hai ki in india we you know we make a dop a big thing ha exactly dop matlab director of photography he will yes. work the, he is the right hand of the वैसे कुछ नहीं है सिनेमाटोग्राफर भी वही है डीओपी भी वही है इंडिया में थोड़ा इंडिया ग्रेट एक्सप्लेनेशन यस दैट्स अ वेरी ग्रेट एक्सप्लेनेशन फ्रॉम द सिनेमाटोग्राफर दैट इट्स इट्स काइंड ऑफ गुड सो दैट्स द होल क्वेश्चंस पीपल हैव आस्क्ड फ्रॉम अराउंड द कंट्रीज एंड इट वाज अ वेरी यूजफुल सेशन फॉर मी आल्सो बिकॉज़ आई विल बी मेकिंग अ फिल्म नेक्स्ट वीक सो इट गेव मी अ लॉट ऑफ मोटिवेशन एंड इंस्पिरेशन बिकॉज़ फ्रॉम द कैमरा एंगल्स एंड ऑल यू नो बिकॉज़ आई एम काइंड ऑफ यू नो काइंड ऑफ inserting myself into the cinematography thing so that's why okay yeah you know i i wanted to do uh, everything singing i by by i don't sing but i i i wanted to sing <laughs> okay. so thank you so much khushi for this so, i uh, just a second i just want to say something like uh, i've just thought that cinematography is something which is really cool and everything matlab bahut hi easy go thing hai golden glitter hai but aisa कुछ भी नहीं है मतलब लिटरली ऐसा कुछ नहीं है मतलब यू हैव टू वर्क लाइक मतलब डायरेक्टर प्रोड्यूसर्स एंड अदर एक्टर दे गेट टू सिट लाइक मतलब वो लोग का अगर सीन चल रहा है तो दे गो दे डू देयर परफॉर्मेंस इन दे कम दैट्स इट बट सिनेमाटोग्राफर का वो है नहीं दे वर्क लाइक ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन लाइक टेक मतलब लाइट सेटअप करने से पहले फ्रेमिंग से लेके शूट करने से लेके लाइटिंग को रैप अप करने से सब चीज में लोग इन्वॉल्व होते हैं इट्स लाइक वॉकिंग ऑन अ फायर या आई इन माय लास्ट फिल्म आई आई हैड अ कैमरा विद मी एंड आई थॉट दैट आई विल बी मेकिंग सम शॉट्स तो मैंने एक बार लिया कैमरा एंड आई वाज लाइक अपने सिनेमाटोग्राफर को दे देते हैं लेट इट बी हम जाएं वो ठीक है नहीं इट्स इट्स टू डिफिकल्ट टू मेक सम शॉट्स आर इट्स इट्स टोटली डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज़ you have to you know see some shots while you were shooting you have to see the scene you have to see the misosin firstly i i, I just I, i just learned this thing from my faculty uh, misosin is basically whatever things that is in the frame or sab cheez decide hota hai by the director it's oh, really so, important to work on misosin yeah so that's all the questions who people and the participant and the audience have asked from india and outside india and thank you so much khushi for this very impressive very uh, tremendous very useful session you have gave to me and to the all the audience and raj is clapping for you that because he uh, we we had an interview uh, uh, lately and he he he told me about the that he how he loves music and the visuals to the uh, music if he you know insert both things so raj do you wanted to ask any questions to khushi the total uh, whatever she said was very very impressive ma'am very very uh useful to to me even even i thought of asking you a lot of questions the rest of everybody was asking the same question so i felt like you know i'll better to keep quiet and to listen to you very very informative ma'am as a director sometimes we wonder you know that part uh, when it comes to camera we are we are we are, we are you know like we are totally dependent on on ma'am whatever we have in the mind see you people bring that out for us right now so whatever we had in our mind so people to see uh, you know uh, what you guys have you know uh, should it right am i right or wrong ma'am 
true. So true. it totally depend on you, ma'am. So as a as a as a director, we have to know all these things. If we know that, it will be better. As someone asked us, um, how to choose a, a the right photographer or, or the DOP or, or cameraman or it is. So it's really wonderful, ma'am. Really, it's wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. And I see Ansh also as uh, in the video because uh, congratulations, uh, Ansh, your film screen today, your all film screen today. And Khushi, just last question, please. Is it, can, can I ask? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, is it important for a director to have a DOP knowledge or at least some of it? Actually, it's really important to have some knowledge because you have to. You are working with a lot of people, right? so as a director you are the god basically direct director is the god for the film for that film so he has to keep up with every aspect not only cinematography but every aspect uh, that he wants to you know give a shape because it, he also have to have the knowledge of dot music editing and everything because all these elements make a film right so you don't you don't have to keep like ha uh, meko bas direction ke bare mein pata hai no you have to you have to know about everything because koi bhi question kar dega kahin pe you are working with hundreds of people right on the set so koi bhi question wahan kar sakta hai ki aap aise kyun kiye so director kya bolega he doesn't know anything to kya bolega it's like right. yeah we can say that because uh, i'm i have directed around 20 plus films from my college days and now So it's like you have to have some a little knowledge of cinematography and all the things. If you're everything. working, on at least everything. You know, you know. It also the the uh, the assistant directing thing actually. So if if you have been assistant director, like you have been working with the directors, and also you have to you know have the knowledge of this. So that's a very good thing. And Ansh also wanted to say something. So after this, we'll wrap this day one. So please say, please Ansh, say something. First of all, really, I am really grateful to the LPT team for giving us the opportunity, and uh, really, Kushi, ma'am, you are sharing a good knowledge with the people, and I am feeling very, very sad because due to my shows, I was busy in my show. Even right now, I have, I have also one show. I am here to host the show, and when once I hear you know, I was less, uh, just like that. Uh, I missed a lot. I really want to listen this thing. So I am really thankful to the LPT team that these people are. Really doing great thing, and I I'm really happy with that. Thank you so much for this. And uh, Khushi, do you know that Ansh can uh, say the the voice of the metro? Have you have you have you heard the metro sound like यहाँ से अब बाहर निकलिए फलाना? So you can you know he can say that. Can you like yeah, Ansh? Can you please? Can you please like? First of all, I wanna. मतलब मुझे जानना है कि मैं clear सुनाई दे रहा हूँ कि नहीं पीछे. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are. Yes. Okay. Actually, it is like. Uh, वेरी गुड एक्चुअली आई कैन से Thank you so and, much for uh, giving uh, this opportunity. And thank you so much for jo- joining as a speaker because uh, your topic was very great actually, the cinematography and photography thing. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people are in this field and wanted to learn something about it. That's why you you had this all the questions from around the world. So thank you so much for this. Thank you so much for this session, and uh, the love from India. And thank you so much. Uh, you also thank Indian, you. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Namaste from India. Namaste from India. Yeah. And all right, guys. So this is it. This was the day one. I see there are a lot of people here, also from fifteen and three two hundred and fifty people from the schools also who are part participate in this film festival. As I can see, Ansh has his own screen in today. Raj has left. So tomorrow will be the last day, and you will be. Uh, you will be happy that your film will be screening tomorrow also. Tomorrow is the uh, winners announcement. so i really need all of you to join tomorrow's winner announcement there is a lot to say but i'll say tomorrow also and tomorrow join with the same link or if there is any other link so we will uh, will share you the mail okay so we'll send you the mail you will uh, attend this event also tomorrow if 
uh, as you can see a lot of people have already uh, um, there, there are a lot of lot of people who have already seen their film here also if you wanted to you know join tomorrow also you can join it because tomorrow we'll have a lot of good speakers also uh, let me let me uh, tell how many speakers will be there to i guess there will be four tremendous speaker tomorrow let me share who are they this one from australia who will be teaching about how to act in front of camera all right first is this and uh, second is yeah so the uh, our our tomorrow's first session will be a documentary session uh, she's from denmark she's an award winning filmmaker and dedicated journalist her recent documentary first class citizen about power and control is currently touring film festival internationally and she also won an uh, kanch film festival award uh, yeah recently so she'll be joining tomorrow and her speaker session is about the documentary thing and tomorrow will be the biggest speaker session because tomorrow a youtuber will be joining his name is aryan goswami he is a cinema enthusiast youtube storyteller revealing global facts and news 110k youtube subscribers and 9k plus instagram followers he tells news about marvel and dc and he is a very good anchor just like anch and the another speaker is priya khoka from london she is actually a therapist in filmmaking as you know that raj is raj also told me that if you wanted to you know make a film you have to be mentally prepared you have to be clear so she'll be telling how to clear your mind actually you know so this is this will be it and the last session will be the grand session which is from isaac crawley from australia he'll be telling about on screen acting improver acting with improver acting with improv tips exercises and techniques for actor navigating the world of performance in your cinema all right so like it's it's like you know a lot of people you lot of people feel nervous and don't feel feel very shy by in front of camera okay so he'll be teaching about how to not get nervous and be confident in front of camera so i request to all the participant and all the students who are right now present in this one account to attend this event tomorrow and we'll be meeting again tomorrow at 11 o'clock and tomorrow will be uh, a little late in the board session it will be at 9 pm all right so meet you tomorrow guys and i say you namaste and khuda hafiz assalam alaikum shubh ratri see you tomorrow guys thank you so much for this today for join thank you so much see ya thank you so much